time for a real challenge. The Ice Spikes biome is one of the hardest to survive in. There are no trees, no food, and no mobs. And I am not only going to survive here, somehow I am going to survive 100 days in Hardcore Minecraft and at the end, battle three withers at once. Surviving 100 days in Minecraft Hardcore on a cave only world. This could be one of my hardest challenges yet. I set the world type to caves, we're on the latest 1.17 snapshot and I need to not only beat the game but also survive for 100 days. That's over 30 hours. What makes this so hard? Well, for a start there's no trees, animals don't spawn and it's always dark so there's monsters everywhere. Every single time a new day dawns, I shapeshift into a new mob. I could be a sheep, a cow, a creeper, a wither or even a useless fish. And I have to survive 100 days on hardcore mode with all of this going on. In this world, everything is diamonds. That includes the mountains, the caves, the trees, the whole lot. You'd think that this would make the game easier, but suddenly simple things like getting wood, food, and even dirt becomes much, much harder. So my first task is to try and find some wood. Sadly, these trees aren't going to be very useful. Instead, I need a mineshaft or a village. Or maybe even a shipwreck. That would work too. I see what looks to be an acacia biome up ahead. And look at that. It does have a village. Which means two things that are very rare have been found. Dirt. Yes, we can get loads of dirt now if we want. We've also got food because we can get hay. Hope this village doesn't mind that I'm basically stealing all of their wheat. Let's also grab a bed and some wood as well. Whoever lives here isn't going to be very happy. What's in this chest? We've got some bread. Very nice. We might as well grab paper because that's probably going to be a rare thing. And I currently have no cobblestone. Getting that's going to be a bit of a challenge, which means I can't make tools, so instead I'm going to have to improvise and take this guy out the old-fashioned way. I'm already tired of doing this with my fist. I've got a better idea. Crafting table, sticks, and then we can make an axe. This is much faster. And with this iron, I can make a pickaxe. Oh, and check this out. We can finally make use of these beautiful, beautiful diamonds. We're about to get the world record for the fastest time to get diamond armor. There we go. Look at that. Let's get suited up. And I can also make a bunch of tools to help me on my journey. You know what would be perfect? If this chest now had a bucket in it. It doesn't, but it's got a torch and some bread. It's also easier now to mine up the wood and dismantle this poor villager's house. And this is a useful thing to find, a blast furnace, because I can't really get cobblestone at the moment. Now I shall go in search of another village. Actually, if I can find a cave, then I can use that to get iron and not bother with the village. Look at that, day one is complete. What do we have here? I found a goat. You're the first animal I have seen in this entire world because nothing else can... Sp Wait, where did you just jump down to? Well, yeah, nothing else can spawn. I can grab this coal, though, when I can see it. I feel like I'm going to be sick of the sight of diamonds by the end of this. Finally, something that resembles a cave and we've got iron. This is going to be perfect for making buckets and a shield and, and whatever else you need iron for. Now, does this cave go deeper? No, it just seems to go upwards that way. So I'm going to make things interesting and just dig down. Although before that, I think what I should do is do some smelting and get myself a bucket <laughs> just in case I'd come to lava. Got my water. This has nearly all smelted. Let's keep digging down. I can hear water around me, which means there's a cave nearby. I'm going to dig in this direction and hope for the best. Oh, we found emeralds. Hey, that's pretty rare, actually. <laughs> if I make this guy blow up, look at that. Look at all the diamonds I get. And there's quite a few emeralds down here. And look at this. We've even got the tuff. I'm going to gather some of this up because it's actually quite useful blocks. And there's no point delaying. Let's build a portal. Where does this portal lead? Well, you're about to find out. Now, because there's no gravel in the world, it's very difficult for me to make some flint and steel. However, if I do something like this and then put my lava right there and then put wood on this side it should light whilst i wait for that let's grab some extra iron and this is deep slate coal would have been cool if all the diamonds down here became deep slate ones but <laughs> didn't get that far with making this and what do we have here it looks like an abandoned mine shaft which is an opportunity to get a brand new wood and some gold for the first time as well it's kind of crazy how rare emeralds are and yet you can get them so easily from villagers like what even is the point of going mining for emeralds now although i'm starting to think maybe they made them more common in the cave up there and look at this we even got some logs here they must be propping up the mine what on earth of all the blocks i did below lava. Might be able to get an ender pearl from this guy. He's stuck in a cobweb. Okay, he didn't get anything. So pretty good to know that emeralds are now way more common. The main thing I would have liked to find a mine shaft is a notch apple, but there was no sign of any chests. This is on fire, and look at this. It is going to lead us to the diamond dimension. But you didn't expect this. If you thought there were a load of diamonds before... Well, there's even more now. And I kind of feel like my portal could not have been in a worse place. But after doing a bit of micro lensing, it seems like most of the entities are in this direction. So I'm going to go this way and hopefully come to an opening. And I'm just going to grab a bit of extra obsidian so that I can easily leave if I need to. I'm going to make myself a boat. I'm going to carefully glide down here. I see a bit of lava and I was hopeful that would lead to somewhere, but it's... 
Bit of a dead end. So I'll just keep strip mining. And look at this. Finally, we have come to the end. If I just build around here now, I've got to make sure I don't do anything stupid. Jumping in the lava is the kind of thing I'd do. And now I have to explore whilst being very careful. And it does bring a bit of a challenge being in a diamond only world. Because it means obtaining blocks is very, very tricky. Since everywhere I look, it's just diamonds. Since I'm out of blocks, we're going to have to start using diamond ones. I managed to find some bone blocks, which are probably worth grabbing. I've come to another dead end, so I'm just going to dig my way through. And to save time, I'm going to begin using trapdoors so that I can dive my, my way through. Okay. <laughs> I dive mined and went through one block and we already made it out. Not as much of a dead end as I thought. And look at this. It sticks out really well in the diamond area. We have got a fortress. And this is perfect. We're right by a blaze spawner and it's a double spawner. This will let me get a lot of blaze rods very, very fast. And I would have loved to make a shield, but I've used all my wood in building. So instead, I'm going to have to try and use skill. And now I have 10 blaze rods. That should be enough. I don't really know what else I want to find at this place. Although I suppose a saddle could be useful. I mean, we got a diamond. Yay. Nether wart is also quite rare since it doesn't spawn in these fortresses. Look at all this obsidian. We've got gold. And a flint and steel, which is very useful since it's tricky to get myself flint. And a saddle. <laughs> I think I'm ready to leave. I'm going to grab loads of these bricks though, because blocks are very useful. And look what we have here. The entity counter led me straight to it. Can't beat a bit of micro lensing. Now I have to be very careful about the piglin brutes. There's some over there. There he is. He's, he's spotted me already. How am I going to block it? Oh, already he's, he's hit me. Okay, <laughs> we better just run. So point taken. I need to be very careful of these guys. Thankfully, I can kind of just use this lava to get rid of it. In fact, I've got a bucket of lava. Let's just do that. Thankfully, this piglin doesn't care, so we can just go straight into the chest. Look at that. Loads of string, some food, some nice boots. This is an enchanted diamond pickaxe, but I don't see the point of it. It's got Curse of Vanishing. And look at this, a golden apple. And that's about it in that chest. Let's also pour lava on this guy right here if you stop moving about. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, you don't stand a chance against me. I may have accidentally poured lava down all of the corridors now. It's a little bit tricky to tell, but I'm pretty sure we're in housing. Actually, never mind. I just realized that it's bridge. So let's try and jump to here. I'm going to take way too much damage for that. That was a very risky move. Oh my goodness, okay. Don't die now, SP. That would be a very sad moment. Let's go up here. Start stealing the gold. Oh my goodness, I'm on half a heart. That is, that is very, very worrying indeed. I really need to start being more careful in these places. This next part is where things could really go wrong. Although, not that part. But when I jump my way up here, I have to be careful of any piglin brutes. There's quite a few piglins there. We can probably just get them all into this hole. There we go. That's plenty of piglins. Kind of want to see if there's anything hidden through here. There is a chest, which has a gold block. And look at that, a mending pickaxe. That's way better. Now I just need these guys to give me the good stuff. If I just come over here. We can also go to the lodestone chest and get a lodestone. I don't have enough wood to make a chest, but if I mine this up, I can place that here and start filling it up with junk. This has given me a lot of very useful items, including the ability to make an ender chest. So all the useful items I can now put into here without having to come back. And I can also make an anvil and combine this book with my boots, which is a nice little upgrade for them. I'm very happy with all the items I've got from that, but I'd like to be able to come back to this bastion if I ever need to, so I'm going to dig a bit of a tunnel, and then I can easily get back here. This tunnel has been absolutely massive. I think I'm going to stop it here. I, I kind of started going through here a bit more, but it was another dead end. I just thought, you know what? This is as good a place as any, I think, to set up a way to return home. So let's put the obsidian like this, light it up, and go back. And this is where we've ended up. It doesn't really mean much to me. It's a brand new place. I'm going to get rid of this tree, if you can call it that. Probably never going to find that place again. But I think it's time I went searching for more wood. And a shipwreck might be my best option. And we've got a shipwreck down there. What have we got in this chest? Moss blocks. Oh, they're actually brand new. I'm going to actually drown it. Hold on a second. No point getting excited over moss if you're not alive to see it. Nice little air pocket with this door. Let's start collecting the wood. The main reason I wanted wood was so I could make a boat. Can't really remember where I put my other one. And here we have an amethyst geode. Not massively useful, but I do want to grab these shards. And then later on, I can make a spyglass. Mission to find a village has been successful. But you know what mission hasn't been successful? My quest for 3 million subscribers. So please, please, if you enjoy this video, could you take the time to subscribe? Main reason I wanted to find this is so that I could get more food. And you know what? This seems like a nice village. It's a lovely flat location. I think I'm going to build my house here. Now, what should I build my house out of? Considering a world full of diamonds everywhere, there's only one block to use. Yes, we're building it out of dirt because in this world, dirt is more precious than diamonds. You know what? Gravel as well, because everybody loves gravel. This must be the only world that I could get away with building this monstrosity. If I truly want to make this work, I'm going to have to get serious and steal more dirt. Wow. Wow, wow, what a masterpiece. I would like to add some windows, but for that I'll need glass, and sand is extremely, extremely rare. So instead I've got a better idea, but it's going to require me to go mining. Don't know what it is, but it's so much harder to find caves in this world. So I'm giving up and I'm just going to dig down. Well, in digging down, I found something I was looking for, and it has led me to a cave. There's plenty of iron down here, which is perfect. And I've also uncovered some copper, so let's mine that. That's enough stuff for me. I'm going to swim out of here. Now I've got to try and remember my way home, since everywhere looks the same here. I'll tell you where it doesn't look the same, though, guys. 
this beautiful house. The next question is, what did I do in my blast furnace? I've no idea. I can only guess I put it in the ender chest. Yes, I did. Now that I've found that, we can smelt this raw iron. Now I'm going to take this iron and do that. And this is my replacement for the glass. Wow, I have really outdone myself this time. I'm basically building a dirt prison. The issue now is that the terrain is kind of messed up, so it's hovering over nothing. So I want to try and get silk touch. I could either do that by scamming some villagers or find one at an entity, which is probably going to be more fun. It would also be very useful if I could get some gunpowder on the way. Oh my goodness, I see animals. I didn't think they would spawn here. They're very close to the village, which is just somewhere over there. So I'm going to remember about these guys. So it looks like it's an evening of hunting creepers. Very useful to find endermen on the way as well. Hopefully these guys both drop pearls. As is always the case, <laughs> neither of them did. There's plenty of creepers over here. Now I've got 16 gunpowder and I've only got 15 paper. So I don't think I'm going to need any more. That's all the fire at rockets I can make. Now are we heading into the waters? Oh, we're back this way. According to my calculations, it's somewhere around it. Yes. Okay. It's in this chunk. And now I can dig down with confidence. Look at that. We just got to level 50 and we're straight in the stronghold. The only sad thing about this is I only have eight eyes of ender. So it'd be great if I could find an ender. Well, we found one. Come on, make it two. Not quite, but more bread. Don't caves just look so amazing when there's diamonds everywhere? I hear silverfish, so I must be close to the portal room. Perfect, the bookcase room. That's going to get me even more paper. Sharpness three, that can go on my sword. And another sharpness three, and piercing four, and piercing four. Is that like the most popular thing or something? I'll grab a stack of books as well. Okay, I found it. <laughs> we found the room. I was just wandering around a corner to get this creeper, and we found it. Now then. We are going to need a few more ender pearls. I've got this one that I found, but I still need two more. Since I have found the portal room, it's probably a good idea just to staircase back up. I am collecting a lot of XP, so I'm just going to put these books together, and then I'm going to put it on my axe so I have a sharpness for axe. Very nice indeed. And it is now going dark, which makes it perfect to find endermen. Let's also make a little bit of a tower so I can find the way back down. This is usually a bad idea, but I'm just going to go and MLG my way down. Look at this, a ruined portal. Nothing too useful in there. Enderman number one has been spotted. No ender pearl, though. Oh my goodness, there's three over there. It really doesn't get more perfect than this. All right, let's see what this guy has to offer. All right, we got one. Now, hopefully this guy doesn't let me down. He didn't as well. Oh, well, that enderman is up there. Y you could just stay there. Might as well get a few extra creepers while I can. Now for the next phase of my plan to head to the end, which of course is all completely diamond. Let's go ahead and get rid of these towers. And that right there, I think is the final tower. Hold on a second. I've got this tower to get rid of as well. And now I can get the job done. And this sharpness four axe is very, very powerful. A few more hits on him. Might be able to get him with my bow now. Or maybe not. I've used up all my arrows. It doesn't matter too much because he is perching. And are you just here to ruin my day, sir? Not so tough now that you're stuck in a boat, are you? And there we go. The dragon has been defeated. And the best bit is all the beautiful XP. Okay, I didn't mean to go through the portal there. Because I slept in a bed and broke it, I have no home bed or charge respawn anchor, so I am... I'm all the way back at spawn. Just give me a bit of time, guys. I'll get back to the end. Managed to come across my house on the way back so I can drop off some stuff. The main thing I can drop off, I guess, is diamonds. I suppose I'll keep those blocks. Dropped off plenty of stuff. Now I can go traveling again. Here is the pillar that lets me know where the portal is. Let's head back to the end. Thank goodness all the XP is still here. This time I won't be stupid and walk into the portal. And for now, I'm going to leave the egg right there. And over here is the gateway, the gateway to the end city. And of course, it spawned me on a tiny little island in the middle of nowhere, which means already I'm going to have to do loads of bridging. And blocks aren't exactly something that I have a lot of. The smart thing to do would have just been to make a cobblestone generator. But you know me, I never do the smart thing. So instead, we're going to play a risky game and use ender pearls. Pretty sure if I ender pearl onto the side of that, it should just... Yep, drop me down to one heart. But hey, we made it onto mainland. And now to track down that end city. Is that what I think it is? Fading into view. An end city. And not only that, it has an end ship as well. And instead of build a cross, why don't I just end a pearl? So this is, of course, where all the good stuff is. But this is also the area where I have to be very, very careful. One wrong move and it could be curtains for me. Got my first shulker shell. Shulkers also now multiply if they get hit by another shulker, which is pretty good. Well, it's good for getting shulker shells. It's not good if you get overrun by millions of them. And why go up through the dangerous inside when I can just float up the outside? And here is my first loot. There's absolutely shulkers everywhere. Let's just go across here. Okay, I'm going to try and like, can I box myself in a little bit? There we go. Okay, that, that'll do. Got another shulker shell. I can now make a shulker box. And look at this loot. Perfect. Curse of binding though. I, I, I'm not falling for that. This is also a great way to get some extra obsidian. Now let's keep searching upwards. This looks like another place with treasure again. Well, I was wrong. It's just a place with millions of shulkers. I think my next move should be to go to the end ship. This is where things can go wrong if I'm not careful. Come on. There we go. I I'm going to wait for these things to hit me. There we go. We've got one of those. I think we should be able to make it by floating over. It's going to be tight. There we go. We just about did. Now I just need to get rid of this guy. Get the beautiful elytra. And look at all the gold. Those are some nice leggings as well. These do have mending on them, but can I... Can I put them to get... Oh, no, it would keep the Curse of Van... Oh, it's Curse of Vanishing. Oh, that's fine, because uh, let's be honest, I'm <laughs> I'm never going to die. Well, what I actually mean when I say that is if I do die, 
I'm not going to be playing anymore. Since that's what happens when you play on a hardcore world. Now then, is there any more loot in this place? I'm starting to think the answer is no, and I should search for another end city. Thankfully, it's going to be much, much easier now. Look at this, guys. Not one end city, but two end cities. I'm going to first head to the smaller one and see if there's any loot here. And the answer is no. <laughs> there's no loot whatsoever. Well, I'm glad I found two if that's the kind of service I get. Let's start with the end ship, since at least on here you're guaranteed to get some loot. More gold. Yeah, I'm probably going to leave all of that stuff and... <laughs> I'm about to get excited about diamonds. We're, we do know what world we're in, don't we? A world where I've got more than enough diamonds. And finally, a silk touch pickaxe. That's the, that's the entire reason I came here. Let's not forget the elytra. They're very nice. And see if there's any extra loot over here. I think this is the place. Yeah, the top of this place does have something. The old Shulker Tower of Nightmares. Let's see what these chests have to offer. Finally, a diamond shovel. And wow, this is some chest. A looting three sharpness four sword. Okay, see you later, old sword. We don't need you. We don't need smite and sweep. Well, we can take the sweeping edge, actually. Yeah, if I go like that, we get sweeping edge three on it as well. That's a nice little upgrade. And I believe that that's all this place has to offer. And I've got the loot that I wanted. I think it's time I headed home. I've managed to find an end gateway, but also an end city over here. Might as well grab any loot that I come from here. And it has to be said, there is a few nice things here. If I put those together, my leggings are nearly maxed. And it's a nice little upgrade to my helmet. Let's grab another pair of elytra. And I keep forgetting to do this, but I want to bring home the dragon head. And there's got to be some more loot to be had here. Two chests waiting for me. Oh my goodness, look at that for a helmet. That's that's way better than my current one. And this would be amazing if it didn't have Curse of Binding on it. I'm not going to be interested in that. And this is the final chest that I can find at this place. And maybe the boots are useful. Depth Strider, I'll take that. Well, I've got everything I need. Let's go to the gateway. Nice and steady. In we go. And before I leave, of course, it would be a nice idea to grab the egg. Place a torch there. Mine that up. Perfect. And pick it up. And this is probably going to take me to spawn. This time, it's not a massive issue since I can fly. I've just seen this pool of lava on my way. So I'm going to grab a bucket. And that way, when I get back home, I can make a cobblestone generator. There it is. Beautiful. Can you believe I just did all of that for a silk touch pickaxe? But hey, it was totally worth it. Now I can properly terraform the land. And with this shovel, I can get dirt much faster. I don't want to ruin this village too much. So I'm going to fly away and find another one to ransack. What do we got in this chest? More obsidian, kind of useful. And look at this. Apparently we're in a desert right now, which is fine, but it does mean that I can't steal any dirt. I can, however, steal plenty of hay bales. This is much better. A village containing the precious dirt. Oh man, these flowers, these are rare. I'll tell you what, you don't see many flowers in the world. I'll tell you what else you don't see much of. Sugar cane. It would be amazing if I could get some of that. What do we have here? It seems to be a desert temple. Look at this. <laughs> All sorts of blocks and it's just got one blue terracotta. The good thing about finding this is I can get TNT, which is pretty hard to get. And sand as well. That's also pretty rare. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit lost, but I have found this ruin with a beautiful gold block. Mission to find my house has been successful. And this leaves me with enough dirt to complete the project. And the next thing I need to finish my house is gravel, which I'm probably best trading with piglins. And we found a pretty good place for it. Although I did leave my chest plate at home, which is going to make life a bit harder. Some nice iron, food, another golden apple. I'm not going to take anything else from here. A little bit of extra gold, thank you. Deal with these guys, no trouble at all. And look at this, my first ancient debris. I'm going to distract all these guys because they're probably going to get angry when I open this chest. Yeah, there we go, perfect. I'm going to take the spectral arrows as well. Fire resistance seems to be way more common now, but it's the gravel that I want. So I'm going to loot this one the only way I know how. That is digging down here and quickly placing the block over my head. Yeah, that guy was coming for me. And none of the piglings are getting angry at me at the moment. I'm guessing none of them are nearby enough. I never thought I'd be going to a bastion with the goal of collecting gravel. The only chest I can find is this one right here, but I can't, can't really reach it now. Now this guy's in the way. You get out of here. Anything decent in here? Not really. Okay, these guys here, they look a little bit angry now. Another gold block here, and there's a chest over there with more ancient debris. There's a few more gold blocks to be had up here. And now I'm going to try and find another bastion that's going to be easier to trade at. Another brand new bastion. And I've somehow got to the point where I have zero space in my inventory. Probably don't need two elytra. I'm going to combine them together. Now let's get mining. Up here will be the perfect place to trade. And I have much gold to give them. Look at that, a netherite scrap. Look at this for a chest. So much good stuff. And another piece of ancient debris. We can get a netherite ingot now. Finally, I can end those days of peasant diamond and begin the journey to full netherite armor. Should have all the gravel I need now. This is a pretty good time to leave. And here it is, my way back home. All that way for a bit of gravel, but hey, it was definitely worth it. I hope you're all taking notes, you people that think that you're good builders, because wow, what a house this is. Go on, just tell me that this isn't the greatest thing you've ever seen, because it is without a doubt 
the best build I've ever done. It's beautiful. It's everything that the dirt deserves to be. But it's not quite finished. There's work to be done, such as diamond blocks around the outside. Apparently two creepers have already moved into my house. Maybe I should just leave it as a prison and keep them in there. Oh my goodness, there's three of them? Are you kidding me? This is my house. You can't live there. And the final plan is to have black stone in the middle. I'd love to make this floor lava with glass on top, but it's going to take quite a lot of sand. So far I've got 16. I need 69 in total, so I'm going to go searching for more desert temples. Look at this, a shipwreck out of water. This will be very useful because I do need to get more paper. And the buried treasure will be a nice bonus. According to the map, it should be right here. There we go, perfect. We've got some iron and some TNT. Not going to bother with the diamonds for obvious reasons. And what do we have in this shipwreck down here? More iron and some emeralds? And another treasure map, which apparently leads to the exact same place. You can't get much of a bigger scam than that. Now here we have a golden rabbit, which means we're in a desert, which is just the place for finding sand. I can see sandstone, which looks to me like a desert pyramid. They always seem to be submerged to these, don't they? I'm just going to dig straight... Okay, I'm glad I didn't land that MLG. This time I'm just going to gracefully fly down. More sand, which gets me to 28 pieces, but not quite enough. Free TNT at the same time, though. And there's another one right here, which had no sand. Well, this isn't good news. My elytra broke. Looks like it's time for the old-fashioned boat. And speaking of boats, I've spotted a shipwreck. Although there wasn't anything particularly useful on it. And I've just realised I'm an idiot and that I can actually trade glass from villagers. Well, that's the end of the sand adventure. I know I've always said that diamonds are for peasants. But when you have elytra that don't work, I feel like walking is for peasants. This is a new one, a tiger village. This place gives me access to new wood. And if I can find some chests, even some new saplings. I found some potatoes. This can only mean one thing. I'm going to take a leaf out of Technoblade's book and build a giant potato farm. You see, the thing is, guys, I want more villagers. And to get more villagers, you might need to give them potatoes, carrots, or bread. And so potatoes are going to be my personal choice of food for them. But before I do any of that, I've just got to get a mending book. Because I'm not living my life without Elytra. I don't know why, but to me, a lodestone is the perfect holder for the dragon egg. You good sir are going to be the man that gets me mending. And to be honest, that was relatively quick. We have the mending book. I need more emeralds though, oh my goodness. Hopefully I have some spare ones in this chest, or maybe this chest, or maybe this chest. Okay, we've got eight, we need 10 more. I think it's time for Operation Scammer Farmer. This right here shall be the farmer that I scam. If I turn all of this into hay, okay, we've got a lot. No, don't steal it. Oh no, they're gonna pick it up. Um, <laughs> oh well, we got what we needed. Let's buy the mending book. Thankfully the hay bales themselves didn't get picked up. And these guys are never escaping. Let's put these elytra together and then put mending on it. And now if I start digging diamonds, I will collect XP and my elytra will get back to full health. Need to break a few more diamonds first. Since I've now got mending, I think I'm going to get unbreaking as well. And this is where the great potato farm is going to be built. The reason I'm doing this instead of trading is because I have to wait till tomorrow for the villagers to update their jobs. And there we have it, the unbreaking trade, but I need 29 emeralds. Try selling more wheat to this guy. And if I needed wheat, well, there's loads here. One of the hardest achievements to get that, a seedy place. Spent so long trying to get the emeralds for this guy, that he changed his trade. Hopefully this next time, it's going to be a bit cheaper. This guy has just offered me prop 4, which is pretty rare to get. So I'm going to buy a few of those and fully upgrade my armor. I should probably make a start on growing some of these potatoes as well. You'd better not get in my way. No point tilling everything just yet since I only have 12 potatoes. Let's give this guy some more gold and add protection 4 to this helmet. Then add protection 4 to this chest plate. Can't do too much more till I get more potatoes and more villagers. So I'm instead going to try and find something very difficult. And that is going to be ancient debris. Because let's be honest, diamonds for peasants, I can only last so long with it. This is something that's going to be way, way more challenging than a normal world, but I still want to test something out. If I go like that, it doesn't really blow up a big enough area for it to be worth it, does it? I think I'm just going to strip mine and hope for the best. One of the good things about this is because I get XP every time I break a block, my pickaxe keeps mending and will never break. I'm also going to do a bit of blasting with this TNT. Doesn't uncover too much, but it's a little bit better. Over 10 TNT used, and still no ancient debris. I knew getting ancient debris was going to be tough, but I didn't think it was going to be this hard. Oh my goodness, we, we got some. Okay. <laughs> I was beginning to lose all hope. And then we found some ancient debris. And now the last piece of TNT. So two pieces of ancient debris for 30 TNT. <laughs> this could take a while. Finally, I found some... <laughs> I've been losing the will to live here big time. How many pieces is it? Okay, just one, but one's better than none. I dug this massive strip mine, and I've just been digging off at all these branches to see if I can find an extra piece of ancient debris. Three pieces down, many more to go. Okay, we've managed to find another piece of ancient debris. And it's actually at least two pieces, maybe even a third. Okay, never mind, it was only two. Another piece has been found, perfect. Sadly, this time it was only one. Finally, we've got another piece. 
And it turns out it's two pieces. That gives me eight in total, which for now is going to be enough for me. Now I've just got to walk a million miles through these tunnels to get back to the beginning. Finally, I'm back at the staircase. And here we are, home sweet home. Let's start smelting this ancient debris. The millions of diamond blocks I now have can also go here. Two more netherite ingots can be crafted. And now I can make a netherite helmet. And I'm also going to make a netherite pickaxe. My next issue is that I am completely out of food. So I'm going to grow a few more potatoes, craft a furnace from Blackstone. And it looks like I'm going to be living off baked potatoes. And whilst I wait for the potato farm to become its true form, I'm going to go on an exploration journey to find new villages. Anything good in this chest here? <laughs> Not really. Although I have found animals, so I should probably get some of these so I can get more food. And I'm going to quickly pop back home and grab my looting three sword so I can get more food faster. Now then, will this cow outsmart me? Here we go. Nope, he couldn't get in the water before I got him. That pig has a child, so I won't orphan it. The food situation is now looking a lot healthier. Finally, I've spotted another village. You know what the best thing I get from this place? Free dirt. Not only can I get dirt, I can also get more wheat, more wood, and more bread. I've well and truly ransacked this village. <laughs> Time for me to leave. It'd be quite handy to find a shipwreck with paper in it. Apparently I've already been to this one. Since the only way I'll ever get sugarcane is through a wandering trader. And look at this, another village on the way back. With lots more hay for me to steal. It gives me a stack and a half of hay bales and I'm also going to steal their bell. Pretty successful mission, let's get out of here. I can't stop finding them, another village. I'm just here for the wheat. And a grindstone is actually something I'm going to need. And I might as well take some extra bread. Another grindstone, going to steal it. And I better leave before they get too angry. Here we are, home sweet home. If I place down some more beds and then give these villagers some bread. We'll have some baby villages on the way very soon. And I'm very excited that I can now expand my potato farm even more. Just a little update on the potato farm. It is coming along very nicely. Before you know it, the only thing we're going to be missing are the potatoes. And this potato farm is now finished. Just need to grab this water, place it up here, do it again here, and find it on this one. And as you can see, the water just nicely flows down all the way. And the next task is to till all of the ground. And there we go. It's, it's really starting to come together. These potatoes are ready for harvesting. And then we can replant more. I need to grab some more diamond blocks and place these as walls to stop any potatoes from escaping. Didn't think it'd take me that long, but the water is now all covered up. All I really need now is a system here that releases water all the way to the bottom. And to do that, we're going to need redstone. So far, we have 20. We're going to need a lot more than that. Let's also give these guys down here a bit of bread. See if I get any baby villages that way. So I can either hunt for a cave or I can just dig down. From experience, cave hunting is a bit tricky, so I'm just going to dig down. And I just dug into lava. Oh, wait, I got fire resistance. No need to panic. Oh, we found some redstone at least. More redstone and even more. You know what? I think with this, I should probably have enough. We've got 80 pieces there, plus a load that's at home. No point mining for ages. Might as well just get back. There's an extra villager here, so I'm guessing... Oh, look at this. In fact, there's a baby villager in, in there as well somewhere. Yeah. So we are getting more villagers, which is perfect for my plan. The only thing I need a lot of now is some cobblestone. So this right here is going to be an extremely simple one that has water there and lava there. And then I can just mine like this and... Okay, hold on. It's, it's not quite as intended. I'll let the lava flow to here first. And then, yeah, look at that. Perfect. To be completely honest, this design is far from perfect. I'm going to build a much better one. So the water goes there. The lava goes here. And there we go. It makes cobblestone. And I can just sit here and mine to my heart's content. Now with this newfound cobblestone, I can make 16 pistons all in a row along here. Next, I want blocks directly below them. And feed into those blocks, we're going to need some repeaters. I also didn't use a good material. Why did I put wood here? Of course it's going to burn up. Some crying obsidian is a much better material. Now to make the repeaters, we're going to have to smelt the cobblestone. With this villager, I can use my new plant to get lots and lots of emeralds. This guy is going to trade coal for emeralds, which does sound rubbish to begin with, but once I upgrade him a lot more, instead of having to sell him coal, I'll be selling him diamonds. And as you can imagine, we've, we've got plenty of them. So the basic premise for this is going to be a repeater like that, and redstone right here, and that's going to basically connect all of those, and there's going to be something that connects down here, some sort of button. That will lower the pistons, releasing the water, which will harvest the crops. I feel like I need to make another furnace. This is going to take forever. Well, that means I've got to mine more cobblestone. I mean, two furnaces will make it twice as good. At least that's the theory, anyway. I've crafted all the required repeaters for this section, and redstone along here is going to connect them all up. One final repeater there, and then we're going to add these blocks with redstone behind each one and finally a little staircase downwards with redstone that connects all the way back to the beginning with a button but as it happens i've somehow run out of redstone so we're going mining Might as well grab any coal i see on the way since it'll be given to that villager perfect even more redstone and more coal after mining up this redstone i've probably got enough now what have we got here wait is it amethyst geode didn't expect to randomly come across one of these and because it's right below my house all of them are pretty much grown so i might as well grab loads of shards and to me that's a great time to head back to the surface we can finally finish wiring up this machine and look at that, just enough redstone. Just need to mine up a piece of cobblestone, create a lever, and if everything's gone to plan, all of the pistons 
should extend. Next, I can place blocks along here. And with these blocks, we can create a nice little trough, which then needs to be filled with water sources. Thankfully, this is pretty easy with the way that water works. And if I was to flick this lever, it would now release the water and harvest all the potatoes. But as you can see, we're... We're a little bit short in that department. So I'm going to go and get a load of bone meal and grow more. But before I do that, I'd like to give this guy some coal. And the best way for me to find bone meal is to find some fossils. And here we have some right here. Already I've got half a stack, which is probably going to be enough. And now with this, we can grow the potatoes and create a thriving farm. I've grown quite a lot here. I think I'd like to test it out. So we flick this lever. Now is the water coming? It would seem I made a slight, slight miscalculation and didn't account that this water would have to also go over these blocks. But don't worry, I've got a plan. Fine instead put gravel on top of these pistons and replace this water like this and fill in the water a layer higher. In theory, it should work this time. Here we go. Take two. Come on, water. Flow all the way down for me. Yes, it's going. And it's about to harvest my potatoes. Look at that. We'll add some hoppers at the bottom eventually, but I'm just glad that the machine is working well. I feel like I'm the only person that could get this excited over a simple potato farm. Finally, I can add some doorbells to my house. I think I'm going to add diamond blocks like this, which means I'll only need 45 pieces of glass to fill that in. And now I'm going to go on a bit of an exploration journey with the goal of finding more paper. And more coal will be nice as well. And mountains like these are perfect for that. I'm going to duck into this cave. Hopefully it doesn't just to a dead end. Oh, look at this. Perfect. Loads of coal. Did they make coal more common or something? It seems to be everywhere. Found another mine shaft as well. This is going to be useful just to get a bit more wood. Not that I'm particularly short on it. And now the search for paper continues. This is where I want to be the ocean with a dolphin. Look at this up ahead. A pillager outpost. We can definitely use this to get a totem. And look at this. Dark oak as well. Pillagers only spawn on dirt, grass and sand during the day, but at night they'll spawn on any block. So I shouldn't have to wait long to get more of these guys, although we've got the very one that we want. And now that we've been exiled, we can get out of here. And over here we have a village which is pretty close by. So it looks like it's time to start the raid. Kind of wish I brought a shield but we should be okay. Just gonna have to do some dodging and weaving. Wave one, pretty easy. Oh my goodness, that guy's in the village. No, don't let him die. I, I, did I stop him? That's it. Whoa, I won't let anything happen to you guys. Whoa, wait, where were you? This is very handy. They're all stuck on an island. So you're gonna try and come at me through the water, are you? I think I could just hit this guy from below and yeah, he can't get me. This is very, very OP indeed. They won't be coming at me through the water again in a hurry. I really don't get why you guys don't all just go inside and stay inside where it's safe. So, they think they can come through the water. Well, let's be honest, it didn't work well for you last time. Although against the Ravager, it does kind of make it a little bit trickier. Decide it's going to be on my terms and we're going to do it on land. From this guy, we can get my first totem. Let's just equip that. It's sad to say, I think my boots just broke. Gollum. Don't come out to sea. I'm pretty sure you can't swim. And I'm on half a heart. I'm just going to keep moving. I think it's time for a golden apple. Hang on a minute. The Gollum is... He's doing a good job. You distract him, Gollum, I'll come from behind. And now the next wave begins. And it's the island tactic again. I just hit a villager. I am so sorry. That was an accident, mate. I, I, I just saw someone come around the corner. I'm blaming you. You're confusing me. Another totem. Can I pick it up? Let's just throw something out. Definitely makes life a lot easier when there's no ravagers. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is the final wave. With not one, but two ravagers. Oh, well, there goes the first totem. Thankfully, I've got another. It's definitely a much harder battle when you don't have a bow. If I can get rid of this guy, though, things will be a lot easier. Hold on, guys. Just a quick timeout. I need to go to sleep. Now, let's get rid of you once and for all. And you as well. You've been doing my heading. There we go. Now, I've got to stop these guys completely ransacking the village. Oh, my goodness. I've just used another totem. I've had just about enough of this. I'm building a tower. Taking them out the safe way. Here we have the final guy. Come on, let's get rid of you. We've got another totem. I d defeat. I lost. Uh, but you'd think I've lost anyway, but who's the real winner? Because I got two more totems. So even though the village is completely ruined, I've got three totems in total. I may have used up two, but I guess that's just one of those things. Now the quest to find a shipwreck continues. And look at that, a shipwreck has been spotted dead ahead. And the good thing about this one is it's definitely going to have some paper in it. Okay, that's the wrong chest. Well, that was a lot of lovely iron. As I was saying, it's definitely going to have paper in it. We might as well take this map and see where it leads. Apparently southwest is the way it's saying. Somewhere over here. It's actually very close to the outpost. And if I dig right about here, look at that, there's the chest loads of loot. Now my search for paper can resume. I keep finding these geodes everywhere. Look, there's one down there. There's another one all the way over there. But most importantly, there's a shipwreck here. Sadly, not one with paper. But hey, more potatoes. <laughs> I like a bit of that. This one looks better. Let's grab the treasure and also the paper. And this map right here is going to be southwest. This shipwreck's a bit of a letdown, but I'm going to take the carrots. Even more paper in here. And this one should also have paper and another map. Although sadly, both the maps point to exactly the same place. Let's also grab this treasure whilst we're here. And this doesn't seem right, but according to the map... Oh, it is. It's all the way back here. It has more gold, more TNT, emeralds. Brilliant. I feel like I should bring at least one heart of the sea home in case I ever want it. I've got space, so I'm picking up the fish. 
So now I can craft some firework rockets, equip my elytra, and fly back home. And what have we got here? Even more iron, and more paper, and potentially a new map. This treasure should be right about here, I think. Yep, there we go, we found it, and loads more iron. And that's enough exploring for me, let's head back home. And look at this, we found a monument on the way. Well, I might as well go in and defeat the Elder Guardians. Here's the first guy. Okay, my heart, my health just got completely crushed by those guardians. <laughs> Gotta be a little bit more careful. Maybe wearing a chest plate would be a good idea. I think it's all about just being slow and steady. If it's slow and steady you want, then my axe is a tool for the job. There we go, we got the first one. Don't know what I'll do with this sponge, but it's gonna be nice to have. Here is the goal, but I'm not ready for that. And oh my goodness, there is a lot of guardians. I gotta be careful. Hey guys, I just realized why they're called guardians. It's because they guard the monument. It's all making sense now. Not many people can say they've done this. Gone for a sleep underwater. The good thing about that is you can actually breathe while you're doing it. Here's Elder Guardian number two. Oh, look at this. We've got him on the ropes already. Kind of got myself on the ropes there. A little bit weak. But that guy's weak as well. We got him. And now I've just got one Elder Guardian left to find. Here he is. There we go. We got him. And here's the sponge room. So we might as well grab this as well. Just got to wait a couple of minutes to get rid of the minor fatigue. And the minor fatigue has now run out. So let's just get rid of that sponge and... Do I have a hoe? Doesn't look like it, but that's not a problem. I'm just going to have to mine everything by hand. I found the other sponge room as well. Perfect. I can also get back my bed and steal their gold. And with that, I'm getting out of here. A ruins on the way here with a golden apple. That's nice. I can still dream of one day finding that notch apple. Tell you what, guys, there's no place like home. Let's offer this guy more coal. All of a sudden, coal isn't really that valuable. But iron, well, that definitely is. And look at that. Diamonds are his next trade. Oh my goodness, mate. Have I got good news for you? Look at this. You want diamonds? Oh, we've got loads of them. And then the plan from that is just to have loads of those guys that I can sell diamonds to. Even though this eventually will be a strictly potato farm, I'm going to plant some carrots here as well. First order of business, buy some mending books. Well, this is where the missing villagers are. You're losing the cauldrons. Well, I don't think you are. Instead, you're going to be staying in here because you guys are going to be buying diamonds from me. But of course, first I need to upgrade you a little bit. No idea what I'll do with these iron helmets. Look at that. He's willing to buy diamonds. Perfect. Now you're next. This guy's let me down. He's wanting lava for emeralds. You're supposed to want diamonds. I'll deal with you in the morning. Now, although you've let me down, I need you to breed more villagers first, so I'm going to have to leave you alive. So here's some bread for both of you. I'm going to expand your house so it's a little bit bigger, and then place some beds here so that we get more villagers. Look at this. The plan's working. We've got a baby villager. Now let's add mending to this chest plate, and I think I'm going to head to the stronghold and get a load more books. And there's the pole to mark it. Let's head down these steps. I can also get more gunpowder while I'm here. And here are all the books cases I'm gonna actually mine them up with silk touch it'll just save me wood further down the line I've got 18 bookcases that should be enough so I'm just gonna get the rest as books I've got more than enough books I'm getting out of here did I ever come to this bookcase room I don't think I did and look at this more books and more paper and look at these brilliant and a bit more in this chest as well now we can fly back home grab more coal on the way because I'm still gonna need it these bookcases can be placed here and I'll use these to upgrade my armor the only thing I'm missing now is some lapis so once again I'm going on a caving mission but I'd also like to craft some shears and if possible just get a a load of wool on my way. It's kind of sad to think that once that sheep's been sheared, it can never grow back its wool again, since there's no grass in the world for it to eat. Well, I successfully did the lapis part of the mission, and I even got more paper on the way. Can't be bothered with the treasure map anymore. I mainly wanted wool so I could make beds, but it's going to be way quicker for me to just steal them from the villagers. And an extra lectern's always nice. This poor fella just trying to get some shud iron, he's, he's been taken out. I have to say, this village has a lot of beds. Now my inventory's full, I might as well head back home. I wonder if I've been here before. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I probably have. Here we are, home sweet home. Good news, guys. I've got you loads more beds. I think it's probably time we made your house a bit bigger. Really? You fell in the hole as well? You know what? I'm just going to build a thriving village down here. This is where the villagers will now live. And they've got more than enough beds. Minor tunnel so you guys can come through to your new home. Looks like you want your job site blocks down here as well. No problem at all, matey. Now I've transported these guys to a much better location. And finally, let's light up their home with some torches. Next, I can use all of those blocks to expand this house. All right, the walls are coming down. You guys are going to have way more space. I think that means I'm going to move the beds around. And you know what? All those items in there, I'm just going to let them despawn. I'm so sorry. I did not mean that. I'm so... Wait, don't tell them. Don't get them angry, please. No, don't go and talk to them. Oh my goodness, you've blooming doubled your price for diamonds. Well, I'll still pay it. That was a slight disaster, but I'm sure you'll get over it. Now then, let's craft some diamond boots. And I'm going to go and upgrade them. I'm going to do a little bit of combining here and put those with that. There we go. Okay, that's way more expensive. Just broke my anvil there, putting those together. Thankfully, it's no trouble because we have loads of iron. I'm happy with these two boots, and I will combine them, but first I want to get some other boots with feather falling and thorns. And bread! Let's give you guys more bread! And that goes for you guys as well. Since I have so much iron and so much wood, I could make a load of chests 
and then a load of hoppers and create a nice little system where all the potatoes will go into this chest by bringing hoppers along like this. And I tell you what, I think the fields are ripe for harvesting. Just gonna add a little barrier along here like this. And now time for the big reveal. Here we go. Look at it. The water is moving along nicely. Very, very satisfying to watch. Just a few potatoes that escaped the grasp. And look at this chest nicely filling up. Whilst I wait for that, I'm gonna go and find more lapis. I can kind of go down this hole, I think. Um, I'm just going to gracefully float down though. There's no need to do anything stupid. And now I just need to strip mine. Okay, I found some very, very quickly indeed. 41 should be enough for now. Actually, never mind. I'm going to keep going. And I found some more already as well. Okay. I found a lot of lapis very quick. Did they make it more common in 1.17 or something? And the best thing is I can very easily fly out of here. I've got Feather Falling 4 and these. The only thing I need now is a Thorns book. And hopefully this fella will give it to me when he grows up. Can't wait to see how much we got. Look at all this. It's still filtering in. That's crazy. Let's also smelt more stone. Let's make two furnaces and two blast furnaces. Grab a load of coal and get some more armorers. Sell him a load of coal and upgrade him to the diamond one. He's another lava bucket to you. <laughs> You don't want to know what happens to lava bucket men. Let's see if this guy's any better. Oh my goodness. You as well. So you want lava, you want lava, and you want lava. Well, your days are numbered. I'm just going to plant my potatoes and move on. And wow, what a farm this is. I didn't realize it would take such a long time to plant all of these. But hey, it's definitely worth it. Hi guys, I brought food. Enjoy. That's it. Feast to your heart's content. Oh, look at them. They love it. They can't get enough of the potatoes. I managed to get thorns too, which means that I believe I can max out this armor if I... Okay, well, it's going to be quite... An expensive thing. Actually, it's it's too expensive, so <laughs> need a new plan. Whilst I wait for villagers to grow up, I'm going to go mining for ancient debris. Tell you what, finding ancient debris really is a nightmare in this world. Finally, I found some more. And it's two pieces. Thank goodness for that. I better make that three. That definitely makes me feel better about spending another 20 minutes strip mining. And here we've got some more. It's actually two pieces. Didn't take anywhere near as long to find that vein. Another piece of ancient debris. Very nice. Although, unfortunately, it was only one by the looks of things. Okay, we've got another piece. Perfect. And it's two. All right, that's really, really good. That means I've got eight pieces of ancient debris, so I'm getting out of here. It's very nice to be back, and it's probably a good time to get some sleep. Now, I can smelt this ancient debris, sell some diamonds to this guy, and this guy as well. Let's craft a couple of ingots, and as soon as I get thorns, I'll make some netherite armor. Finally, I've got a guy that will give me thorns three for a pretty good price as well. I'm going to buy a few of these. Now I can add that to this chest plate and turn it into a netherite one. And the same with the boots. And I made a mistake in the... <laughs> They're too expensive. They're almost maxed. I just need to get feather falling on them. And that's what I'll do if I ever get the book. Look at that. We're covered in debris. I just need a little bit more XP from diamonds. And I can also max out my helmet. RIP to another anvil. I'm a little low on emeralds, so I'm going to buy some more. Now I'm going to spend some time getting feather falling. Finally managed to get feather falling. Let's buy that. And this guy spawned in. Anything good for me, sir? Well, if you'd have given me sugarcane, I would have loved you. But instead... <laughs> You're not welcome. The next thing I need is a brand new anvil, and I've only got seven iron. So you know what that means? We're going mining. And I just used my totem like an idiot. <laughs> I thought I could fly down, but I, I didn't start flying early enough. I should find some iron. And in total, I'm going to need 31 iron. I should dig into a cave, and that has loads of iron. I think once I've mined up this, I should have all the iron that I need. Yep, 32 pieces. That's more than enough. I missed some here as well. I'll grab that. Now, the best way out of here is to dig straight up. Looks like I'm digging straight past an amethyst geode, but I've got better things to do than going there. Let's set that off smelting. And the potatoes look ready for harvesting. This is probably the most exciting part of the video for me. Watching all the potatoes go into the hoppers. Gonna scam these villagers a bit more. Craft a new anvil. And with that, I can fully max out my armor. There you have it. The perfect armor, and it only took me 72 days. And next, I'd like to battle the wither. So I've got a looting sword. I'm gonna go and get all of the things that I need. Thankfully, there's a fortress right next door to my portal which I can use and this next part could take some time but it was actually very quick for you and I have all the stuff that I need and I boxed myself in because things started to get a little bit hectic but I'm just going to make a run for it the good thing is this fortress is in a warped forest so loads and loads of mobs can spawn and here we are home sweet home I'm going to get a little bit more experience by mining diamonds there we go level 30 and look at the upgrades I've got on my bow if I go and combine those together we've got a power 5 one also got 53 blaze rods from my time in the fortress that's quite a lot I'm also going to get myself a bit more food so that we're ready for the challenges ahead now, my plan is to spawn the wither in such a way that I can find ancient debris. Because mining around for it, well, it, it just takes too long. So I reckon if I put this guy like this... Alrighty, now we need to stand back. Get ready for the explosion. Okay, did you expose any ancient debris? No, you're useless. If I can just kind of stand around look at him, yeah, that's it. Keep breaking stuff. I just hit him with my sword a few times. That gets him a little bit crazy. A lot of XP and diamonds are flowing. I can also just about get him with my bow. Just realized I completely forgot to bring my totem, so I've got to be careful. See, this is the way to strip mine. I just keep hitting him, and then he breaks a load of blocks for me. I don't know why I've never done this before. In Minecraft, it's so effective. Oh, I'm going to a dead end and there's lava flowing in. That's um 
Not quite what I was expecting. Oh, there's lava everywhere, eh? Just gonna try and swim through. Now then, any ancient debris around here? None so far. So I'll just keep going with this method. I really have got a great system going at this point. Oh my goodness, there's ancient debris on the ground. I've got to grab it. So the wither will not only find you ancient debris, it will break it for you as well. I've run out of tunnels, so I'm just going to get rid of this wither now. There we go. I was just keeping him alive all the time. I had also run out of food, but what an effective way to get ancient debris. But now the real question is, did we get more than two pieces? I was also very close to withering away. There we have one and a half hearts and no food. So far, I've not had much success with this. I've got to be careful with this lava as well. It seems to flow. Look at that. It does that. It tries to catch you out. Oh, hold on. We've got some ancient debris. Perfect. Is it just two pieces? Yeah, it looks like that's all there is, but that gives me four in total, which is another netherite piece. Not looking forward to somehow navigating through all this lava. Here is the staircase. And thank goodness I can grab a totem and also start cooking some food. And if I take this netherite scrap, combine it with gold to make netherite ingot, I can now get the netherite sword. And if I sell some of these diamonds, and sell a few more to this guy as well, and then buy a mending book, I can add mending to my sword. And I managed to get a sharpness 4 book, so if I go and combine them together... Sharpness five. I'm going to take five sand and set it off smelting. And then I'm going to deal with the uh, <laughs> the potato overload. I have got a lot of planting to do. Another day of farming is complete. And my glass is finished. Let's grab three pieces of obsidian. Craft a beacon. And of course, we're going to need some diamond blocks. And let me just clear a bit of a space so that we now have a full diamond beacon. And there we go. It is complete. Let's put a diamond in there. Hold on a second. Why is it? Oh, yeah. We have to uh, select haste. Let's do a haste two one because... That's just going to be good. Let's be mine the diamond slightly faster. Let's give loads of potatoes to my villagers and attempt to get a villager that will trade me a fire aspect book. Okay, that was very quick indeed. Fire aspect two, we can afford it. Let's get rid of all these diamond blocks and get out of here. And now that my sword is upgraded to fire aspect two, I can go on a journey to find some animals. And this will give me lots and lots of cooked food. Looting three fire aspect is very powerful. I've already got 70 pieces. 100 pork chops should be enough for me. But hey, I can see eight more pigs. I might as well get these as well. All right, we've got over two stacks. I'm stopping it this point. Count yourself lucky, little piggy. There's also a ruined portal on the way. Still no elusive not chapel. I have to say, when I swoop in to see this potato farming, it brings a tear to my eye. It really is beautiful. Now, I think it's about time we got this finished. Spent ages building an amazing house, and I live outside of it. So that means I need to upgrade one of these guys up to the point where they will give me glass. Of course, I've got a plan. It involves selling potatoes. Gone are the days when I can just hand potatoes out for free. Let's slap down some composters and start selling. Well, this guy's already going to want to buy potatoes. Perfect. And as quick as that, I've already sold out. But I'm also very close to upgrading this guy. Sold a few more diamonds. I can afford another bookcase. And this guy's selling silk touch. Actually, I quite like that. You've successfully made a sale site. We'll also buy a load of lanterns. And there we go. We've got the glass. Let's add silk touch to this pickaxe. Buy more emeralds. And I can get all the glass in the world and begin the work to complete my house. I can even add lanterns to it now. Also, I get the feeling that something glitched because I'm sure I set this to Blackstone. I'm guessing the Diamond World data back turned it into Diamond Ore again or something. So I'm going to get some cobblestone instead. It really doesn't get any better than adding a cobblestone floor to your house. There we go. The new and improved floor is complete. Get in the middle here, we'd have some diamond blocks. And if I grab the egg like that, perfect. With a lodestone there and that on top. Now I just need lava to fill all this in. And thankfully I have plenty of iron to make plenty of buckets. Let's fill all of these up and place them like like so. Getting enough lava for this could take a while. And there we go. That's all the lava in. I will quickly add in the glass. And there we have it. It's complete. All that's missing now is a bed, which I'm going to put right here. Got plenty of paper, but I'm going to go on a bit of a hunt to try and find some gunpowder. In fact, there's creepers all over the place. And by creepers all over the place, I mean there's two creepers. But that got me six gunpowder and 18 rockets. I'm also going to change this diamond ore down here to instead be diamond blocks. I think I'm going to go exploring. I'd love to see if I can find a notch apple, but that's definitely easier said than done. Here's the first opportunity to find one. But we didn't. At least we got a gold block, though. Seems that we found a mine shaft in a mesa biome. And that for some reason, yellow terracotta doesn't become diamond. Just a shame it's not a very useful block. Another ruins. And not so much of a disappointment. And here we have a mine shaft. Now, what is in this chest? Anything good? Whoa, glowberries. Okay, that's a brand new item. Take the name tag as well. I can hold glowberries in my offhand and it works as a torch. Another chest here. More glowberries. We, we want that notch apple. I also like how I'm using glowberries as a torch when I literally have torches in my inventory. The third chest. The third disappointment. And what on earth? Where did you come from? <laughs> You've wandered a bit off course, haven't you, sir? Now then. No sugar cane still. You disappoint me, you stupid trader. We can get more gunpowder here as well. Here we go. This is probably going to be a lot more promising. Although other than the sand, it's, it's been a bit of a letdown. I think I'm going to stay the night at this village. What's that? You want to sleep in this bed? No, not tonight, sir. A gold block has been spotted. And another pyramid. I'll do as much digging as it takes to find this chest. Here we go. Well, that wasn't worth digging for. <laughs> This pyramid was the one that I'd just been to. What have we got down here? Oh my goodness, we actually got one. I accidentally flooded this uh, this thing, but we actually got a notch apple. <laughs> I was not expecting that. The 
last chest I just... No, 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 no. Not now. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Man, I was about to go and get that TNT. Oh, well. At least I survived. Probably hold a totem instead of these stupid glow berries. Well, the missions don't get much more successful than that. And from all that gunpowder, I could actually craft nearly two stacks of firework rockets. I think I'd like to hang these glow berries in my house. Really does give it that, that dirt feel, doesn't it? This iron pickaxe did serve me well, but it's time to say goodbye. I have only two goals left. Get a netherite shovel and a netherite axe and get my XP level to 100. And for both those things, I'm gonna need another wither. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Didn't take me too long, I've got everything I need. I'd also like to get myself some fire resistance. And now I'm ready for the next phase of my plan. This is the beginning of a very long corridor. So let's place all this stuff down here and weaken this guy a bit so that he goes to half health. There we go. We've got him right where we want him. And all this XP has now healed my elytra so I can put on my chest plate. And this should get me all the way to level 100. I picked up some ancient debris. I don't know where that just came from, but he must have broken it. Just seen some more ancient debris. This guy might destroy it, though. Oh, he's left it. Perfect. Speaking of being destroyed, I've gone down to half a heart. <laughs> Might as well just heal up a little bit. More ancient debris. I'm gonna grab it. We're at 75 levels now. Getting close. I've reached the end of my tunnel, but I am so, so close to getting to level 90. There we go. We made it. I'm gonna try and lure the wither back this way. And I'll also grab any extra ancient debris on the way. This wither will actually leave me alone to get it. There we go. We got him. Okay, I did not expect that to happen, just had to use my totem. Thankfully, I do have another one. It must have been weaker than I thought. Here's my ancient debris. Let me grab that. The tunnel continues this way, so let's lure the wither down. 100 levels, here I come. Oh, some more ancient debris. Nice. See another piece. Oh, there's loads here. Okay, perfect. We've got all the ancient debris we actually need. And just five levels to go. Level 97, 98... 99 and 100. Perfect. Now this wither can be defeated. And I can collect up all the ancient debris on the way. This is the 11th piece. If we get another one, we can actually get another ingot. Oh my goodness, there's someone underneath this lava. And this is piece number 12. If that isn't a very successful mission, I don't know what is. Now let's get out of here. Let's start smelting both of these. And I'll build another diamond beacon whilst I wait. There we go. Then craft another beacon. And I'm going to get speed from this one. Oh man, I didn't know glowberries grew down like that. Oh, what a mess this house is becoming. But at the same time, I kind of like it. Now these are finished smelting. Let's craft the ingots. Create a netherite axe, a netherite shovel. And yes, you guessed it, a netherite hoe. Because then we get the serious dedication achievement. This new guy... Guy looks promising that I might be able to sell diamonds to him. Meanwhile, I'm going to get rid of the other guys. Accidentally got rid of the guy that uh, <laughs> buys diamonds from me. And now, instead of one emerald, they're all charging 64. I'm sure they'll get over it eventually. Here, have some potatoes. That'll cheer you up. Big enough potatoes. It's that time again where I can harvest all of them. Wouldn't it be great if I could make a machine that could plant potatoes for me? Oh, wait, it's not a machine. It's called enslaving a villager. Boss, this has been the greatest thing I've ever built in my entire life playing Minecraft. This is without a doubt going to be the last time I decide to harvest it. Or at the very least, I won't be replanting it. But now for the best part of the job, I can trade all these potatoes for emeralds. The most ingenious thing for the economy ever. I could buy more books, but then I'd have to use up experience and I, I don't want to go below 100. I completely forgot about this poor villager in the hole. Look, look, you're free now, sir. You, you don't have to stay in here for the rest of your life. This can be his new home. Let's let's put his job site block there. That's it, fella. <laughs> you can finally see the sun again. Now, I don't know how possible this next bit is, but I have no pets. You know, <laughs> my only friends are the villagers. So I'm going to grab some bones and go searching for a dog. I just can't stop finding these pyramids now. Let's see if it's worth visiting. Even just for the sand and the gunpowder, it's pretty handy. I also want to get the TNT. I'm pretty sure it's possible for a forest like this to have a wolf. Although no sign of any. There's bees everywhere here. I, I kind of want to bring some back. Hang on a minute. Oh, we've got two. Oh, well, I can't not take both of you. Here's a bone for you. How many bones are you going to take? There we go. We got one. And we've got two. Look, you, you only wanted one bone. And if I wait till the sun goes down, all the bees will go back into their beehive. Here he goes. He's just gone in and I can gather them up and take them home. The same goes for these hives as well. We've got three in total. Nice. Now, getting back is a little bit trickier because if I fly too far, my dogs won't teleport after me. So hopefully if I land right about here, <laughs> I went too far. There we go. If we just run this way. I don't know where one of them went. There we go. We're both here. And now I'll continue the journey on foot. And the worst part is, is I'm over 1,500 blocks away. All these dogs everywhere. Do it. Do we go down that road? Yeah, why not? Why not create a dog army? Welcome your dog number six. I didn't bring a stack of bones with me for nothing. I keep seeing pumpkins all over the place. I'm going to grab a few just in case I need them. The beacon has come into view. I have to say, there really is no place like home. Speaking of home, welcome to your new one, dogs. That's it. All of you sit here. So there should be six if we've all made it. It's easy done, isn't it? <laughs> Getting a dog overload. And if we really want a dog overload, let's just feed them all. And now we have nine dogs because we've got three puppies as well. What on earth? You... You can't... No, that's my house. Whoa. <laughs> you know, your house is over here. Look, I put your leg turned in it and everything. Maybe he's just exploring, but <laughs> I think he's impressed. Why are you shaking your head? Don't, 
don't be like this. That villager might be a bit nasty, but you guys, not so much. At least I hope so. So give me a rating out of 10. What do you think of my house? I'm going to be scared to read the comments after this. I've decided I'd like to improve the pathway to my house. What on earth are you doing? You better not trample my crops. Get, get off there. I'd like to use stone bricks for the path, so we're going to need a lot of cobblestone. Oh my goodness, he really has moved and he's, he's sleeping in my bed. Oh, but he sleeps in my bed and gets away with it. Come on, dogs, you, you come with me. I'll teach this guy a lesson. Who does he think he is? He's going to get a shock in the morning, he is. Meanwhile, I'll have to sleep in this house. All right, villager. What on earth? How did you get out? I really can't win. This guy has outsmarted me. Just going to take one last look around the place and accept defeat. Yeah, you win. Yeah, nice one. Don't look at me like that. Instead of stone bricks, now it's only going to get a diamond block pathway. And then all the way along the sides, I'm going to place dirt. Dirt which can be turned into grass path. Let's also change these sneaky diamond ores to be dirt instead. You know what? Since this isn't my house anymore, I'm going to put bees in it. That'll teach him not to mess with me. I feel bad for the bees that there's no flowers anywhere, so I'm going to go on a mission to get some. And by mission to get some, I mean just take out these guys. They weren't doing a very good job anyway. There you go, bees. Flowers galore. I'd like five more puppies. Okay, I didn't know he was a one tap. As I was saying, I'd like five more puppies. Probably not good news for the village, but I've got all the puppies I need. My next mission is to try and find some oak wood. And the only place to do that would be at a village. Or I suppose I could find a mine shaft. Here we go. Lots of oak wood for me. Now we can turn these into planks, create some trap doors, and place them around the dirt. Why? Why are you in here? Why do you wander around this house like you own it? You know what? I've got an idea. You want to live here? Fine. But just remember, once you're in there, you can never leave. Kind of ironic that I used iron bars and it actually turned into a literal prison. And I'm back to sleeping outside. I'm not completely heartless though. I'll still bring him his job site block. So at least if he wants to, he can still go to work. It's such a strange place. It's like part beehive. There's things growing. It's a dirt house. There's an egg in the middle. <laughs> Very, very strange indeed. Now that I can no longer go and see all my dogs because they're also in the prison, I'm going to instead try and find some axolotls and they will be my newest pet. Also, I'm just going to do a food top up since I'm getting it a little low. What we're looking for is a cave under the ocean. Didn't find that, but I did find some ruins with a chest with a lot of coal. And let's go and see where this buried treasure leads. I managed to get sidetracked very easily, don't I? And it leads right here to a buried treasure we've already been to. Let's just stick to the plan and find an axolotl. Now there is a cave here. It's underwater. This is prime place for it. Look at this dripstone and glow squid. That's actually, you know what? We're going to get some glow ink. Sorry guys, but you're very valuable to me. Well, so apparently there's been some bug and <laughs> this part isn't diamond. So the cave led to a mine shaft, but this isn't underwater. So it's, it's not what I want. Axolotls is what I want. I'll just keep searching. Oh no, my... <laughs> My lights are broke. I need to get unbreaking on them, don't I? How the search has gone old fashioned because we're in a boat. Another ruined portal and it has a golden apple in it. Very nice. I've found a blacksmith with, with apples and iron helmets. Nice. And there's another one over here with, with more apples. Uh, yeah, that's that's amazing. I think I'm just going to stick to looking for axolotls. Found another cave down here. Although apparently for axolotls to spawn, they need to be near something like tough and it needs to be completely dark. They could be near stone, but obviously there's, there's no stone around here. So I reckon my best bet is going to be to try and make my own axolotl farm. So here's the plan. I try Travel back home with these 24 pieces of tough. Whilst on the way, I mine up some diamonds to heal my elytra. Now that I can fly, it's going to be much faster. Next, I dig a hole below sea level, which is under Y equals 63. Currently, we're at 67. And here is the hole that the axolotls will spawn in. I'm going to make it five deep in total. Next, I'm going to fill it up with water. So let's just refill my bucket. And now that I have two sources, we can fill this up very, very fast. And before I go any further, I'm actually going to do the floor now. The floor can be made of stone, tough, granite, anything like that. At the moment, I've only got tough. Unfortunately, cobblestone won't work, but I can smelt cobblestone into regular stone. Let's keep mining. Should have made a stone generator. That would have been better than a cobblestone generator. You know what? With a few modifications, I think it's doable. I just dig out this, place water there and place water there. I'll make a few signs. Genius at work. I can also glow that up. Beautiful. And I think if I now break this block, it turns to stone. Oh, it's it's amazing. Okay. I've still got to be careful. Probably best to put a block like that and then I'm not moving at all. And if I go like this, I think, I think it's going to get me, right, it is, it is generating stone. And I just want to place some obsidian there. Yeah, that's perfect. So now we are, we are picking up the stone. It's not the most effective thing ever. Definitely not the most effective thing ever. Let's try it from here instead. Can you believe I'm doing all this for just a few axolotls? Right, this is it now. This is my finished stone farm. I realize how terrible of a design it is that I'm having to get rid of the lava for it to work. <laughs> Otherwise, for some reason, the stone just keeps burning. Now that I've finished messing around with that, my stone has finished smelting. Let's get this place finished. The stone's all in. I just need to add loads of water now. And because of the way water works, you can do that very, very fast. That's all filled in. So I need to fly out of there, cover this up with blocks so that it's pitch black and then build up very, very high. I've waited up here a little bit. Let's have a look. Let's go and, and head down. Well, MLG, just kidding. We're going to use my elytra. I don't want to waste a totem like that. So we break this and okay, we got one. It's working. Perfect. And oh, there's two of them. Oh, I like the color of this one. Let's 
Let's pick you up in a bucket. I, I guess we've kind of made a glow squid farm. Because if they take out the glow squid, we can get ink sacks. Let's make a crafting table. Two more iron buckets. And we can pick up the other axolotls as well. Don't worry, glow squid. You can now live in peace. Now, the next question is, where do I want the axolotls to live? I, I could put them in this house somewhere, but... I don't know, somebody's somebody's taken over this place. So I'm thinking I'd dig out some big tanks around this pathway. Here we go. Let's fill this in with water. We can use that. I feel like I should make it a little bit deeper for these guys. Then the same on the other side. And I can fill this side with water as well. Next, I'm going to grab loads of emeralds, buy some more glass, and start filling it in. I feel like it could be slightly improved if I bone meal the ground. There you go. This is a little bit more lively for you. What are you doing? Get back in the water. <laughs> no escapes, all right? There we go. Let's... Uh... Fill all that in. Now I'm going to get more glass from this guy. And fully box in both sides. I need an easier way up and down with this. Look at this. There's loads of axolotls here. We can completely fill the tanks. And I can fly up out of the hole. That's no problem. Put all of these in here. Okay. Apparently this is just for yellow ones on this side. Sorry little fella. I hope you don't feel outnumbered. Let's grab a few more. With that I can try and add some, yeah, some non-yellow ones on this side. And then these two on this side. There we go. Apparently. <laughs> now you're outnumbered. It's alright though. We've got loads here. I'll be the first to admit it. I've got a little bit carried away with axolotls. That's enough for now. I did not expect this little room to do so well. I've got these pumpkins, so it'd be pretty cool to make some snow golems. In fact, there's more pumpkins over here. I can already see myself getting a little carried away here. Now then, I need snow, and, and this mountain looks like a good place to find it. Just realised an issue, I've got a silk touch shovel, which is not what I want. No worries though, we can just make a diamond one, and start collecting the snowballs, which can then be crafted into snow blocks, and then these can all be used back home. Discovered another gold block on the way back, let's go. Oh, it's two of them here actually. Definitely gonna grab both of these. Now then, if I grab these shears, place down all these pumpkins, and then carve them all. Then I'm going to kind of block myself in here. <laughs> yes, we're going to spawn these guys in. Wait, where's the village you got? Oh, he's over here. We're going to have a row of snow golems all the way around like this. All right, dogs, don't be too alarmed at what's about to happen. But we... Oh, no, wait, they're all dying. No. Oh, no. <laughs> I guess we're not in a good place for this. The silk touch shovel is actually going to come in handy now. Apparently, all this area is actually a desert. <laughs> and over here is where the acacia biome starts. But can golems even survive in a savannah? No, I I'm sorry about this, sir. Looks like I'm going to have to find a biome that's not quite as warm. I was flying away, but I realised I literally live right by a swamp. So if I just start by building some walls, and I can fill in this area using my spare diamond door. There we go. This is really starting to come together. I'm a little bit worried that this house is going to be boring if I just fill in the roof with diamonds completely. So I'm going to try some snow. And if I craft a load of glass panes, I can fill in all these windows and this front bit here as well. You know what? I'm going to mine up this floor and turn it into oak planks. Turns out I don't have enough. Well... <laughs> This is a little awkward. Looks like I'm going on a journey to find some. These are dark oak planks. Not quite what I was looking for, but I'm going to take them anyway because I can make it work. I think with that, I've got more than enough. Time to set off back home. So I'm thinking we can mine away all the planks around the edge and instead replace them with dark oak. Alrighty, let's make this hole a bit bigger. Place down enough snow for 12 snow golems and hopefully all of these guys manage to survive. Look at this. It's working perfectly. And for a bit of variation, some of them are going to be having their pumpkins taken off. There we go. What a diverse society we've got here. All I need now is some coal to craft some torches, the lighter up their home. Finally, I'll just put some more snow on the roof. It's a bit of a random thing to build, but hey, that's what we do on this channel. I'd also like to add some blocks around this glass, and I'm thinking snow will be perfect for that. There we go, and it looks like we're going to have enough. I almost feel like the snow looks slightly out of place. Maybe I'll add a snow border to the house. Notice how I now call it the house, because I don't have the right to call it mine anymore. And unfortunately, we're out of snow, which means we're going back to the mountains and back to picking up snowballs. I've now got a stack that should be enough. Let's just quickly place it all the way around the outside. There we go. What do we think? I think it maybe improves it a little bit. But if I'm being completely honest, the house probably looked better before I added any of the snow. But I feel like it's too late to turn back now. You know what I think? I think it's about time I released these poor villagers to the world. Could have sworn there was more than four of you in it. Oh, oh <laughs> that was my fault. I'll even put a door here. There we go. Patch all that up. You guys can go outside anytime. And I feel like I should do the same thing for these guys. That's it, villagers. Be free. And all of a sudden, we have a thriving village again. Just so long as no more of them go in my house. I hate to use my levels like this, but I'm going to upgrade this pickaxe. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's it's pretty good. Now all I need to go with it is to make it into a netherite one, which means digging for ancient debris. In fact, before I go any further, I've got a plan. First, I want to get some emeralds and also some Sell some to this guy. I feel bad for this poor fellow. He's... Wait, what on earth? Wait, did a golem just hit me? What did I do wrong? Whoa, why is there a golem after me? Maybe he's angry that I've imprisoned this guy. There we go. He, he can go outside. Okay, he's, he's welcome to go outside, golem. Look at him. He's got. He's got. He's, he's just angry at me. I don't know. What? What? What did I do? All right. Stand back. You know what? I'm just gonna make a run for it. Here we go. Come on. All right, the totem got used. Is that my last totem as well? What a stupid golem. You know this means war. I'm not having it. Oh, look at him. Big fella. Tough guy. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, I better uh, better come up with a plan. Not so tough now, are you? Yeah, that's right, you stupid golem. I don't know. I didn't want to have to do that, but 
Needs must. Oh my goodness, the other one's attacking me. Why? Why are all the villagers, why are all the golems mad at me? I've done nothing but kind things to these villagers. You angry as well? Hmm? Tough guy? Yeah, he's alright. No, he's not alright. It's like every time I go near that house. <laughs> Just a wanted man in this village. Sorry to wake you up, good sir, but I, I'd like to buy... Oh, you, you've not restocked yet. Let's buy mending from this guy. Another golem. Why? Why? What have I done? Why are you all angry at me? I don't understand it. I mean, I just feel bad that I'm taking these guys out. They've spawned another one. Are you angry at me? Come on. Hit me, I dare you. Oh, okay, did. If anybody has any idea what's going on, let me know. I wonder if it's because I took out all these villagers. I wonder if you guys are still upset with me. They've all been gossiping about me, that's what it is. All right, good sir, for you, I have loads of wheat. And if I set off the old potato harvester, I'll be able to get even more emeralds and more mending. Then I can add that to more things. One last one, and that can go on my axe. Now I'm going to take some sand, the few gunpowder that I have left, and make a bit more TNT. And we're going to see if we can find that ancient debris. My plan is to just kind of place TNT like this. Put the button on front, blow it up, and see what happens same on this side as you can imagine we're going to be going through a lot of tnt oh my goodness we actually find some ancient debris that's brilliant please be more than one piece though it looks like it's only going to be hold on a second it's three wow i only need to find one more and we'll be sorted for the tnt there we'll do the same over here even with only being able to strip mine i'm sure i can still find one piece I seem to have dug through to the the wither tunnel, okay. Not where I want to be, so I'm going to dig a bit further through. This is the second to last TNT. And here we go, one final TNT. Put the button on, light it up, and... We didn't get any. Which means all I can do now is some good old-fashioned strip mining. Hang on a second. I've got a bed. <laughs> we might as well use the beds as well. That one didn't work, but let's try one more time. Still absolutely nothing. Could go back and get all the beds from the village. But it's not quite come to that just yet. We're now on day 100. Time is ticking away for me. Finally, I have found some. It's two pieces. We're, oh, it's three pieces. We're going to have some to spare. Now I can make the long journey back home through the TNT tunnels and up these stairs. And the darkness has come, but I can very quickly do some smelting, create another netherite ingot, and make another netherite pickaxe. And now I really do have full netherite tools. First, I need to find some wood. I've got to be really, really fast here. You do get random grass blocks, and on them there's a chance to get a tree. So either I need that, a ruined portal, or a mine shaft. I have discovered a cave. This is probably my best chance. I do see light, but is there going to be what I need? I'm just going to jump. This is this is already a disaster. This has turned out to be a pretty good cave. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've found diamonds. I have no way to obtain these diamonds, but <laughs> that's pretty cool. I can get some cobblestone if I blow him up. There we go. We got six pieces. That's pretty good. Although I'm now on three hearts. Things are starting to look a little bit dire. You know, it's a sad day when you have to break stone with your fist. Oh my goodness. Even more diamonds. All I want is a mine shaft. How can that be so hard? More creepers. They're just going to be useful for blocks, if nothing else. I've now lost so much hunger that I can't even sprint. What have we got here? It looks like, okay, it's a bit of a ravine. That's pretty good. Although navigating along here without being able to sprint jump is going to be a challenge. It's going to take a miracle if I come out of here alive. Look at that, another creeper. Okay, can he even get up here? I hope not. I need the blocks. I'm going to have to blow him up. Okay, we're down to one and a half hearts. And look at that, an amethyst geode. I'm finding all sorts of amazing things, but not what I want to find. Come to another bit of a mini ravine. And this gravel, that's going to be very useful. A stack of gravel should be enough to get me through. Turns out this is a dead end. It seems that this ravine also connects to another ravine. We have to do something like this. There we go. Oh my goodness, that looks like a mob spawner and I see a chest. And we've got a mine shaft. Okay, okay, okay. Right, this, this is huge. I can actually get some, I can't get any food from this, but at least I can get wood. I know this is very, very risky, but I need to get to this chest. Okay, hopefully nothing can detect me. We've got a bit of wheat. Oh, we've not really got any food. I'm just going to eat this and see if I can regen from it. And these creepers, oh my goodness. Okay, everything's okay. We're still alive. I desperately need to find some chests. And now with this wood, I can make a crafting table and some sticks. So let's make an iron pickaxe and a stone axe. Okay, that's definitely going to help. We also have all this raw iron. And let's use this axe to collect loads of wood. And we've got a chest. Okay. And we've got bread and a golden apple. Okay, that's all very useful. I'm going to take these seeds because food is difficult to get. I think I'm going to eat the golden apple now and then that just regens me right back up. Now if I craft a few more sticks and also a sword. And this sword can be used to get cobwebs. These cobwebs will give me string, which can be used to make wool. I can then use to make a bed. Let's also keep grabbing any iron that we see. There's even more of it right here. And now I need a little bit more cobblestone, which can then be turned into a furnace. And after grabbing a little bit of coal, I can smelt my iron. And while I wait for that, I'm going to grab loads more wood. And up here, there is loads of iron. Let's add that to the furnace. And armor can begin to be made, as well as a shield, which is probably going to be useful. Probably a good idea to use two furnaces as well. Let's make some leggings and also an iron axe. And what have we got here? Another mob spawner with a creeper on it. Okay, let's just first break. Well, <laughs> that broke it. And look at this, a bucket and a little bit more wheat. We can make two more bread. But all in all, the chests in the mob spawners have not been very good. Let's also pick up this water, craft the rest of my armor, and also collect up more wood. So now I have full armor, all the iron tools that I need, and quite a bit of food. And I'm going to need a lot more things if I want to defeat the hardest bosses. So that means going back to the surface. And the best way to do that is going to be by digging straight up. I certainly feel a lot more confident up here, but now I need to find something else that is extremely rare. Okay, this was not what I was looking for, but without a 
doubt it's a great thing to find, especially because there's obsidian, flint, nice, and another iron ingot. And look at that, I brought four golden helmet. That's going to be huge. And so now the hunt can continue. Yes, <laughs> for grass. Extremely rare. And he got, I got a seed, look at that. One hit, one seed. And hang on a minute, what do I see through the ice? A tree. These things are so, so rare, but <laughs> everything's starting to come together. Let's grab all of the wood. Now we need to hope that we get a sapling. It's not looking good, I've mined all this. <laughs> so, okay, we got one, perfect. It looks like it's only one. Whilst I'm here, I'm gonna grab this dirt. I've just realized I'm now out of bread. I can't really spend any more time exploring. Although, hey, we found sugar cane. Just lying on the ground, perfect. How much have we got? Two, that's huge. But yeah, it's probably a good time to stop exploring and set up some kind of base. I have to say, I quite like this little area. Let's add water at this side, then craft a hoe. Add a little bit of light along here, plant the seeds, and uh, wait for them to grow. I'm also going to switch this stone out and change it to be dirt, and then plant melon seeds along here, and finally beetroot. On this side, a bit of sugar cane. And since I have no bone meal, I will just wait for it to grow. In the meantime, I can explore this cave. We've got an enderman here. Didn't drop a pearl though. Is that a cave? Turns out it's just a place you can get more water, but hey, that's going to be useful because now all of this can be made into infinite water sources and things are looking a lot better, but I need to find something in the caves. I was hoping to find a cave, but it looks like we're going to instead go dive mining. And there's lava. Okay. <laughs> well, I found the cave. Oh my goodness. It's not just a cave. It's an entire ravine. It doesn't get much better than this. No sign of diamonds, but it is possible to use lapis. If I go four blocks in this direction and dig straight down, we come straight to diamonds and eight of them for that matter, which is pretty nice. And that's why Lapis is a great ore to find. Doesn't seem to be much else here for me, so I'm going to continue mining. More diamonds. Beautiful. Okay, these are deep slate ones as well. It looks like we've got at least four. No, make that five. So that's 13 now. We seem to have come to a little lava lake. No use for me. I'm going to keep on mining. My pickaxe has just broken, so I'm upgrading to a diamond one. Okay, well, yes, yeah, so we got some more. And there's quite a few. So how many diamonds have we got all together now? 16. Okay, I'm getting close to full diamond armor. And there's some lapis here. Can I use the trick again? So four blocks this way. And then I'll have to check above me. Okay, and then they were above me. Sometimes they're below, sometimes they're above. It depends what Y level you're on. But it really is a powerful trick for finding diamonds. More diamonds, perfect. It doesn't look like it's going to be too many though. At least, well, this is the second and the third one. But that's 22 in total, just one more vein to go. I've just dug underneath lava. Does this mean there's a cave here? Yes, there is. And there's lapis. Okay, well, we know what that means. In theory, either above me or directly below, there should be diamonds, but I'm guessing these ones spawned in the bedrock. Hang on a minute. <laughs> well... I guess maybe they just spawned in the cave in the cave of our own because the diamonds on this instance are the same level. Look, there's lapis everywhere. So we've got that. So those relate to those ones. So maybe this way we're going to have more diamonds. I'm just going to dig down and hope for the best. Well, it's definitely a very inconsistent one. None down there. But I shall still collect the lapis. But you know what 24 diamonds means? Full diamond armor. And there we go. Looking very nice indeed. Now, if I really want to progress, the items in this world just aren't going to be enough. And so I'm going to grab the small supply of items that I have and head to a brand Brand new dimension. Let's light up the portal. And here it is, the Frostlands. This frozen wasteland is going to let me get loads more items, but there's still lots of dangers to be found, including powdered snow that covers the land, which you definitely don't want to fall into. One of the main things this place is going to get me is food. And look at that. Mushrooms. Lots and lots of mushrooms. Let's carefully bridge across. Also, pig lanes are getting a bit angry at me. Let me put this gold helmet on and start collecting these. Look at this. There's absolutely loads. We've got about 30 of those, 28 of the brown ones. We're sorted. I can't make ones with dandelions just yet, but it's a great step in the right direction. And we've got hoglins. That's even better. If I just drop some lava like this... I can take this guy out and get some cooked pork chop. And we got four from that. Nice. Look at this. Fossils. Perfect. I can use that bone meal later to get suspicious stew. Even more bone meal here. Perfect. It looks so weird. It looks like there's kind of no floor, but it's all the powdered snow. I would freeze very fast if I fell in there. And look at this. We have found a fortress. I don't really know the best way to get there, so I'm just going to bridge across. Okay, I've got something shooting at me. I'm just going to keep moving. And I'm in. Now then, what can we find here? We've got a chest. And okay, it's got some gold in it. And some Frostlands wart. I'm going to leave this out for now. I don't really have a use for it. I've no idea how guys, but I just got ahead. My RNG really is undefeated. Wait, hold on a second. Is that actually ancient debris? I kind of mined out the body and I was like, okay, what is that? But that might just be ancient debris, you know? There's absolutely no way. I, I mine it. it is ancient debris because it's taken forever to mine. There's two of them. Okay, I'll, don't take me out now. I'll get rid of the frozen soil. Let's grab all this. I am extremely weak. Hold on. Let's just, um, just patch this up quickly and collect up my two pieces of ancient debris. Is that it? Doesn't get much rarer than that. And now to get the rest of these blaze rods. And now I have 11 blaze rods. That's more than enough. What's in this chest? Okay, just saddles and horse on. We don't get horses in this world. So it's of no use to me. However, this, yeah, a little bit more useful. And finally, 
another iron ingot. The main thing I would have liked to find in some of those chests was diamonds, but uh, it wasn't to be. So let's just get out of here. And I only see one way across here, and it involves finding more hoglins. Because you see, hoglins drop leather, and you can also get it from piglins. And with enough leather, you can make leather boots. And what happens when you walk on powdered snow with leather boots? Well, this is what happens. You become light as a rabbit. This should make exploration way, way easier. And I've just got cold tourist destinations because I've gone to every biome. And look at that up ahead. We have indeed got a bastion. And a poor Enderman, which is looking a little bit frozen. Okay, he managed to get out. Not so poor now, are you? But we got an ender pearl. I have to say, this makes leather boots one of the coolest things ever. Now let's see what we can find here. We have got a chest. Now I don't want to upset anybody, so I'm just going to dig underneath it. Look at that gold block, so many of them. It looks like we're in a stables bastion. And we've got loads of obsidian and a diamond pickaxe. It's silk touch, so that's definitely an upgrade to my current one. But I'm still going to keep this just in case. This is definitely a place to be very, very careful. But golden carrots. Going to keep using lava buckets on these guys. And just be very, very careful of everything. More obsidian and an iron block. And there's some good items here, but I'm not going to take any of it. Instead, I'm bothered about these guys. Look at it. We've got all them trapped in here. Let's just trade them a load of gold. Got these five gold blocks as well. If I just keep a couple for myself, just in case I need them, we can throw all that to them. Got some more pearls. We've got four now. These guys gave me so many great items, but I don't really have space for most of it. But on that note, I think I'm happy with what I've got. Okay. Um, I just got knocked all the way down by that piglin brute. But the powdered snow actually saved me. Take two. I really want this chest. Um, okay, we got an iron block. That's good. And my gold helmet has just been broken, which is probably a good time for me to leave. I do want to check these chests and see if there's anything good. Ancient debris. Perfect. Two of them. And what about this chest quickly? A golden apple. Okay, that's all I want. I'm getting out of here. I can just jump on the powdered snow. And uh, I want to go after Enderman now. The strikes are just place a boat and then take them out that way. And now I have a grand total of nine ender pearls. And there's plenty more Enderman to be found. That's number 10. Finally, the 12th one. This is probably a great time to head back home. And here we are, home sweet home. Things are starting to look good. But if I want to beat the real challenges and bosses, then I need to find villagers. I already have sugarcane, which I need for this. But there's plenty more items to collect. I'd say the main one that I still need is spider eyes. Since I've got my brown mushrooms and the sugar and all of that. So yeah, we need to try and find a cave that has spiders in it. It's also a shame that I had to throw away my name tags. They probably would have been useful. And sand. I need sand. How am I going to find that? Don't worry. I've got an idea. Operation find a spider is complete. But I don't think I got a spider eye. Okay, we found diamonds. That's a, that's a pretty nice little thing to find. Currently just picking up the ores because I've got silk touch. It's amazing what you find when you're just looking for spiders. Okay, two more spiders. One of these has got to drop. And it did. Perfect. This once again looks like prime diamond location. But instead we just got lapis. And we did get diamonds this time from digging down. Okay, and I just went straight into lava. But don't worry. I have myself fire resistance okay so you don't panic in those situations the worst part is that my diamonds probably burned also that's why you never dig down in minecraft <laughs> unless you've got fire resistance and it's okay and on that note i'm gonna go home more grass should we see if we get some seeds <laughs> we didn't here we are home sweet home now these bone blocks can be turned into bone meal and look at this we can get ourselves plenty of wheat. I have to say I've got a pretty good system going for this. Now I can craft plenty more bread and head back to the Frostlands to get my next item. And to do that I am unfortunately going to have to find another bastion because piglins are going to be the only way for me to get glass bottles. Because I'm pretty sure there's no sand in an ice spikes biome. Also going to grab more fossils whilst I'm here. Finally another bastion has been spotted and this is a treasure one so there's going to be loads of good loot. So I reckon my best bet here is going to be to grab this piece of gold and the same on the other side. Then drop lava on these two guys. Next, I can basically just jump straight down and land here and be safe. Let's get rid of the magma spawner. This guy can chase me, but look, he's, he's stuck down here. And next, I can take all the gold that I want. And look at this diamond, two diamond chest plates, loads of stuff. Who's taking me out now? Iron blocks, a diamond sword. Very happy with that. My leather boots have just broken, so um, <laughs> my powdered snow strats are coming to an end. And I've just been hit by this guy. I'm on one heart, and um, yeah. <laughs> Better keep moving. I'm just going to have to take this guy out the old fashioned way. And then I can get back my lava. Found another chest. And we've got some iron and some arrows. That's pretty good. See another one across there. And one over there. This has more gold. And I can upgrade my shovel. That's nice. And another gold block. More bone blocks. Ancient debris would be nice. But um, you just kind of get what you get. And in this place, extreme care is going to have to be taken. There's a lot of piglin brutes. Okay, can I just jump past you guys? There we go. Most of these guys can just be distracted with the gold. And the ones that refuse to be... 
Well, this is what's gonna happen to them. And good news, we did get a water bottle. I guess this is a good time to steal the rest of their gold, because there definitely is a lot of it. And they gave me more leather so I can make more boots. What do these chests have to offer? More gold? Oh, and a piece of ancient debris. I didn't notice that. Might as well go through here and check the other side. What about this double chest? Look at that. More ancient debris. It seems to be so easy to find this in Bastard. Okay, I was uh, <laughs> spending a bit too long in there. But you missed your chance. Now you must face the lava. I'll grab the rest of the hidden gold blocks too. And I think these guys are giving me a total of three bottles. Yeah, look at that. Okay, I didn't mean to throw that away. But yeah, we've got all of these stuff we need now, which means it's time to head back home. And home is a long way in this direction. Finally, back at the portal, I can deposit all of this good stuff, get some more wheat, craft it into bread, do a bit of sugarcane farming, and I can also harvest my first melon. And now it's time to track down a villager that I can cure. I've been trying to dig to where I thought there was a cave, but look what I found here. An amethyst geode right below my house. Quite a handy thing, and it is connected to this cave. And that cave is connected to a ravine. Although I couldn't find what I needed, so I'm going back to the surface. And it's night time, which is perfect. I can put this guy in a boat, and now I need to make the weakness. So I need a brown mushroom, sugar, and a spider eye, and then I can splash him and give him the golden apple. Now in order to get an infinite amount of villagers, I'm gonna need at least one more golden apple. So I'm gonna begin my search for a ruined portal, since I think that's the best chance I've got of finding one. I didn't think that they'd be this hard to find. I think I found a better way to track them down. And all that tells me is that there's none nearby and it's time for plan B, which is to instead find a bastion. Hopefully this is the bastion that's gonna bring me the gapples. First I'm gonna get rid of you, then I can steal all of the gold, and hopefully get what I need from these chests. Another piece of ancient debris. It's so crazy, isn't it, how much I'm getting? And I'm no golden apple. I'll have to try the other side instead. I am so close to dying, but I think I'm just about going to survive. But I always have the last laugh, don't worry. And now we've got another gold block and the lodestone. Down there is the final chest. This doesn't have a golden apple. We are back to square one. And oh, we got pig step, though. Okay, get out of here, you <laughs> Panicking me. Yes, we got pig step. Now that is a pretty rare thing. In my opinion, that makes the whole journey worthwhile. So a good bit of looting, but I'm going to have to keep searching. Hopefully this bastion will be different. And chest number one. Okay, no. And here we've got chest number two. Still no. But ancient debris once again. I'm running out of chests here. <laughs> Still none. And this one, okay, we have got one. Perfect. That's all we needed. I can now go home. That was actually an insanely good chest. There is one more down here. I'm going to try and grab it. Okay, we'll just grab that. That's a pretty good pickaxe. Let me just get that gold ingot. Right, I'm, I'm going to try and jump if I can. Although, probably can't. Okay, we're building with obsidian. That's not a good thing. Oh no, that was that was a very stupid thing to do. Well, let's get out of here and get back home. Now that that mission's done, I shouldn't have to come back here again. At least not for quite a while anyway. Now, if I want loads of villagers, I'm going to need loads of beds. Thankfully, I do have all this string so we can make quite a decent amount of wool. And I'm actually going to head back through here and get some more wood. This seems like the perfect place for that. I've also set this guy off trading a load of stuff for me. Hopefully we get some more string. But apparently after all that, we, we still got none. But I can still craft another five beds. Look at that. My villager is waiting patiently here for me. It's time to get you back home, which is a slow and steady process in the boat and a bit of a faster one when we go over the ice. And I'm thinking right here could be the perfect place for the villagers to live. This should be a big enough room for now. Let's bring this fella in. I'm going to place some blocks along here so that he can't escape. Give him his own bed, which which was originally mine, but uh, I guess he can have it. And look at that, already he wants to escape. No, you're not coming out. I'll make a proper exit area once I've got another villager. And I will also take this opportunity to make some paper. I can also harvest my two melons, craft another fermented spider eye, which will let me get some weakness. And then tonight I'll get another villager. In the meantime, I'm going to see how my piglin's getting on. <laughs> He's still trading away. And he's giving me some more string. Okay, we can actually make another bed now. And even more string. This guy's brilliant. And because he's doing so well, I'm going to lure a friend over here for him. That's it. Go for the gold. And the darkness has come, so it's time to get searching. I think this is the first time I've actually found a polar bear in this world. Pretty cool. And just as it's nearly daytime, I've managed to get one. I've got the items I need, but I've just realized that this guy is miles away from my house. It's going to be a fun task getting him back home. This guy is now ready. Let's get him out of here. And somehow, I've got to try and lure him back to my house. And I'm pretty sure using job site blocks is going to be the best way. I've only got 500 blocks to go this it shouldn't take me too long it's taken some time but we have uh, we finally got this guy in here and i'm going to sleep next to him and with that done i can now remove this wall that separates the villagers and eat some melon since i've completely run out of food and next i wish to bone meal more wheat then that can be turned into bread and given to the villagers and i do also have enough sugar cane to make two more books and use those to make a bookcase and from that we can make a luck turn <laughs> look at this we got a baby villager i'm going to use this luck turn to get a first upgrade from a villager the plan is to get mending from him but we shall see finally i've got mending but i've just realized a crucial mistake of <laughs> I've got no emeralds. I'm going to make this guy a fletcher.
adventure. I'm going to quickly sleep. Now I really quickly need to get some emeralds. I'm going to give this guy some sticks. And there we go. He will give me three emeralds. And if I go on you. And I'm just going to buy a bookshelf. And then at least it's done. And I can get mending from this guy anytime I want. I can probably get some more villagers now as well. Let's also take these diamond ores. And use this fortune too to see how many extra diamonds we can get. I feel like a grand total of nine. I feel like if I really want to get the process moving along. I'm going to need way, way more sticks. And I have bone meal. I have a sapling. I've got dirt. Time to see what we can do. I believe if I use this pickaxe, I've got a higher chance of getting a sapling. Although, hey, we've already got two. That's super good. Once I get four, I'm going to start doing mega tiger trees. There we go. We've got the fourth one. To be honest, we've got saplings coming from everywhere. It's brilliant. Let's really get some big trees. We can go like that, bone meal it. And after a few tries, I'm going to waste all my bone. Okay, it's so the snow getting in the way. Take two. There we go. <laughs> we got a massive one. I reckon swimming up with water is the best idea. This gets you so, so much more wood than four individual spruce trees ever could. And that is great news for this villager. I'm going to buy another bookshelf from you. And mine it with my axe to get three books. And then... We can buy mending. And I can also craft one of these and really start to upgrade my items. Well, I will be able to once I've got a load more bookcases at least. I do feel like you kind of get less saplings back when you do it like this, but... It's still got to be worth it. And with this, I've got enough bookcases. I've got the lapis. Now I can start upgrading my tools. Already, I've got a prop four unbreaking three thorns too. That's pretty insane. And some pretty nice leggings as well. So now I've got the villagers. I've got a place to upgrade my items. But now I need a way to get XP. Lots and lots of XP. And to do that, I'm going to create a super simple gold farm. Nicely dug an area down here for this. I'm also going to add three, well, a couple of ladders just to get up here. And I just need to spleef you out of here, mate. You're kind of in the way. And on top of here, there can be slabs and trap doors on each side here and to make this as safe as possible i'm going to add blocks all the way around here just leaving that gap right there also blocking this ladder and add one right there and a few here and the farm is ready all i have to do is anger all the pigmen and they will come to me and walk down there and if i keep wandering around i can anger them from far and wide and collect the xp and i'm going to keep doing this to get loads and loads of levels this xp farm has been decent but i think i can make something a bit better and to do that i'm first going to make a brand new pickaxe as well as an anvil and this pickaxe can have mending added to it. Then I can gather up loads of these blocks and create an ender chest, place all the blocks in there, and then I can pick up the ender chest using my silk touch. I'd also like to get a little bit more dirt, place it right here, plant some saplings and grow them, and that way I can get lots more wood. And that's going to be used to make ladders. And my pickaxe just broke. <laughs> nice one. On that note, let's begin digging upwards towards the top. I've made it to bedrock. This is how I'll get above it. But I have, of course, got to make sure I've got a way back down. And since TNT isn't really an option, I'm going to instead have to use a portal. And since food is also getting a bit scarce, I'm going to bone meal some more. First things first, we climb up here, we throw an ender pearl, and we're up. Next, I build a portal so that I can get back out of here. And then I'm going to build up about 120 blocks. And now I've just realized there's not really an easy way for me to get down here. I'm so used to having my elytra there. <laughs> I'd normally just use that. So instead, I'm going to have to do something like that. And that was very, very scary indeed. And, and, and in hindsight, a little bit reckless. But hey, it was a pretty safe option as well. But all's well that ends well. We can now safely place the ladders. And next, I'm going to build a bit of a room. This room is going to have blocks along like this. And a wall around here. And also around here. And then from here, I just need to get to work and build a giant platform. Something's gone a little bit wrong here, but um, I'm pretty confident I can still survive, I, I think. I've just got to... Oh no, there goes my ender chest. I've now finished a nice little perimeter around the edge. Time to thicken out this platform. Now the platform is a bit bigger. There are mobs everywhere. And there we go. I've used up all my blocks. Actually, never mind. There's a few more in the ender chest. And this time, I actually have used up all my blocks. The only things missing are a load of trap doors to cover up these tops. And to also place in here when I get rid of these guys. Okay, they really are all piling in. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Maybe I made this too powerful. Well, this is definitely the best way to get XP. All I'm missing is a few slabs to go on top like this. And some trap doors right here. And now with this great power, I must max out my armor. It's great to be getting a bit of gold from this as well. I always think one of the best things you can make for this is a grindstone. It just makes resetting upgrades much, much easier. If I really want to upgrade my tools and items, I'm going to need to improve my gold farm a bit more. So I'm going to start by making some hoppers and also six buckets. Next, I'm going to come down here and grab lots of powdered snow. I'm also very quickly going to get some emeralds so that I can get more mending, which can be applied to these leggings. Now, you probably want to know what the powdered snow's for. If I just throw my ender pearl... Oh, we'll have another... Okay, there we go. <laughs> Took a few attempts. But anyway, I've thrown my ender pearl. Now I just need to climb up here. And I'm going to place the powdered snow in here. These blocks can be changed to be hoppers and some chests at the end. And if I anger the pigmen, 
We should get loads down here. It's not as fast as using minecarts, but it does mean I can still AFK in here. I feel like gas really are a serious problem with this farm. I'm going to have to do something about them. And to do that, I'm going to need lots and lots of slabs. And mining up wood is going to be the best way to get them. And while I'm at it, I might as well give some of this wood to this guy. Let's craft loads of slabs. And my idea is to place them all the way around like this so that the gas cannot spawn. And then also like this on the inside layer. And now it is completely gas proof. And I'm getting all the XP I could dream of. I've modified the design even more to make it faster. It's a bit of a weird chamber, but they will fall down there. Powdered snow is just too slow for me. Although it seemed like a good plan at the time, the powdered snow has got to go. Now to test out the final design. It's just missing trapdoors all the way along here. It's been a couple of minutes. Let's see how good the farm has been. Well, it's got me over 50 levels. I'm happy with that. Now to put them to good use. And I also wonder if I use powdered snow, can I kind of do a nice slow descent instead of... <laughs> A dangerous one. There's only one way to test this, so we go like this, and look at that. Gracefully, we drop down. Yeah, we're a little bit cold, but we'll uh, we'll soon warm up. Now I can upgrade all of my items. And after not very much time, I've got some pretty good items. I just need to get more emeralds from this guy, and more mending from that. Let's put mending on my helmet, on my sword, and also my chest plate. And now back to the farm. So now I'm going to just chill here and get loads and loads of XP. Quite a bit of time has passed and the farm has been working really nicely. It's completely full. It's also let me get loads and loads of gold and also 66 levels. Now if I craft one of these and place it here, I can do some trading with this guy. I've also got loads more that can be traded right here. This guy is probably going to be very happy since I can also trade him loads of gold as well. And from all that trading, I've managed to get over 85 emeralds, but I'm also going to get more bread since I'm still going to need way more villagers. I've also managed to get these two very nice pickaxes but they both need mending which is easily bought from this guy and the only other thing that needs mending now is my boots there we go perfect next i'm going to pop to the gold farm and repair all my items and the plan is working perfectly because all my pickaxes are now fully mended so i now have full prot 4 armor and some great upgrades to my tools but i'm still a peasant wearing diamonds and whilst i do already have eight pieces of ancient debris i'm going to need a lot more to get full netherite armor so that's what we're now going to go searching for and the reason i need to get these these good pickaxes is so I can mine much, much faster. My plan for this is to kind of mine in this fashion. And there we go. We already found one piece of ancient debris. Okay, make that two more pieces. And the good thing is I can keep mining quartz to repair my pickaxes. Two more pieces have been discovered, so that is five altogether. No, make that six. Just two more pieces and I'll be able to get full netherite armor. There we go. Okay, we've got one more. Please be two. No, it was only one. Another one. Okay, that's piece number 16. Okay, this is the 20th piece of ancient debris, and we've got the 21st one. Okay, nice. I found two more. It's actually three. This mining for ancient debris is going pretty well. Two more right here. Piece number 27 and 28. And this is going to get me to 30. I think I'm going to aim for 36 pieces and then that should be everything that I need. And that's two more pieces. Okay, that's all that I need. But if I could get three more, then I could get the legendary netherite hoe. And there we have it. A 38th piece. And I think, yeah, this is 40 now. And I've even got a spare one for good measure. I just can't stop finding this stuff now. <laughs> I'm just trying to mind my way back home and uh, we've got a real overload. And I have found the 44th piece. That's 11 netherite ingots. And there's three more here. Oh my goodness. Now that I'm back, I'm going to go to the gold farm and repair all my items. And my pickaxe is now fully repaired. Let's put all of this into furnaces and then make a smithing table. Let's also craft the netherite ingots. And this is going to allow me to make full netherite armor plus all my tools can be maxed out as well so now i have the netherite gear i have very powerful upgrades so i think that it's time that i went on a journey a journey to defeat the all-powerful ender dragon and that will then let me have access to one of the best items in the game the elytra and using the elytra i can explore the secrets that this world has to offer before i go i think it may be wise to make a bow and grab some arrows next i need my ender pearls i've got my blaze powder so let's craft the eyes of ender let's also buy loads more emeralds then i can buy some lapis and i can also combine these bows that i've got to create a pretty powerful one that's enough preparation time to begin searching for the stronghold turns out i've now gone past the stronghold so it probably shouldn't take me too long to find it i have to say ice spikes biomes are a bit of a pain to navigate for this but let's have another throw Okay, yeah, it's basically somewhere on that mountain. I'm pretty sure digging down anywhere around here should get me there. There we go. We're straight into the stronghold. And the bookcase room. I was actually hoping to find this place because books are just going to be very, very useful. And also paper, since I am growing sugarcane, but it can take a while. Wow, there's a spawner connected to this stronghold. That's pretty cool. With some bread. <laughs> well, I'm struggling for food at the moment. So that was a pretty good find. What about this? Okay, more books and paper. Nice. And the other bookcase room was really close. I'm also going to grab a bit of wood since I don't have any on me. And I always think it's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to resources like that. Let's also load up all these books into the ender chest. And here we go, the portal room. With one eye in, so we're going to fill all of these and head to the end. All right, dragon, 
Time to meet your maker. Should be fairly straightforward, just gotta shoot all the towers. This is also an infinity bow, which is pretty handy. I can waste as many arrows as I like, which is probably a good thing because I'm missing a lot of shots. I'm struggling to get the ones that are higher up, so I'm gonna build my way up. I don't have feather falling on these boots, so I have to be a little bit careful. Okay, dragon, you're kind of in my way here. I'm, I'm just trying to go right past you. There we go, and that's the final tower. Let's jump on down and finish the job. This power four bow is now gonna be pretty useful as well. There we go. It's come down. I've managed to hit myself. That's not a good idea. He very quickly flew away. We do a lot of damage with that sword. Here we go. I think this is going to be it. Just to get in here before it bonks me away. There we go. Perfect. And I just got quite reach. Okay, there we go. The dragon's been defeated. And I accidentally walked straight through the portal. We're not done yet. Look at this. Precious torches that came through. We got two torches. Amazing. Well, yeah, now I've got to run all the way back to the stronghold. Thankfully, I do have the coordinates. So I believe right here is the spot that I dug down. So if we just go like that, we can follow this round and get straight to the portal. Now, this time, I want to collect all the XP without falling in. Next, I'm going to head to the end gateway. Throw that ender pearl like so. We've made it through and the search for the end city can begin. Also, I'm not sure, but I reckon chorus fruit might actually be a better thing for me to eat. Of course, I do have to be careful because I'm going to teleport every single time. I'm also going to have to be careful with ender pearls. I'm pretty sure that's going to make, I mean, it's going to be terrifying if I fall in back. Look at that. Easily made it. And now the fun part begins of bridging across these gaps. Just kidding. I'm going to ender pearl instead. And we got an end city. Hey, that was a pretty good ender pearl because look. I think, well, maybe there's not an end ship, actually. Sadly, as it turns out, there isn't an end ship, but it's still going to be a great place to explore and get loot. And I'm very glad that I'm finally getting shulker shells, too. Lots of gold in here. We've got, hey, hey pretty good, because that shovel, I could combine some. I can make efficiency five shovel. Nice boots that I don't think I need them, though. But also an ender chest, which is always useful. And the only other room with any loot is right here. And hey, some diamonds, which are going to be useful for my diamond hoe. That sword's not really going to be useful, but I'm going to grindstone it, and then I might be able to do something better with it. And whilst I'm here, I will also grab the ender chest. Now, if I eat this chorus fruit... Look at that. Teleports me straight down here. And I see another end city in the distance. Look how close we are. This is a little risky, but if I eat this, will it teleport me along? Look at that. Chorus fruit... <laughs> It's very useful. Also, this is sadly a tiny end city with no elytra. So I'm not even going to waste my time with it. What's that I see in the distance? It's another end city, and this time it does have a ship. Elytra, here I come. I'm not really sure what my plan is to get across here. Do I Do I just float along? I'm going for it. <laughs> Guys, please shoot me. I, I might not make it otherwise. I've made it with loads of time to spare. Let's grab these beautiful things. Sky's the limit, and we also get some nice loot here. And on that note, I'm going to equip the elytra and take them for a spin. I'm not really sure which way I want to go. Hopefully they work, yeah. <laughs> that would have been a problem if they didn't work. And sadly, I didn't think ahead to bring gunpowder so I could not make any rockets. Okay, this has gone a little bit pear-shaped. Um, just need to land. Here. Don't get angry at me, you stupid end of <laughs> Of all the things to happen. I slightly overestimated my flying abilities. Whoa, you're still alive? This might just be the undefeatable Enderman. Just kidding, I can defeat him. I've got loads of Endermen chasing me. What am I doing? What am I doing? I, I see. Hey, you know what? That was a great move. I just want to find an end gateway and go back home. And speaking of which, there's one of that. Are you kidding me? Did I really just look at that guy? And before I head through, I'm also going to grab some chorus fruit to take home with me. And of course, the other thing to remember is to bring the egg. I don't really have any other item to do this, so I'm going to place a bed and that should break it. Yeah, perfect. And because I broke the bed I slept in, it has taken me back to spawn. A long journey is ahead. But the good thing about this journey is that I can use my elytra. Not what I was looking for, but a room portal on the way. <laughs> Apparently already been here. And last time I was here, I regretted not bringing the clock, so this time I'm taking it. And here we are, home sweet home. As I always do now, I'm going to place a lodestone with the dragon egg on top of that. Offload these millions of arrows that I never needed. Use all of my gunpowder to make some firework rockets. I can also grab the spare netherite scrap to make more netherite ingots. And finally, the netherite hoe. Let's also make a couple of chests, and then we can make a couple of shulker boxes. Not got anything to put in them right now, but they no doubt will be useful. And thanks to all these books, I can come over to this guy, buy another mending one, and add that to my elytra. Look at that, I managed to get a looting three book, feather falling four, and also four unbreaking books, which when combined all together, get unbreaking three, which is also very useful for my elytra. I may have defeated the ender dragon, but there's still one thing stopping me from battling three withers at once, and that is totems. But that is easier said than done. In this world, there are no mansions, no outposts, and no villages. Instead, I'm going to need to find a pillager patrol, and then defend my own village. I kind of just have to wait and hope for a patrol to show up, but in the meantime, I'm going to finish maxing my armor, which means buying a bookcase from this guy, crafting another lectern, and attempting to get thorns three. And there we go. Good news is we got thorns, but we need another eight emeralds. Okay, hopefully he doesn't actually change his trade 
I need to, um, I need to do some buying. Sure, this Fletcher is happy to sell sticks to me. Well, I mean, he's happy to buy sticks from me for emeralds. And then we can purchase thorns. I also get the feeling that if there is a pillager patrol anywhere, the golem's going to take them out. So I need to beat him to it. I'm going to grab all of these books, pick up this anvil, and head to my gold farm to get way more XP. I have to say, being able to fly right up to the top is a lot better than climbing the ladder. Whilst I'm getting all this XP, let's keep adding things onto my items. Efficiency 5 pickaxe, very nice. And feather falling 4 boots. And now that that has thorns 3, it is a fully maxed out chest plate. And my other pickaxe is also fully maxed out. I'm happy with what I've got, and I can also do loads of trading, because emeralds are going to be important important to get more thorns books. So let's buy one, two, three of these. And then that can be added to all of my armor. Let's also grab this book. And if I get 19 levels, I can put it on my boots. And then I think they're fully maxed out. So just bear with me for a moment while I get the rest of the XP. From all this, I have got more than enough XP. There we go. The anvil even broke, but we now have full maxed out armor. All of them are fully maxed. And that's always a great achievement if you ask me. One nice thing about being able to fly is I can get rid of this stupid floating log that's been bothering me. Let's also do more trading with these two. No doubt those emeralds will be useful very soon. Since I'm still waiting for that pillager patrol to show up, there's something that I need to do in the meantime. Because living off Cora's fruit isn't really a good thing. And to do that, I'm going to build a hogling farm so that I never go hungry again. For this, I'm going to need a few items and materials, such as warped fungi, some more wood, and then the rest of the items that I need can all be obtained from the overworld, such as a load of stone, a little bit of dirt, slabs, some glass, and a bunch of other items that are all in this shulker box. So first of all, I'm going to throw this ender pill to go above the bedrock, and then I'm going to fly over to where there's a crimson forest. And from here, I'm going to go up about five blocks and start building this thing, which involves building a 13 by 13 platform. I've added dirt in these positions, so now we need to put the wart fungi on top with fences on top of each of those. And now for the place that the hoglings are going to run to, there's going to be a little thing here and and also one right there. And then we're going to need six trap doors like this that are all going to be shut. And also some on the other side. And this is what the finished product of up here is going to look like. So then they're going to come down here. And let's also build a place for them to fall down. So we're going to have two blocks everywhere like this. So it's a bit of a chamber with my chest and hopper system right here. Next, I'm going to put trap doors on top of all of the hoppers with a bit of lava on top of that. And I'm going to completely light up the platform with torches like this. And there we go. The farm is now complete. I just need to build a tower right here to AFK from. And then I can build a platform platform at the top and my food problems will soon be over. A few days have passed, let's go and see what we've got. Okay, I obviously left it running a bit longer than I expected, but we have got more than enough pork chops to sort me out. Finally, my days of eating chorus fruits can be over. And now we can go home, sweet home. It's quite handy that it's nighttime right now because I am completely out of firework rockets. So getting some gunpowder is going to be very useful. 20 gunpowder is pretty good. We've got loads of sugar cane here as well, which can all be turned into paper and more firework rockets are sorted. Look at this. This is kind of, there's a creeper right here. Okay, I've got to be quite careful. If that creeper blows up, it would be a disaster. But there's even more firework rockets. I just upgraded my hoe. It now has efficiency four and fortune two. And I, I don't really know the use of those, but uh, might as well have them. So since there is still no sign of an illager patrol, I think it's time I went back through the portal to get the rest of the items that I need to spawn three withers. But thankfully, there is a fortress that is very near my portal. The amount of mobs spawning in this fortress is pretty terrible, so I'm going to go and find a better one. No fortress, but I have found a bastion with loads and loads of gold. This fortress is in a basalt delta. It might be a little bit better, although it does then move out of that biome, so I'm going to try and find a better one. Now, this fortress does look more promising. This seems like a good place. Time to get searching. I have pretty much got everything that I need now. I've decided to only go for one wither because <laughs> getting enough for three withers is just going to take me too, too long and I can't be bothered to do that. So all that's left for me to do is put my Electra on and fly back home. Here's my portal ready and waiting. And the rest of the items that I need are in these two chests. And all these extra bones are brilliant because I can now use them on my wheat. And I can turn all of that into bread. I can give it to my villagers who uh, <laughs> will all get out of bed just to get some bread. That's right, guys. Even villagers love a good midnight feast. And I can sleep in their bed without them realizing. I think now before I can go any further, I need a pet. You know, I I'm living life. It's, it's tough living it all by myself. So I want to make a fishing rod. And this part is very exciting. <laughs> We're going to do some fishing. In fact, I'll make it even more exciting. Have you ever been to sleep whilst you're fishing? Look at that. Still didn't get a fish. <laughs> this is great. There we go. First thing. It was a puffer fish. That's, that's like the one fish I don't want. I think it's time for a change of tack. Instead, I'm going to go polar bear hunting. Don't actually do this in the wild, but they're a great way to get fish. Only problem is they're an endangered species in Minecraft and in real life, so they're quite difficult to find. And now I feel quite bad about it, so I'm going to go back to being a respectful, humble fisherman. One full day of fishing is enough for me. We've got loads of that. I'm going to get some sleep. Now, what am I going to do with all this fish? You can probably guess. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we got these little fellas. But yes, right now, I'm currently looking for a cat. I have seen them before, but right now, we haven't got any. But when they do turn up... <laughs> I'll be ready. I hear a cat. Hold on a second. Where's my fish? I was too hasty in thinking there wasn't any around. Now, I heard it when I was about here. 
is it? <laughs> this is going to take a bit of a search. I can only guess that it's run up this mountain somewhere. Aha! Why, why are you going so far? And it doesn't help that you're white, so you're completely blending with the snow. All right, little fella. Look at one fish wonder. We've had some of you guys before. Although last time that happened, people accused me of editing out the other fishes. <laughs> well, I didn't edit it out that time either, okay? I didn't edit it out either time. So you can sit there, little kitty. And it'd be great if I could get a name tag from one of these. Maybe by buying a bit of gold, I can upgrade you a little bit more. And then even more again. And look at that. 19 emeralds for a name tag. But don't worry. You guys, you, you'll, you'll take the gold, won't you? You've restocked as well. Perfect. So now we'll just go over to you. Buy a name tag. And I've just realised my other anvil broke because I use it too many times. But don't worry. Plenty of iron waiting for me in the chest. We can easily make a new one. And you shall be called... Icicle. <laughs> That's what's going to happen to you if you sit there for the rest of your life. Do have a couple more pieces of gunpowder right there. So let's make a few more firework rockets. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of exploration, see what I can find. A ruined portal has been found with obsidian and a golden apple. Now they're pretty difficult to get. Another thing that I realised in this world is that ruined portals are extremely hard to find. And there's another one down here, but I'm not sure if I've already been to it. Um... I have no idea. Either way, it's an extra gold block, which is nice. More gold for these guys. And wow, you've, you've put your prices up. What did I do to upset you? This guy, though, he's, he's still giving me the discounts. Let's go ahead and move this dragon egg. And instead, put it in front of all the villagers. They should know what I've been through to, to do this, I guess. Look at this. this, this, this whoa, did, he, did you just get rejected by that villager? You are a nasty, nasty villager. You, on the other hand, you're a good villager, so I'm going to buy a bookshelf from you. Then turn it into a lectern and begin work on getting a Sharpness 5 book for my sword and for my axe. And after that, I think I'll be ready for the battle against the wither. There we go. This guy's got sharpness five for me. I'm going to need a few more emeralds if I want to get it for my axe as well. well. Let's put that on my sword. Perfect. Nice little upgrade. There is a little bit more gold here. I could plant some more trees as well. That could be an idea. We'll just see how business is with these guys. Okay, well, you're not charging me too much. What about you? Oh, you both put your prices down. That's more like it. And that means I can afford another sharpness five. And apply it to my axe. And now there isn't much else I can do in preparation for this battle against the wither. Except for one very important thing that I definitely need to do and that is to collect up iron because if I don't have some sort of thing to put the beacon on well what's the point of taking out the wither for a full beacon I'd need 10 stacks of iron I'm not sure I'm gonna go quite for that much but now that I can use fortune 3 on iron you, you just never know we're in a great ravine with lots of it all around so who knows what can happen already I've got one stack and I've barely done any look at this an axolotl well I can't say no you guy you little fella are I'm coming in my bucket. We've also come across a spider spawner here. Let's get rid of that. Anything good? Another golden apple. Nice. And after mining up this, I now have over five stacks of iron. But I'm not stopping there. Although I've just realized I'd need 24 stacks to build a full beacon. So I actually am stopping there. Here we are back home. Let's begin the smelting process. I think we need more furnaces. So let's craft a few of those. One, two, three, four. I can also load them up with blaze rods, which is going to be pretty useful. Whilst that's all smelting, let me add this little axolotl into here. There you go. This is your now your new home. I don't know if it's better or worse. And don't get any ideas. Do not eat him. And I think all that's left to do now is battle the wither. Yes, the moment you've all been waiting for. I've just realized... Why, why is the ender chest in there? I wondered where my ender chest went. As I was saying, the moment you've all been waiting for. For this to work properly, we are going to need a few arrows, so we've got loads of them. I'm going to come a little bit away from my house because, well, can you even call it a house? My, my base of operations, because I don't want everything to just be blown up. Well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> Turns out the snow's in the way. And here we go. Bow ready. Sword ready. Honestly, what could go wrong? Already I've been withered. We're just going to keep using this bow. It's power four. It's pretty good. Already getting down to half health. Although I'm also at half health. You know, I've got to look after myself as well. If I just keep using these arrows. There we go. The next phase. Okay, now we're going with the sword. Oh, wait. It's digging me into a hole. Oh, it's brought me out of that. What is going on here? I'm going to water bucket my way out of here. Pick that up. I realized that snow and dirt is not very blast resistant against the wither. Now is going to be a very good time just to have a quick golden apple. Recuperate. And you know what? I'm just going to do nothing. I am going to do nothing and watch the wither destroy itself. There you go. I, I did nothing. Tell you what I did do. I did get a lot of snow out of that. Hey, it's a pretty good snow farm is battling the wither here. But we also got the nether star. So we can craft that like so and patiently wait for the iron to smell. It <laughs> could take a little bit longer. All right, guys, I don't want you to get too excited, but I've seen another cat. I need to go and get some fish. Will tropical fish do it? I have no idea. Don't go over there, cat. <laughs> There's a lot of destruction. I think it's safe to say you do not care about tropical fish one bit. Grab me salmon and me cod. Now then, cat, where did, you, where did you go? You're down here. And there you go. One fish again. You guys just love only having one fish. And what happens when you put two cats next to each other and both feed them fish? You get a baby cat. There we go. And you uh, you look just like your mother. I'm gonna sit you down there, you down there. There's just gonna be cats everywhere at this rate, isn't there? And meanwhile, you're asleep on my bed. I don't know who you think you are. No matter. Let's gather up all the iron, craft loads of blocks, and build a little beacon. I will just reiterate, it's not gonna be the biggest beacon in the world. But hey, for like one day of mining, I'm pretty happy with the size of it. Okay, mate, you're just gonna have to move over a little bit. There we go. I need to get into my own bed. Now I feel like I'm 
I'm just sleeping inside your head. That's all I can see. You gave me chicken. Thanks. Actually, chicken's kind of rare. Like, I, can only, I, I could get it, I guess, in the... Yeah, I, I, maybe it's not that rare. Those can go there. Just need three more. And here we go. I mean, it's not... Yeah, it's not gonna be a massive full beacon. But we can get jump boost resistance. Let's just get haste. That's a pretty solid thing to go for. And there we go. We've brought home the beacon, as the, as the advancement says. We've got a bit of haste. Hello, guys. Yes, I'm back from my travels and I've, I've finished exploiting you guys. If, if you want to go outside and see the world, who am I to stop you? Just make sure you come back home before it gets dark. I feel like my best idea is going to be to get a door and create a bit of an entranceway like that. There we go. Much safer. Another cat? W why is there so many cats everywhere? Before I do anything else, I need to find a mineshaft because that's going to be the only way for me to get wood. And as for food, I really have no idea. It's probably going to be rotten flesh to start with. If I even manage to survive the first night, I'm going to be impressed. I've already created a trap. I knocked these guys into there and I just simply dropped gravel on them. If I go like this, there will be no escape. And all my free food floats to the top. When I see grass, I've got to take it. Because if I get seeds, they could be useful. But apparently that's a bit of a... Oh, no, wait, we got one. I found diamonds. No mineshaft yet, but... <laughs> At least I've found diamonds. Finally, I think I've spotted something. I've got to try and get down here without drowning. Diamonds are super easy to find now. But yes, I have indeed found a mineshaft. Finally, I can get some wood. Can't believe I'm saying this, but it's great to make a crafting table. And there's a minecart chest here. What? I need food. Why is there no food? That does mean I can now make an iron pickaxe and begin collecting cobblestone. Let's make a stone axe, a shovel, and of course, a fishing rod. I'm also going to use this sword to collect string and also collect up gold. Oh my goodness, there's diamonds down here. Let's get those collected. And there's more here. Man, is it just easier in the cave update to get diamonds? There's even more over here. I can now craft some wool, make a bed. And it turns out I can't sleep yet. It must be the next day. So I survived the first night. <laughs> I may only be on half a heart, but in my opinion, that doesn't matter. Also, I'm trying to hit 2 million subscribers this year, my channel so if you do find that you enjoy this video please make sure to subscribe now that i can make doors getting diamonds is going to be really easy i can't believe i'm saying this but i already have enough diamonds for full armor and a diamond pickaxe i have to say i'm, I'm looking pretty good already and with these i can also make a diamond axe and also a diamond shovel i feel like i should now use this opportunity to get some food there we go my first fish and I got a bowl. Oh, that could be useful. After 10 minutes of fishing, I now have plenty of food. I'm going to go back into the mine shaft, get more diamonds on the way. And I'm going to collect up some more wood. Oh, well, we got a golden apple. That's a pretty good thing to find. And another one. And some bread, finally. I also have enough diamonds to make a diamond sword. And I can make a bow. Another golden apple. And now I must begin the difficult task of finding some lava. You'd think this would be very easy. But in the cave update, lava isn't quite as common as it used to be. Good news, we've found a cave with some lava in it as well. Okay, this cave looks amazing. I, oh, is there another mine? shaft over there as well. If I see gold, I feel like it's best to collect the gold. And the same for iron since anvils are going to be useful. I love all these mine shafts. It's so easy to get diamonds. I feel like this spawner could be useful down the line. Maybe for an XP farm. I lost the other lava, but I'm going to turn this into obsidian, mine it up with my diamond pickaxe, and then build a portal in an area where I will also have my house. This looks like a good spot to me. Let's do that. Light the portal, chuck a load of junk into chests, and head to the nether where all my problems will be solved. Now I just need to go and find some trees. I should also probably put on this gold helmet. All of a sudden wood is going to be much much easier to get. I want to grab these fungi as well. Then if I take out an enderman carrying one of these blocks, that means I can get it without silk touch. Then if I grab some bones, I can then place down some netherrack, place the warped nylium in the middle. I don't know if bone meal and it makes it spread. Yeah, it does. Perfect. So I can plant a warped fungus on there and then I can keep bone meal in this and it should grow. There we go. We have got wood in the overworld. Now, I definitely need to find some mushrooms. In fact, I'm even going to eat rotten flesh to get some of my health back. Thank goodness for this. Brown mushrooms, red mushrooms were sorted. Let's craft these. Eat that. Perfect. I'm getting my health back now. Due to the power of bone meal, bone blocks are very, very useful. I think that's a bastion over there, actually. Indeed it is. This is going to be my ticket to getting loads more useful items. Now, the thing I have to be careful about the most is the piglin brutes. They're pretty strong. This guy gave me fire resistance first try. That's well good. Now, I can nip up here. This piglin brute has fallen in the lava. You're no match for me. There's a couple more big boys right here. I'll have to use lava on them so I don't upset the rest of the piglins. That'll teach you. Now, I can start trading with these fellas. Look at that. Pearls already. These piglin brutes think they're tougher. <laughs> They're no match for me. I can also go to the lodestone chest to get a guaranteed lodestone. Some nice loot over here. Oh my goodness, look at all these golden carrots. Soul speed three. Wow, that's so rare as well. And pig step. We can end the video. Yeah, we've completed Minecraft now. And a mending diamond pickaxe. What on earth? I've got a lot of good stuff from these guys. Didn't quite get all the pearls, but I don't have the inventory space for all that stuff, so I'll be back later to collect it. In the meantime, I can get more ender pearls. That gives me 16 ender pearls. I have discovered a fortress up ahead. I'm looking forward to getting these blaze rods and getting out of here. And with fire resistance, this will be easy. 
18 blaze rods should be enough. I have no idea if saddles are going to be useful. I've just realized I have enough iron to make an anvil, which will be very handy because I do have soul speed three, only I left it at the bastion, so I'm heading back there. I had to build a very precarious bridge over here. Well, that's why I write down the coordinates of these structures. And the great thing about this is I have the resources to make an ender chest, so I can transport a lot of these items home. Let's add soul speed to the boots. Here we've got a spare soul speed book. I won't be coming back here anytime soon, so I might as well get the obsidian from this ender chest. Sadly, you don't pick up the actual ender chest unless you have soul touch. I have to say, there really is no place like home. And boy, is it good to be back. I can't believe it. A chicken jockey has spawned. And... I accidentally killed it. I can get more dandelions. Now, have you guys ever done something really stupid? Because I just have. I put my other ender chest in the ender chest that I broke. And I put my blaze rods in there. So without a blaze rod, I can't craft another ender chest. So I'll be right back. And there we go. No harm done. It'd be a good idea to get soul sand and nether wart whilst I'm here too. That was very, very close indeed. No serious harm done. I'm back home safe and sound. If I now bone meal the grass, I can get flowers such as dandelions. And to get more mushrooms, I can just simply bone meal one of these. There we go. And then chop it down with my axe. This really is a fast way to get mushrooms. Very useful now that I can make some brewing stands. I found a sheep. I, I didn't know these guys could even spawn. I don't want you guys going anywhere. That includes you too. And then the plan is to brew potions of weakness. The only issue is to do that, I'm going to need to find some sugar. I've yet to find sugar cane, so I think a witch is my only option. And then if I ever find an infected villager, I can cure him and start a lovely village. I have to say, I don't know what I think about this iron texture. It might still change before 1.17 is officially released, but it'll probably take some getting used to. I can actually hear an infected villager, but I don't know where he is. There he is. He will be my first cured patient. Let's get him into this hole. Use a name tag so he doesn't despawn. And once I get sugar, I can cure him. Next, I'm going to craft a hoe and start a nice little wheat farm. Since I will need bread to breed villagers. And thanks to all this bone meal, growing it is pretty easy. Thanks to all the bone meal, I can make quite a lot of bread. Look at that, we have cows now. All sorts of things are spawning. I think my best bet is to find a stronghold which is that way, since my life will be a lot easier with the elytra. Tell you what, this is the kind of caves I came to see in the cave update. I'm getting close to where the stronghold could potentially be. All right, it is in that direction. I don't think it is too far then. I know I said it before, but this is just so, so cool. Throwing eyes of ender underwater is certainly a different way to do things, and it's back that way. It's certainly been a different challenge to find a stronghold like this, but my calculations say that it is right about here. Okay, we've dug down right next to the lava. I'm glad I didn't dig down into the lava. That would have been very, very awkward. And I'm at minus 64. Wait, where is the stronghold? If I'm not mistaken, and it's generated above me. Yeah, look at that. We were underneath the stronghold. I found the portal room. Let's get rid of this spawner. Let's put the eyes in. Have a quick sleep. And before I go through, I want to try and find the library. Oh my goodness, I found some diamonds here. The library has been located. And this is how I intend to get paper for now. And some decent enchanted books. Efficiency four and another efficiency four. And here is the other bookcase room with more enchanted books. In fact, a lot of enchanted books. I think it's a good idea for me to make an anvil right now. And I can get enchanting. I'm at levels, but don't worry because I'm about to go and take take out the ender dragon. Let's do this. Might as well do this the old fashioned way and take out the towers. All the towers have gone now, I just need to finish off the dragon. And this should finish off the dragon. Nope, it's almost dead. And that finished off the dragon. And now I can finish anviling my items. Let's grab the egg. And now it's time to go and get those elytra. Wouldn't it be lovely if I didn't have to travel thousands and thousands of blocks to find an end city? Thankfully, due to the max render distance, I have spotted an end city. Sadly, no end ship here. What a letdown. Just kidding. With this render distance, I can see another one over there that does have an end ship. And it is still a good opportunity to get some shulker shells. In my opinion, shulker boxes are one of the most useful things ever. I can finally put stuff in it. Lots of gold and diamonds and some nice leggings and all oh, looting too. That's pretty good. Let's put these together. Now with looting too, I can get ender pearls much easier. But most importantly, I can now get the elytra. And there we go. Sky's the limit. And a lot of diamonds here too. Let's take these babies for a spin. All in all, that's been a good day's work. I also managed to get another five shulker shells. And this time I'm not forgetting the dragon head. <laughs> and all that's left for me to do now is head back home. I've made it back to the end gateway. I can just fly in now. And I think whilst I'm here, I might as well grab a bit of obsidian. I have 38 pieces. That should be enough. And very annoyingly, it's not taking me back to my bed. I am all the way back at spawn. Thankfully, I do know the coordinates of where I live. And now I can get some sleep. I can also make some more firework rockets. The next quest is to find a witch so I can get some sugar. Which, since mobs always spawn in a cave-only world, I don't think it should be too hard. And whilst I'm out here, I should get gunpowder as well. I have to say, this is one of the coolest ways to see the world. No sign of a witch, but I did manage to find this fella. Now I have to somehow get him out of the boat without him sinking to the bottom. Hopefully this 
this works. There we go. It makes life very difficult with mobs everywhere, but I'm almost there. I just need to get him his own private hole. There we go. Name him Intelligent Patient, because he's got glasses on, and so he doesn't despawn. And now the hunt for a witch continues. Finally, I found one. After all this work I've put in, you better drop some sugar. Yeah, poison me, do what you want. Yes, we got some. Three pieces. That is more than enough. Now we can craft the fermented spider eye, put it in the brewing stand. And thankfully, I have three golden apples that I've found in chests. So I can splash them both and cure them both. And I guess I should start working on a safe place for these guys to live. The villagers have now been cured. And my plan is to use beds to get them to walk into their new home. Looks like it's worked like a charm. And I'm going to use ladders to get in and out so that nothing else can get in and they can't get out. Finally, with iron doors to be extra secure. Out of nowhere, this guy's turned up. We might as well cure him as well. He went into the nether. Are you kidding me? Where on earth are you going? All right, let's get him in that hole. Perfect. Now I shall craft a fletching table, place it down for one of these fellas, and then I can begin getting emeralds from this guy. I can also give them both bread and they will start breeding me more villagers. Although I do need to place an extra bed for that to work. What a magical moment this is, ladies and gentlemen. And now we have our first baby villager. Let's also trick this guy to going in. There we go. Welcome to the team, sir. I've got a really good system for getting wood now. I grow it like that and it only grows as high as I can reach because then there's a warped warp block in the way. I've also got some stone masons because eventually you can trade stone with them for emeralds. And in a cave only world, <laughs> there's a lot of stone about. There you go. At the moment it's 13 stone but we can get that much lower. And now I can get emeralds from the stone. And it looks like we've had nine gold join the ranks. For my plan to continue, I now need more beds. And thankfully, there is a few sheep dotted around the world. Welcome to your new home, sheep. Let's get a few extra emeralds. And now my main goal is to get mending. At long last, I can now get mending. Without a doubt, one of the best enchantments in the game. Now I can put it on my elytra since they are so close to breaking. And I'll also put it on my helmet. Due to phantoms not being able to spawn, this is the only way I can repair my elytra. Here are these sheep I left here earlier. Somehow I have to safely get them down there. All right, fellas. This won't hurt a bit. Just make sure you land in the water. Uh-oh, that guy's not going to make it. <laughs> they both died. Looks like you're still the only sheep, good sir. I took out a zombie and I noticed that he dropped me a potato. So that's the first time I've managed to get one of them. Looks like a cow has spawned over here. I might as well add him to the farm. Spend a bit of time placing a load of torches around, just lighting up this area. And thanks to this light, we've now got two chickens that have spawned. Let's add these two to the farm and we can breed them. I think that, yeah, that guy just dropped me a carrot. And we've got a baby chicken. Now I have wheat, carrots, and potatoes. And we've got a cat out here. Things really are coming to life. The next step is to try and get Silk Touch. Whilst I'm looking for Silk Touch, this guy has offered me Prop 4. I feel like it's worth taking since it's such a useful enchantment. Finally, I have Silk Touch, and it only is going to cost me 4 emeralds. That's so good. Now I can anvil that to my pickaxe. Also put Prop 4 on my leggings. And mending on my chest plate. And now this is where things start to get OP. I can mine stone and pick it up. Then I can trade it back to these fellas for lots and lots of emeralds. Let's supply these lot with more bread so we can get more baby villagers. I can also add lure to this fishing rod. I won't be needing that anytime soon, but it's useful to have. And now it's back to mining lots of stone. In fact, I'm going to get so much stone that I'm bringing a shulker box. I've got quite a lot of stone now. I'm happy with that. Might as well grab diamonds down here when you see them as well. Now let's do some business. This allows me to get the rest of the prop four. Lots of mending books. And now I can apply them to my armor. Now my next quest is to get looting three. No sign of looting but I'm breaking three will be very useful. Probably a good idea to put an anvil down here and I can use it without having to run too far. Finally, looting three. I accidentally hit him so his prices have gone up and now I just need to get a few more levels, 13 to be exact, and then I can add looting three to my sword. And I think the best thing I can do now is go and get some wither skulls. Not only because I want to defeat the wither but also so that I can get a beacon. And once I have haste two, I'll be unstoppable in collecting stone. There's wither skull. Whoa, whoa, he picked it up. You can't pick it up. There we go. We got it. Wither skull number one. I went looking for a better a fortress and I found a bastion. Might as well quickly steal the gold. And with 16 blocks, I'm out of here. I've come back to turn the last of my paper into fireworks. And because I have silk touch, I can now use ender chests. Let's also make a red shulker box. That contains all my fire resistance potions. I've also spotted a witch up here. Worth taking out so I can get the sugar, although she only dropped glowstone. Quick bit of milk to stop the poison and I'm ready to go back to the nether. Quite a large ruin portal, couple of gold blocks and gapples. Those are very, very useful to me. Another bastion here? All these gold blocks are going to come in handy. i will be very careful here. The piglin brutes are nice at all. Let's just get all the gold blocks and get out of here. I've come back again since I really need unbreaking on my elytra. I can't afford to let them break and I'm in the middle of nowhere. With a skull number two, another bastion, more gold for me to steal. Finally, I've found a fortress in a soul sand valley. Although the sad news is, I've nearly used all my firework rockets up in looking for it. And there we go, that's the third wither skull. And now I've made it back to my portal and it is time to battle the wither. Right after I do a bit of farming and then breed a few more villagers. And whenever I see a witch, I've always got to take it out for the sugar which I never get. I could do this in a cave, but I want it to be an exciting fight. Even if the whole world is technically a cave. So let's summon him in right here. There we go. 
I just realized I'm not even wearing my chest plate. That is a stupid idea from me. Things are getting a little hairy out there. Thankfully, I've healed up. The wither's healed up. I suppose the wither healing up probably isn't a good thing. But I'm ready for round two. Now I'm wearing a chest plate. This is much easier. Now we're in the sword only phase. Okay, I'm getting a little bit weak here. I just need to eat quickly and get out of there. And now I should be able to finish the job, I reckon. So, so close now. It's either me or the wither. There we go, we got it. And this guy's stolen my nether star. How dare you get off that? There we go, we got it. The wither is always an ordeal when you fight it in the open. But my mission has been accomplished. I don't know what use these have yet, but I'm going to plant the wither roses. And now I've got to work out how I can craft a beacon. Since the only way to do that is to have glass. But in a world with no sand, <laughs> That's going to be a challenge. No need to panic, you can get glass from upgrading a librarian. So that means I'm going to need a lot of emeralds, which means I'm going to need a lot of stone. Let's upgrade him by buying some bookcases. Then I need to buy a load of lanterns to upgrade him again. And now he will sell me some glass. I can also use these lanterns for decoration. Let's craft the beacon. And now I'm going to build the beacon right here, which means I need to carve a hole from here all the way to bedrock. And because this is a new cave update, the world height goes all the way up to 320. I'm now at 220, just 100 blocks to go. All the way up at Y295 and there's still land and there's still mob spawning. And finally, I have made it to bedrock. Now it is to my understanding that a beacon beam can go through bedrock, so I really hope that this works. Here comes the moment of truth. It didn't work. I'm doing a bit of beacon testing just to see if the beam can actually go through a single piece of bedrock. It can. See, I knew I wasn't stupid. And it can even go through two pieces. I don't know why it stopped me before. Yeah, I've tried it in this same spot again. It still doesn't work. There must be a stone block or something above this bedrock. But on this block, right next to it, it works perfectly fine. I'm being a bit reckless now and I'm just digging straight down in another spot. I've just dug down in this spot. <laughs> I thought I was digging down in this spot. No, I, this is where I want to be. Here we go again. Moment of truth once again. Is it going to work this time? Indeed it is. Thank goodness for that. Now I can give myself haste one, which lets me mine stone slightly faster, but it needs to be haste two for it to be truly useful, which means I'm still going to need two stacks of blocks to finish this. All I can say is I better get to work. I reckon mining in these ocean caves is going to be my best bet. This also makes finding diamonds very easy. I spent a lot of time mining. I did get a lot of stuff, but to be honest, I think it's just going to be easy to make an iron golem farm. If I'm going to be serious, I need to make blast furnaces. That should really speed things up. Now my next quest is to get fortune three. And there we have it. Let's grab some emeralds and get the book. Let's put it on this pickaxe. Might as well add mending to it as well. And now we can see just how many diamonds I'm going to get. Without a doubt, this has to be one of the most satisfying things in Minecraft. And from all of that, I got two stacks of diamonds. Might as well also mine up the redstone, the lapis, and all of the coal. And that gave me over three stacks of coal. And so this is all the stuff I've got from my mining. I'm going to turn it all into block form, plus the 40 diamonds in this chest. And I'll be honest with you guys, we're not even close. That's how much we've managed so far. <laughs> it's, it's not much. So without a doubt, the next project is an iron golem farm. I'm also waiting for a wandering trader because that is the only way that I can get sugarcane. Once I have sugarcane, I can get more firework rockets. I can use sugar to make potions of weakness, cure villagers and get lower prices. But until he spawns, I'm just going to have to wait for him. I haven't fully looked into an iron golem farm yet, but I think I might need a name tag, so I'm going to fish for it. And now it's time I gathered up all the resources for this iron golem farm. And to make this, I'm going to need a lot of wood. I found more animals, some pigs and a sheep. With this dual wielding, I can lead all of them at once. Sadly, we, we lost a pig. These two made it down safely though and into the pen you come and now we can breed some sheep this poor pig sacrifice will not be forgotten not forgotten by my stomach anyway now my plan is to head to the stronghold and i've destroyed my bed so i now have no spawn point i'm looking forward to this next bit we can fly so, so far here. A spider that has spawned with invisibility. Now that is something you don't see every day. I'm going to grab these pumpkins because they could be kind of rare. And finally, I have made it. One of the main reasons I needed to come here was to get more wood. Whilst water plants are very good, you can't use them to make boats. So <laughs> I needed to come and get this. Now I'm going to head through the portal, then go through this portal. And it has now taken me to spawn. So this is the spot that I need to build the golem farm. Right here is the place where I'm going to build the farm. Down here is where the villagers will live. And we can even put three beds down down for them. Now before I can do anything else, I need to retrieve some villagers. Whilst I'm here, I might as well get emeralds too, since I've got a lot of stone. This guy might look like a librarian, but I'm pretty sure he stole someone else's lectern to get that job. Also, would you guys be able to breed more villagers whilst I'm away? I knew he was a fraud. He's now lost his job. Apparently this is slightly hurting this guy. Don't die, please. He's all right. Let's get you out of this boat. I just need you to go down here, sir. One down, one to go. I better extend this roof so nobody bangs their head. Looks like we've got some baby villagers ready to go. Looks like I'm kidnapping a child 
in the middle of the night. Please don't take that out of context. Don't worry, young one, I'll be back. I just need to kidnap your brother as well. There we go, you get to bed. Now you guys sleep well, you ain't getting out anytime soon. I think my best chance of a name tag is to trade with these guys. This will upgrade him to expert. And now for 19 emeralds, he's offering a name tag. Thankfully in the chest, I have plenty of emeralds. Let's buy that. And I can also use this compass on the lodestone. That's going to be very handy. Hey you, how would you like to spend your entire life trapped in a hole? Well, if that interests you, just follow me. Never mind, mate, this guy's way, way closer. You were going to be called scary guy because to the villagers, you are very, very scary. Let's get you in there. He's down there, perfect. I can patch up this hole, block him in there. And we've already got a golem. <laughs> it's working. Sorry, old fella, but we're not ready for you yet. I don't know why, but one of my villagers has gone missing. I'm guessing he grew up from a baby to an adult and maybe suffocated. It's probably a safer option to build this roof out of slabs. This is where the iron will be collected. Guys, here we go again. Now this time, don't go missing. Along here, we're going to add signs. And then we can place lava up here to take out the iron golems. I'm also going to grab some extra glass. Place it as a floor along here. Slight upgrade to the amount of chests that we've got. The baby has grown up, which means I can open this up without being worried. Wow, golems have spawned already. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. I've had quite a few mishaps, but finally, the iron golem farm is complete. And this farm spawns a new iron golem roughly every 40 seconds. Already we've got 29 iron. I can now leave that running in the background and in the meantime I'm going to go mining for netherite. I'm also going to put a hopper on top of this brewing stand. Then I can set all the ingredients inside ready and I don't have to keep waiting for it. I'm also going to save all these fancy blocks for a different project since most of this beacon is going to be made from iron. And now I'm ready to go to the nether. Oh my goodness we've already found it. I'm just digging down to the right level and already I've come across two ancient debris. Three ancient debris? You can't get much luckier than that. And since it's difficult for me to make beds to do explosions, I'm instead going to have to do this triple strip mining strategy. Okay, we found another piece of ancient debris. Another piece. And there was one right next to it, which gives me six in total. I'll be honest, this is a very efficient method. I'm finding loads of ancient debris. Piece number eight and piece number nine. I'm, not <laughs> I'm just getting lucky, guys. Honestly, I don't think I've ever been this lucky mining ancient debris, but... It is, I'm finding so much. I've been only been mining for like 10 minutes. Ancient debris number 14. And right next to it are 15 and 16. And I think for me, that is more than enough for today. <laughs> but on my way, I've found another one, so I'm not complaining. Make that another two. Another piece. <laughs> it's crazy. And now it's good to be back at my portal. I can now smelt this ancient debris. And have an extra netherite scrap here. So I can actually get five items to netherite. So I can craft five netherite ingots. And now get the ultimate upgrades. And look at that. We're looking pretty powerful now. <laughs> with two pickaxes. I also want to upgrade this pickaxe to netherite as well. E even though it says diamond pickaxe. My golden farm is still working nicely. I think though for it to properly work. I have to be in the same dimension. But I might as well take this iron for now. And come back later. I think it's time I added more beds in here and expanded this wall. Now this room is looking a lot bigger. Let's add some more beds. I'm going to get more bread now so that I can then breed more villagers. I'm also constantly getting more and more sheep so that I can get more and more wool. And that sheep somehow just died. I don't, I don't know what just happened. I need more emeralds, so I'm mining for stone. I've grabbed up a load of stone here, got loads of inventory, got loads in this chest. Let's get trading. I also found a load of diamonds while going for stone. It's time to see how many we get. Another 27 diamonds, not bad. Now I can begin the quest to get efficiency 5. Finally got efficiency 5 five and a very good price for it too. This guy also gave me thorns three which I thought was definitely worth buying. That now fully maxes out my chest plate. I can add efficiency five to this hoe as well as unbreaking and mending. That means I can finally get rid of this monstrosity here. I feel like all these warped warp blocks might be used for something. Who knows I might use them when I build my house. I'm pleased to say the iron farm is working very very well. Might as well take all these and turn them into blocks. So that's 47 iron blocks we just got from that which gives me 64 altogether. I'd also like to put efficiency on my axe. Let's add more beds along along this edge, give the villagers more bread, and now we're gonna get some baby villagers. I got more emeralds so I can get mending and unbreaking three. I do kind of feel sorry for you guys, I think I should maybe give you a bigger pen. On the plus side, it is giving me lots and lots of wool. Not sure why I need wool though, because I've kind of got all the beds that I need. It's been long enough, I think it's about time I built myself a house. I'm gonna build it here, which means there's gonna be a lot of mining. My shovel broke, but that means I can now make a much more powerful one. I'm currently having to do a lot of mining, and I think it'd be a lot quicker if I had a full beacon. There's a few stacks of iron here, not really that many though. But if I put all of my blocks together, I will be able to make one. Let's get creating this thing. First, I'll start with all the iron. Then the next layer can be made of gold blocks. Then a mixture of diamond and gold. And finally, more gold on top. Actually makes this second layer look full diamond anyway, doesn't it? Let's put the beacon on. Give myself haste too. And now I can really start to mine. This also means getting emeralds has never been easier. This is so, so much better than how it was before. I'm not entirely sure how these blocks are going to look, but this is what we're going to be building. I'm also going to need some glass. Make these into glass panes. And this so 
far is the front of my house. I've decided I now need copper, so that's what I'm searching for. And thankfully in a world that's all caves, it's pretty easy to find. I've got over two stacks, which should be more than enough. Now I can turn all these into blocks of copper. Made a few changes to the front of the house since it blended into the mountain too much before. And this is the new product. I can also use these lanterns as lighting. Yeah, we're definitely overrun with sheep now, but I'm trying to get a load of red wool. I'm at the stronghold and I've built a portal that links to the nether. It just nicely brings me out here. And then I've built a tunnel along here that goes all the way to my other portal. And now I can grab more endstone so I can finish my house. There we go. This is how the interior looks so far. Plenty of work to be done. Looks like these guys ate all the grass. <laughs> I'm going to have to give them a bigger pen. Now I can release the sheep. I'm sure they'll enjoy having a slightly bigger pen. I'm also going to add red carpet on the floor. Don't be too triggered that there's stone underneath. I've been out collecting poppies and I just realised my iron golem literally gives me poppies anyway. I don't know why, uh, why I forgot that. I'm also going to collect all of this and turn it into iron blocks. It looks like the copper is already starting to go to that turquoisey colour. I'm going to break this and replace it. Does it keep it? Oh, it does keep it. Even without using silk touch, it does. But yeah, this is the downstairs of my house. There's obviously things to change here and there and improve, but I think it's a good start. But I've had enough of building up for now, so I'm going to do something else. And I think that'll be to get sharpness 5. It's taken me about five days. I haven't managed to get sharpness five. The best I've managed to get is sharpness four, which I'm just going to accept. I'm going to buy four of these books and also unbreaking three. Let's combine these on an anvil, put unbreaking three on it, and I need 26 levels to put it on my sword and 13 levels for my axe. So it's time to go mining for quartz. I can now afford to upgrade my diamond sword. Now back to mining for level 13. This should give me all the levels I need. Let's add that onto there. And now I can begin my next project, which involves going above the nether. I've now reached bedrock. I'm going to put a chest here containing ender pearls just so that whenever i come up here i've got a supply if i aim here and jump there we go we made it out i want to build another portal here because otherwise i won't be able to get back down and now i'm going to go to some coordinates where i know there's a crimson forest also the reason i can't break bedrock on this is because i have no access to tnt because i can't get sand it is possible to get sand from a wandering trader but one's never turned up so i'm not expecting anything we're now smack bang in the middle of the crimson forest this is where i'm going to build the farm and if you hadn't realized i'm going to be building a hoglin farm because i'm tired of looking for dandelions whenever i need food and the good thing is it's also extremely easy to make a hoglin farm that's the storage system sorted then i've trapped doors above these hoppers and then I can put lava on top of that and now I just need to light up this entire place and that is the build finished. I'm going to build another nether portal here and like that. That's just an emergency in case I can't get down or I need to get to the overworld quickly and right here I'm going to build up 91 blocks which is the spot where I'm going to AFK. I haven't finished building up yet but you can already see hoglins are starting to spawn and you can see the hoglins get scared of this warped fungi and eventually they run into the lava. Already I've got quite a lot of food so I'm going to finish this ladder up to the top and AFK up here for a bit to get loads of food. I've been AFK here for some time. It is still working a treat. Let's see just how much loot we've got. I also seem to have a bit of a biggling problem that's been spawning on top of my portal. Placing trapdoors should stop that. And when it comes to pork chops, I'm completely set for life. It's going to be a long time before I get through all this food. And now I can climb back up this ladder and fly back to my other portal. And when I go through this, it'll take me to the portal right by my house. And there we go. It's all linked up perfectly. Let's make the food shulker box into a yellow one. And the days of eating suspicious stew are now over. I'm going to make a quick trip to the end because I need more obstacles. Obsidian. You'll notice this portal still brings me back down here. Here's the stronghold portal. Let's go through to the end and I can get mining obsidian. And I think that is going to be enough obsidian. I mainly got it so I can make a load more ender chests. I also think I'm going to change the obsidian on the front of my house to be stone bricks. I'm also going to add flowers to this front section. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. Add some slabs over here. That just creates a nice little staircase effect. It's a real shame that copper actually changes color. I think it looks good without it changing. I'm going to see how the iron farm's doing. Another good amount of resources. I can turn those into blocks and add them to the ender chest. I think it's time I now got loads and loads of emeralds. And the way for me to do that is just to get loads of stone. My pickaxe is almost broken. I, I should probably not use it for a bit. But I did manage to fill an entire shulker box with stone. Might as well make more stone cutters. I tell you, you come to trade and they're all in bed. I'll place all of these down. And I might as well join them and get some sleep. Let's see just how many emeralds we can get. Finally, a guy who's willing to buy granite. I have to say, I got a decent amount of emeralds from that. And it completely repaired my pickaxe. With these new riches, I can now turn this top layer into emeralds. And now it's back to mining loads of stone. Whoa, we just broke into one of these things. So if I mine this with silk touch, I can actually pick it up. What about if I don't have silk touch? Okay, it just drops these little amethyst shards. Might as well grab a load of these. I must say, I love the sound breaking these makes. It's great, isn't it? Well, I better get back to mining stone. Let's put all these fancy new items in here and collect loads of free money. With all these emeralds, I'm really starting to feel rich. And I believe if I combine a shard with some copper, I get the spyglass. And now I can zoom in and look around so much easier. Who's that on my chest over there? Oh, it's just a pigman. What on earth is that sheep to me? <laughs> this is really fun. I've missed not being able to zoom all video. What a beautiful house going rusty. Hello, good sir. Anything you'd like to say to the camera? 
I'll take that as a no. I could also make tinted glass with this, which I don't really know what difference tinted glass is to normal. I guess it's kind of got that purpley color to it, hasn't it? It's kind of like black stained glass, but maybe a little bit nicer. I don't know. I think I should add some extra stuff to this house. Quartz along here on both sides. I think a quartz frame makes sense just like that. I'm going to be crazy and put block of amethyst everywhere on this wall. What do we think? Too much? You know what? I'm sticking with it. I'm going to do the same on this side. I can also craft these blocks of amethyst with the shards, which lets me finish this wall. I also found out that tinted glass lets you see through it, but it blocks all light, which is kind of useful for mob farms and mushroom farms. Amethyst cluster also make great decorational blocks. I think all that's left to do is for me to find some more. Let's head to this geode down here. And now we can get harvesting again. I found a load of small ones. I wonder if you can bone mill them. Nope, you can't do that. To make these little ones grow, they have to be placed on these budding amethyst blocks. Those two can go right there. And that means my staircase is finished. More end stones going along here. And then quartz in this shape again. In fact, just to make things look a little bit better, I've gone for more of a, like a curved shape in the corner. Let's grab a load more of these to get the place finished. And that is now all finished. There's still lots of work to be done, which I'll do at a later date. My house is still slowly rusting away. You probably didn't expect me to say this, but I need more villagers. I'd like to buy an infinity book. And the next breed of villagers is on the way. Let's also buy a few thorns. Look at this guy, he's talking to him about. What are you guys talking about? Because this bow is nearly broken, I'm going to make a new one and put infinity on that. Let's get some thorns on these leggings. And now I can collect more stones since I need XP. Because giving stone to villagers gets you a lot of XP. Let's get a load more wool from these guys. Let's give them more bread because we need more villagers still. I can collect up even more iron. In fact, I should move a lot of these iron blocks out of the ender chest and into this chest here. I'm going to put soul speed and thorns together on the same book and then hopefully get either feather falling or depth strider from one of these guys took a while but we've got depth strider three i can combine these two books together and then these two and then to put all these in my boots it's going to be 39 levels but i still want to put feather falling on this book first i'll get max armor eventually don't you worry also for this whole video i had my gamma really bright so you guys could see easier but with normal gamma this is how it would have looked it would have looked way spooky way darker but it just would not have been practical. Can you imagine if I was running about like this? It just would have been so, so dark. But now the sun has set on the final day and that was how I survived 100 dead. Oh my goodness, I'm going to get blown up by a creeper. Every single time a new day dawns, I shapeshift into a new mob. I could be a sheep, a cow, a creeper, a wither, or even a useless fish. And I have to survive 100 days on hardcore mode with all of this going on. And the mob that I must survive as for day one is going to be a silverfish. Okay, this is going to be very interesting. I, I feel very, very small. I can still gather up sticks by taking out the dead bushes. And this cow is probably absolutely terrified right now. Although I should be the one that's terrified. I'm completely tiny compared to it. The real question, can silverfish swim? Oh yeah, look at that. No problem whatsoever. So let's go ahead and grab some wood, make a crafting table and some sticks and begin work on getting better tools. The thing is, when you're this small, it's just so hard to see. Doing anything like finding caves is a bit of a nightmare down there. But we've got the stone that we need. With that, we can make a pickaxe and a couple of other tools. And for my next quest, I'm going to find some sheep. The other thing I've just realized is like, I only have four hearts. Like, look at that. Yeah, you take a bit of damage. It's it's pretty crucial you don't do that. This does look like a good cave, but I don't want to go in there until I have more food. And food has been spotted. It's a bit easier now that I've got an axe. Let's also grab more stone. Just realized that this guy, I can dive mine really easily. Now I'll make a furnace, turn it into a smoker, and start cooking my food. There's not much time left of this day, and I still haven't found any sheep. Considering I only have four hearts, I definitely want to sleep tonight. Aha! A sheep. Not just one sheep, but two sheep, three sheep. Oh, there's plenty of sheep. And some coal as well. Now I just need to get back to my crafting table, make a bed, and get some sleep. And on day number two, we're a mushroom. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Although the only issue is I am technically cooking myself. Yeah, this leather, it's, uh, it's got to go. So the way to do it is you just come up here. Hello, cow. How are you today? Yeah, love to see you. He never saw it coming. And the pigs, well, they don't stand a chance. Maybe you do. You, on the other hand, <laughs> Not so lucky. Now then, this looks like a cave with pretty good potential. Though when I said potential, I wasn't talking about creepers. Instead, the iron is what I'm after. Let's make a second furnace and get smelting. Look at this. There's some sort of dungeon ahead. It's a spider one. Hey, <laughs> you can't get out. I'll just quickly break that. And what have we got here? Hey, a golden apple. That's pretty nice. There's also loads and loads of coal in this cave, which can be used to make a few torches, which can now light things up a little bit. With this iron, let's make a new pickaxe, as well as a shield and some brand new armor. In other news, it is... Uh, <laughs> It is now raining. Thankfully, I can also go to sleep, which should end the rain. And turn me into something with two hours. A chicken? Are you kidding me? This is going to be such a hard day. Hello, fellas. <laughs> me and you aren't so different. Hang on a minute. I can float. 
I didn't know chickens could do this. At least I don't have to worry about fall damage now. I also feel like being in a cave is a very bad idea. One wrong move and I will probably just get taken out. Okay, I don't know half that. Oh, that's not too bad. In that case, I'll make a brand new axe and take out this enderman. Hey, you've never had a chicken do this to you before. Let's also make leggings as well. And now to do some exploring and see what this world has to offer. I suppose a good quest would be to find a village or maybe even some diamonds in a desert pyramid. Okay, can I actually make that? Whoa, I just floated across. And I found everything I'd ever dreamed of right here. Speaking of everything I've ever dreamed of, we are currently on a quest for 3 million subscribers. But there's a channel called Happy Kids TV Nursery Rhymes, which looks like it's going to beat me to it. So please, subscribe and help me to win this battle. Let's see what we can find here. So first of all, I can just float down. Let's get rid of the pressure plate. And so far, it's... Not looking too good. We have got some gold. Yeah, sweep in history, it might be useful later on. And silk touch, that's actually really good. I am also going to grab the saddle, and the bones could be useful for bone meal. Finally, let's grab all this TNT. We never know. And let's get out of here. The next thing I'm going to ransack is this village. They'll never see it coming. Just a lowly chicken. No, all right. I think he knows. Let's just casually steal their wheat and get out of here. Do I want to take on the golem? Yes, but I also know that if I get it wrong, he will just one hit me. So it's probably not worth it for the sake of five iron. I'll come back to that village later, but let's keep searching. And part of the search just taking me straight to iron. I think with this piece of iron here, I can now get full iron armor. It is also coming to nighttime, so let's see what mob I'm gonna be next. All right, a squid? Are you kidding me? Wait, I- oh no, I'm in a desert and I'm a squid. That's- that's gonna be a real problem. I'm gonna have to spend most of my time underwater. I think as a precautionary measure, I'm going to smelt this iron and get a bucket of water just in case I ever need it. And also get a helmet and head off into the desert. If I just touch water, yeah, absolutely fine. That's great news. And- there's an ocean ahead. Maybe shipwrecks are the way to go. I'll tell you what, squids are a lot faster than you expect them to be. What do we got on board here? Some potatoes? <laughs> Not really useful. I'll take the paper though. We have a ruined portal right here with some nice boots and quite a lot of nuggets. I've also spotted a much better looking shipwreck on board here. Lots of iron, a bit of wheat right here. And if I dig straight down, I've discovered that for some reason this shipwreck does not have a buried treasure. But on the plus side, we can make more ingots and some boots. And another day has come to a close. I no longer have to be this stupid squid. Instead, I'm a pig. Now then, up ahead, we do have an ocean monument. I'm thinking we should go and get that gold. So let's drop the render distance down to two and swim on down. Should also probably make a few doors. I feel like attempting this as a pig is a very risky idea. But who knows, maybe I'll be able to sneak in without them realizing. No, they definitely all know I'm here. Could you, could you just get out of here, please? Okay, I'm a little bit hurt, but I'm okay. If I can just mine into here, Okay, come on, come on. And I place a block. I think we're all right. I feel like it was a way bigger risk than it needed to be. I, I shouldn't have attempted that. All I have to do now is try and get out of here in one piece and I cannot fit through this gap. Oh dear, this is very bad. Let's just keep swimming. I'll dig a massive hole. Okay, it's gonna have to be bigger than that. Okay, we're all right. And now I'm just gonna swim out. I need air. Okay. Oh dear, this is very bad. They're all onto me. Okay, just keep going. <laughs> Leave the boat behind. Somehow this pig has made it out in one piece. Somehow I think it'd be better if I just stayed on land from now on. I've made it to a village. In fact, make that two villages. All right, fellas, since I'm one of you, I'm, I'm going to spend the night with you. Although don't mind me, I'm a bit more civilized than I, uh, I sleep in a bed. No, you can't sleep in it. And the next mob we're going to be... Oh, we're a village. Oh, this is perfect. All right, guys. Now I just have to blend in. Huh, 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 huh. Huh. Yeah, you, you take this. I don't really speak village. You don't want it, do you? No, I'll keep it. All right, act natural. Huh. And now I steal all of your diamonds. Eh, eh, eh. And that's a pretty good signal to get out of here. Man, I'm a, I'm a really evil villager. Now, do you know what the one thing better than being a villager is? Being a villager on a horse. There we go. We're now best friends forever. Let's put a saddle on. Oh, look at this. This is what life is all about. Hello, average villagers. Yes, <laughs> I am on another level to you. I have a horse. You guys, yeah, that's it. All gather around. You're all, you're all useless. Peasants is probably the word. Yeah, I don't live with those kind. I... I go solo. This is a little awkward, but I'm, uh, I'm going on a journey now. Do you, do you mind if I just leave my horse right here? Keep an eye on him for me, farmer, because this villager is about to sail the seven seas. This is definitely one for the album. Now then, the treacherous jungle. Let's see what we can find. A parrot. Wait, can I really get a parrot? If I can get seeds, I would anyway. There we go. Let's feed you. Oh, I did not mean to hit you. I'm so sorry. Just please accept this seed as a gift. Try if I feed him enough seeds, eventually he has to say yes. There we go. Now then, apparently he's on my shoulder. I don't know where he went. He's just disappeared completely. I guess when you're a villager, you just can't have him on your shoulder. And speaking of being a villager, I think my day of this has come to an end. And instead, I'm a panda. Whoa, this is very fitting. You don't recognize me now. Yeah, I am your master. I don't know where the, yeah, the parrot just always disappears. Yeah, you can, you can stay. You know what? I would love to take you along for the journey, but you're just going to be a... You know, you can come out. It's like, I'm not going to be nasty. Well, let's see what life is like for a panda in a jungle. I see lots of bamboo. Perhaps that is the place that I shall find my brethren. Man, life as a panda is pretty annoying because you're so big, it's hard to fit through gaps. So far, the only signs of life 
chickens. I don't really want to have to say this, but I think I'm the last panda. I, I, I truly am an endangered species. Hold on. Never mind. It's just a stupid sheep. Well, there you have it, guys. Once I sleep tonight, pandas will be extinct. And if I don't make this jump, they'll be extinct. Should probably gather up more iron because I do want to make an anvil. I've also realized not being able to get through a gap like this is very annoying. Instead, you've got to kind of mine your way down. And you know what? Since I have three diamonds, why don't we make a few sticks out of bamboo and upgrade to a diamond pickaxe? See you later, iron one. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that pandas are not the best mob to go mining. You just end up getting stuck every two seconds. Although the sun is now going down, so say goodbye to the last of the pandas. And instead, I am a huglin. And I... I don't look too, uh, too good in this. I guess I'm just cold. Oh, I, I guess I wasn't the last of the pandas after all. There was one panda left. And look at this. We've got a desert pyramid. We've got a blacksmith. We've got a full village. In fact, make that two blacksmiths. What a great find this is. You know what? Yeah, I, uh, it looks pretty surprised to see me, doesn't it? Yeah, just, just keep walking, mate. Plenty of iron and gold to steal. And the same thing at this one. I'm also going to have to be extremely careful that I don't blow myself up at this one. Okay, parrot, if you... Do not step on that pressure plate. That is an order. Sooner I break it, the better. There we go. And some nice loot. Now let's try and get out of here. I'm sorry, Parrot, but, you know, at first it was fun, but now you, you live in this village. Instead, I need to get somewhere where I feel a little bit more climatized. And to do that, I'm going to need lava. Now let's quickly build a portal. There we go. I also need gravel to get flint. Then I can go through the portal. Here we are. We <laughs> spawned straight in a fortress. Yes, I kept the Frostlands pack as well because I just think it looks so, so cool. Now the real question is how do these hoglins feel around me? Am I one of them? Look at this. We're, we're cohabitating. What a magical moment. What if I, what if I hit one of them? Okay, uh, do they all get angry? No, look, these guys attack me. Guys, do something. He's, he's just grumpy. All right, well, that's enough of upsetting everybody. I'll come back here when I'm a mob that's got fire resistance. In the meantime, I'm going to get some sleep and become an axolotl. Oh, my goodness. Well, yeah, we, we definitely don't want to go there, do we? I don't think I'm going to have to worry about water too much, so that's good. And I am probably the perfect size now to go caving. Let's take a risk and, and dig straight down. I've made it low enough. I also hear some sort of cave. Oh, we found lava. And it opens up to a cave. Perfect. I'm not sure if it was some glitch because this does not look like a cave to me. Instead, I'm going to keep mining. I call this one one axolotl mining and this time we have come to a cave and it's connected to a mine shaft look at that me brethren wait 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 hold on can i actually do this hi guys um okay, i missed i'm putting i have an axolotl and i put an axolotl in a bucket okay that's that should be illegal but it's amazing now i've got a friend for life that can never escape speaking of friends for life we've got a glow squid whoa, whoa hold on no we don't want to see you die that's it. You get in there. That's it. You come back. I should probably forget about the wildlife and just try and find diamonds. No success. So we're going to go back to axolotl mining. And there we have it. The first of the diamonds. How many is it going to be? <laughs> just one. Oh, no, it's two, actually. <laughs> it's because I'm so small. I can't see. <laughs> okay, well, there's two, there's three. Oh, there's loads. Is this what it's like to be a small person in real life? I'm not sure if it's nighttime. Let's see if I can get some sleep. And today, we're an ocelot. Okay, that's actually really good because we're still a very small mob. So now we could instead do ocelot mining. Okay, I just found more damage. I didn't even realize. And it looks like it's going to be eight. That's perfect. Ten more and I can make full armor. Some more damage. That's great. I don't know if it's because I'm able to dive mine like as a cat that's so good for this. But I seem to be finding damage really fast. I've got 20 already. And more. Look at that. Okay, please be more than two. It was only two. But hey, it's the right direction. Another cave and there's lapis here. I, I could use the trick from the lapis. We're going to dig four blocks in this direction. And if I dig down and I've done it right, <laughs> I should get diamonds. Well, unfortunately, it didn't work this time. But there is more lapis right here. Why don't we try this? I guess this is one of those seeds where that trick doesn't work. On a side note, I should probably grab the lapis and get back to diamond hunting the old-fashioned way. This is also a good opportunity to get another ender pearl. This situation is when the ocelot fights back. And now that I'm no longer an axolotl, I, I should release this guy. I'm telling you now, this is an amazing looking cave. If there's not diamonds here, then something is wrong. Might as well get some sleep. And the next mob? Oh, I'm a, I'm a piglin brute. Oh, I, 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 okay, I need to get out of here. I have so much health that this will be perfect for me getting all the blaze rods. Now, I just have to try and remember where I put that portal. In the meantime, I'd like to check out this place. Would you look at that connected right to a mob spawner with a golden apple in the chest. Now then, hopefully I'm safe dropping down here. I'm going to quickly break that. And we've got diamonds. Okay, yeah, we've got enough for armor now. So I'm going to discard all of this and craft some of these. And there we go. Full diamond armor. Plus I can also make a diamond sword, which is nice. Now back to the mission to find the portal. Okay, perfect. I've found it. Before we go in, let's make some bread and then make sure that we have the maximum amount of health. All right, here we are. And here are the blaze. Oh my goodness. Okay, I just got knocked off and... um. I just did a great save. Hey, friend. Uh, fancy helping a brother out? I think mining back up inside is probably my best bet. I'll have to be a little bit more careful in future. And 13 blaze rods should be enough. Now I want to get out of here and see how the piglin react. Hello, fellas. Okay, this is, um... This is very weird indeed. You just can't make your mind up. What if I hit you? 
<laughs> you still can't make your mind up. You guys are useless and also extremely, extremely noisy. Whether or not I'll be returning to this place depends what happens after I sleep. And I have become a fox. Yeah, I, I feel like going there is not a good idea as a fox. But hey, now, um, <laughs> well, I quite like chickens. Although they do not seem remotely scared of me. Oh, I forgot I can... I can hold things in my mouth, that's so cool. Whilst I'm in this foxy state, I think I should look for a place to set up a base. And a desert is not going to be my ideal location. You know what, I, I quite like this area. We've got mountains in the background. Yes, it's raining, but this is the spot I'm going to build it. And for now, it's going to be a pretty basic thing made out of cobblestone. This is my humble abode so far, but I'm going to need more of those bricks. Turns out I also live pretty close to a village. That's kind of useful, although it's not what I'm looking for right now. Let's head through the portal and carefully mine up these bricks. Two stacks should be enough. And now it is dark, so I'm going to get some sleep. And I have become a dolphin. That's a, it's a slight problem because I only have a limited amount of time that I can be out of the water. So every now and again, I just have to douse myself in water to get my air back. But the good news is my house can now be finished and the rain is stopping and the sun's coming out. Let's also fill up the walls and next I'm going to go over here grab some sand and turn it into glass and I can make those into glass panes and create my windows and finally the sun is going down which means I don't have to be this dolphin that needs water every two seconds what have I become today I am a I'm a vex I have no face but hey, can I go through walls oh that would have been cool if I'd have gone through walls that would have been amazing oh but I can fly hold on Oh my goodness this is amazing this is so so useful I'm gonna drop off my water grab a bit of lava, and I can fly around in search of a bastion. This is pretty crazy. I, just, I feel like I'm cheating, but that's what you get when you're a vex in Minecraft. Well, I've been to every biome and discovered another fortress. Finally, I have found a bastion. Okay, right, we, we can actually just go straight to the top. Now, do these guys actually get mad at me? I, I don't think so. I'm one of them. Yeah, he, like, he kind of wants to be mad at me, but he just knows that he can't. So that's, that's really useful. Now, if I open a chest, will they now get upset? Look at them, they just don't care. And that is sharpness five. That's pretty good. And I'm breaking three. And we got some ancient debris. Perfect. Some very nice finds indeed. I sort of love this challenge so much. I'm just one of them. I am curious to see if mining the gold blocks will actually help me. Since the piglins don't really seem to get attracted to me. Seems like they just make a lot of noise and nothing happens. Well, I'm definitely happy with that then. There's even more gold right here that can be stolen right under this fella's nose. Not much else to do now other than just to get trading. Nice to get 12 pearls from that. And okay, I have, um, I've had the identity removed. But it's not giving me a new one. It is now a new day. I guess becoming a player is one of the possible morphs. Looks like we're going to be making the journey on foot. It's a good thing I didn't become something like a fish. Otherwise, I definitely would have struggled to survive. I wonder if there's anything good in this chest. I am going to take the flint and steel just in case I end up needing it. I have to make sure I don't mess up this speed bridging. I don't fancy falling in that lava. I've come to a bit of a dead end. So instead, I'm going to make a portal and head on through. It is night time. So if I chop down a tree and craft a bed, hopefully I shapeshift into something a little bit faster. Are you kidding me? I shapeshifted into a dolphin. Okay, let's just get into some water. Yeah, <laughs> we're definitely going to be uh, be doing a bit of travelling like this. The lava can go. We're going to need a bucket. In a way, it's a good thing I made a portal and came through. Otherwise, I don't think I'd have survived. Since I'm in a swamp, I might as well grab some diamonds. Okay, I can't fit down a one block gap, so uh, forget it. Finally, an ocean. This is where I can really excel. We've got a shipwreck down here with iron and also emeralds. Let's also get this treasure map and see where it leads. This looks like the spot to me. Let's mine the sand and grab the good stuff, which includes an extra diamond. And now I'm going to sleep and see what I become. A bear. I am a polar bear. I thought polar bears could swim really fast, but I I guess not this one, but on the positive side, I do now have loads and loads of health. I'm going to make another portal to try and speed up the journey. And now I've only got to travel 400 blocks, so I guess it was a good plan. And now we're back at the fortress, and here is my portal. Time to sleep again, and I've become a fish. Are you kidding me? I have two hearts, and I have to stay in water for most of the time. If you ever feel useless in life, just remember it could be much worse. You could be playing as a fish in Minecraft. I really do not know what to do today. Yes, I could do a little digging on my house, and create myself my own little fish tank. And then I can place glass on top of it use a bit of bone meal collect up a fish in a bucket yeah that's that's a weird thing and now me and my new friend can happily live together in this tank life as a fish isn't it amazing not really i can't wait to become something new and that new thing is an elder guardian that's oh no hold on a second i'm drowning wait i need to get in here um why can't i get in quick oh that was close that was very close indeed i'm only on one hat it's you and me, fishy. I have to say, it's slightly annoying I can't even fit through the door. Maybe I can try and use boats. Nope, I messed that up. It's clear that living here just isn't for me. It said I need to find an ocean so I can really enjoy life. But something tells me a desert is not a good place for that. Looks like we found another desert pyramid. Although getting in is going to be a bit of a challenge. And not activating that pressure plate is also going to be a challenge. I'm going to slowly work my way down and make sure to break that. Look at that, we got some diamonds, emeralds and a golden apple. And that's about it, really. I am also going to grab the TNT. That's definitely a job well done. Now I'm thinking it could be a good idea to try and get mending. But I don't want to intimidate these poor villagers. Look at me. <laughs> Doesn't look too happy. In fact, I think it's time I took on a golem. You know, guardian versus golem. 
Who will win? Oh, look at this. You do basically... Okay, you do a lot of that. Okay, you know what? We know the answer now. The, the, the golem would win. Instead, I'm going to come to this village where I'm a little bit more welcome. And this one does have what I'm looking for. Some books. Not only books, but also a lectern. I am also pretty much out of food, so I'm going to grab a load of hay. Another day is over. I cannot wait to go to the next mob. And that is going to be... Oh, a ravager. Yeah, what's that, villagers? You thought I liked you? Oh, you're all wrong. Get out of here. That's it. Yeah, I'm here to trample all your crops. And I also have unfinished business at this village. Yes, this time things will be different against the golem because I am an all-powerful ravager. Okay, you know what? They're not the... Oh my goodness, I'm on one and a half hearts. I've never been more wrong about something in my entire life. I'll even have a golden apple. And then I'm going to go back for round two. Only this time I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Mission accomplished. Golem defeated. I am now a successful ravager. And my first thing, I'm going to remove your job site block. And instead you can serve me and become a librarian. He really doesn't like me at all, does he? I also don't have anywhere near enough emeralds for this. I should probably do more pillaging first. Look at this, more bookshelves to steal. And a lectern. All I need to do now is find a village that doesn't completely hate me. And every villager I get near just runs away from me. I, I, I don't like this. At least this golem doesn't really care. Might as well actually give them something to be upset about. Let's steal their gold. And now the villagers need not fear anymore because I'm about to sleep. And what have I become? Another fish? Yeah, you guys definitely don't need to fear me anymore. Let me, uh, let me, whoa, your price has gone up. I'm finding a new village. To do that, I'm going to swim in the river. I'll tell you, if I end up dying on this challenge, it's going to be because I was a fish. Life really isn't easy as one of these fellas. Found another shipwreck with a lot of iron. I'm very glad to say that this day is ending. My days of being a fish are over. Oh, and I'm a vex again? That's the best news I've had all day. I think the best thing I can do now is create a brand new diamond axe, make some blaze powder and some eyes of ender, and go in search of the stronghold, which is going to be a lot faster since I can fly. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've already found it. If I just throw this one, I'm pretty sure the stronghold is right here. So I'm going to dig down and find that portal. And here it is, the stronghold. I'm just going to put a bucket of water right there and then build up a bit of a giant tower. And I can go back to that later when I'm a mob that's got a little bit more health. And it appears that a couple of spiders have moved into my house. So I'm sleeping outside and I've become <laughs> an endermite. I think if I do this... Yeah, I can teleport, but I'm definitely glad I'm not fighting the Ender Dragon like this. Now to grab a little bit more sand and to set it off smelting. I also want to dig all the way down to bedrock so that I can grab some of this deep slate. Oh, and I just found some diamonds. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. I know I always say diamonds are for peasants, but right now I am a peasant. And the real question is, can I teleport up and out of here? Okay, well, oh my goodness. Wait. I'm one of them. Perfectly blended into a cave of five creepers. Now I'm going to make this deep slate polished deep slate. And from there, deep slate bricks. And these will be used for the floor. Since my shovel broke, I might as well make a diamond one. And all this has made me realise is that I don't have anywhere near enough deep slate. But it is now dark, so let's sleep. And we have become an enderman. Oh, this... This is the perfect time. The perfect time to grab some arrows, craft a bow, teleport out of the house because I'm slightly stuck, and to then head to the stronghold. Also, apparently, endermen do get damaged in water. I've also just realised this makes navigating a lot harder than it should be. Thankfully, I can kind of teleport, which does help. And here we are, the end portal. It's actually one of the easiest ones to find ever. And these selfish do not care. <laughs> I'm one of them. There's also three eyes. That's incredibly good. In other news, I apparently forgot to bring the blaze powder. I'll be right back. Being able to teleport is actually very, very helpful. It makes traveling a lot faster. Let's grab a blaze rod, create another eye vendor, and head back to the stronghold. And it looks like it's time to sleep once again. A shulk. <laughs> This is brilliant. The dragon will never see it coming. What's that? Somebody's looking in my direction. What? what? No, I'm just a, a shulker box. Now then, can I actually fit down this hole? A apparently not quite. Oh, there we go. We've done it. And we land in the water. All right, dragon, prepare to meet your maker. It'd be interesting to see if it actually attacks me in any way. An, an enderman. Like, can I can I look at enderman? Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it doesn't even know that I'm looking at him. He has no idea. And I also don't think the dragon cares, so we can we can just take out the towers, no problem. All right, never mind. It, it does know. The towers are disappearing nicely. Just got this one, and then the two ones that are in cages. Now they're all destroyed. Let's deal with the dragon. I have to say, I bet the dragon didn't expect this, did it? You know, a shulker coming from nowhere to take him out. Or should I say her? The dragon is definitely a sheep. Okay, well now I'm I'm too small. Okay, hopefully the dragon doesn't bonk me up in the air. Although it would be kind of cool to see what that's like. It's getting very, very low now. I'm gonna jump and see what happens. Okay, this is what happens. I've got an MLG as a shulker and oh look at that. Nailed it. No problem whatsoever. And now to finish the job. I think I'm just one shot away. There we go, I was. And there we have it. Let's gather up all the glorious XP as well as hit the egg and take it home with me. I also made the mistake of not setting spawn so I... I've gone through the portal and ended up in the middle of nowhere. I really hope that by sleeping, I will turn into a mob that can fly. Okay, I, I don't know what am I, a magma cube? Uh, that's very useless. Looks like I'm making the journey on foot. Also, magma cubes don't take fall damage. That's pretty useful. But on the flip side, they only have half a heart of health. As you can see, guys, I have um, I have morphed into a boat. Yeah, life is a magma cube in a boat. It, it doesn't really work. You, you're actually, <laughs> you actually kind of drown when you're in it as well. It's um, It's very strange.
The health is also completely bugged. You're either at full health or half a heart and, and, and it can't really work it out. And here we are, home sweet home. And today I have become, oh, an illusioner. I don't really know what this means for me, but at least I'm not really small anymore. I think this could be a good opportunity to first make a door. That looks a lot better. And now I need to get a load more deep slate, which means heading back down underground. I know things like this are kind of risky, but you know. <laughs> You gotta live a little. I found some tough and I've found the deep slate. And a stack is gonna be enough. And now this can be finished. The dragon egg can go on there. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this house. Now I'm gonna head over in this direction and mine up a couple of pieces of obsidian. And with that, I can craft an ender chest. And it's also time to sleep. And I have become a rabbit. Are you kidding me? I have one and a half hearts and I'm absolutely tiny. But don't worry, I have a plan. I'm gonna grab these lecterns, the books and the emeralds, as well as the hay bales, and head to this village. From there, I can fix the flooding issue that they... <laughs> They seem to have. Block this guy in here and time to get a mending book. I've also just realized that before I do that, I should probably get some more emeralds, which I can do by trading with a farmer. I got it. <laughs> that was so quick. I, I did not expect that. This guy refuses to buy more wheat. So instead, I'll craft another composter and trade with this villager. One, two, three. And now I have a mending book. Perfect. What I do next really depends on what mob I become. A slime. Okay, yeah, not much else. I think I'll just do some more villager trading and hay bale stealing. This is a little bit risky with just half a heart, but I'm going to head to the stronghold and go searching for bookcases. This is what I was after. We've also got a chest here that has paper and an efficiency for book. That's great. I've ransacked this room. Let's try and find the other one. There we go. We've found it. Although it is looking a little bit worse for wear. This chest has another pretty good book and so does this one. Now the fastest way for me to get back home is probably through the end since it's going to take me straight back to my bed and then I can, I can go to sleep and I've become a llama. Yeah, I, I really wanted to be a llama. I can't even fit through my front door. Now let's start mining some wood and also more obsidian. Now let's grab two diamonds, craft this, and we're also going to need a load of bookshelves. And then I can upgrade my equipment, which is also going to require a load of lapis. Another thing I'd like to do is create an anvil. And then I can add mending to this pickaxe. And if I put these together, I can actually completely max it out. In other news, it is night, so let's sleep. And I have become... I've become a wolf. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at that. I can sit. I can, <laughs> I can be sat down. You know, I don't know why I like that so much. I guess deep down, playing as a wolf is everybody's dream. I'm also going to make a grindstone so that I can remove unbreaking from this pickaxe. And I tried to get something else on it, but <laughs> I just got unbreaking three again. Next, I want to get loads and loads of XP. And I feel like an enderman farm could be the way to do it. I'm also going to have to mine up a load of quartz to mend my pickaxe. Healed my pickaxe a bit, but I'm, I'm kind of tired of this place. There's too many dangerous things around. Let's see what our next mob is. Oh man, we're a vindicator. All of a sudden, I feel a bit more powerful. Powerful enough to continue collecting quartz. My pickaxe is almost fully repaired, but more importantly, I now have loads and loads of blocks. Hopefully this will be enough blocks to at least make a start on the Enderman farm. This project is also going to need a bucket and some shears and to sleep. And today we're something small. Oh, we're a spider. You know what? I can live with that. How cool is this? I can climb walls. And oh my goodness, those, those legs just look so creepy. Here we are at the end portal. Let's dig a tunnel in this direction. Then we can add the lava and then add the water. I'm not sure how this next bit is going to work as a spider, but I'm going to carefully float down. Place a ladder there. There we go. It's all working perfectly. I am slowly drowning, but I'm not risking anything. I do still need a lot more ladders, but I'm just going to focus on building the platform, which is pretty terrifying because I haven't got any elytra. I've also morphed into the next mob. I am now an evoker. She's going to make building this a lot easier. Built the first platform and now I'm building the second one. And from here, I'm going to build a long chamber upwards, which is one of the reasons why I needed all those blocks. And now that's the chamber done. We can also extend this platform. I've now run out of blocks. So I'm going to carefully float down and go and get some more. Well, I've, I've now turned into a cow. You know what? That's not too bad. I'm pretty sure I can manage like this. I'm not going to make more wool. We're going to create a load of carpets. And I'm going to be the mysterious cow that goes around shearing sheep. Yeah, I'm not like the other cows that just stand around and do nothing all day. No, I'm actually going out there and making a living for myself. I'm also going to need to collect up more wood and also a load more blocks. And this day as a cow has now come to an end and I have become a guardian. <laughs> I don't think that's a good thing, mainly because I'm going to need water every two seconds in order to breathe. So it's probably best that I don't return to the end just yet to do any building, which is just as well since I do still need to get hold of a name tag. And the best way to do that is to get loads of emeralds and trade with this guy, even if it could take a while. I've chopped a lot of trees, traded for loads of emeralds, and finally unlocked the name tag trade. I'm just waiting for him to restock so I can sell him more books and get more emeralds. And right now I'm a turtle. It's a, it's an interesting mob to be. I definitely feel a lot better when I'm in water. There we go. We can now give him more books and buy the name tag. And before I finish the farm, I also want to grab a bit more wood so that I can make myself some hoppers. Now let's grab all these blocks, get some sleep, and head to the stronghold. In other news, I am... 
I'm now a horse, and now I can continue with the building. And there we go, the platform is finished. I need to completely forget to bring the trap doors though, so I'm going back for them. I can't be bothered to dig this to be too wide, so I'm instead going to end a pearl out. Whilst I'm here, I will need more ender pearls to complete this farm, so I might as well get some more. Another day has begun and I'm <laughs> an enderman again. You know, I, I kind of feel evil doing this. I'm, I'm meant to be one of them. But we're going to add trap doors along here, and then three blocks in the middle. So right here is the place that the endermite is going to go. Now then, five ender pearls, let's see if we get one. And the answer was no. So now I'm going to have to be even more evil. I'd like to apologize to you, my brethren. Five more pearls, still no success. Just while I was still trying to get the endermite, I have... Uh... <laughs> I have changed into a bat. And that, well, that gives me a brand new plan. Plan to head through the end gateway and go in search of an end city. I have also run out of food, so it looks like it's going to be chorus fruit for me. I have no idea what happens if you eat one of these as a bat. Okay, just teleport you to the ground. And the first end city is coming into view. Also, it seems that bats have night vision, which is pretty interesting. But let's see what this place has got. Also, apparently, yeah, shulkers don't seem to like me. Bit of gold and more gold. And I think these boots will be useful in some way. Now for this building, which I'm going to be very quick. Just grab the things and get out. The loot is over okay there but could be better but now for the real prize first of all i've got to deal with this shulker and now i have the elytra and more diamonds and gold and a couple of pickaxes never hurt anybody now what happens if you're a bat <laughs> which can already fly and you're wearing elytra is it possible for me to like i think i'm gliding yeah i am oh I am. i'm a bat using the elytra and i can just fly as well. And since the elytra are a bit faster than flying, this is a pretty good way to do it. Another end city over here. Although this one is very small, I don't even think it has any loot. Talk about massive scams, that's just unacceptable. Another end city spotted. Let's remember to grab the dragon head this time. I feel like I ended up bringing too many items with me because my inventory is very full. I'm only going to grab stuff if I think they're going to be really, really useful. Such as all this iron. I'm going to try and get a couple of shulker shells because a shulker box is just always going to be useful. That's the first one. And now I also have a second one, which can be turned into a shulker box, which can then hold a load of this loot. I think that's a pretty successful journey. Now, I've just got to find this end gateway. Here it is. I'm curious to see, do bats take ender pearl damage? Okay, let's not do that again. Now that I've got a light tram, might as well work on getting some firework rockets. And it is night time, so I'm going to get some sleep. And what have I become? A horse again? You better brace yourself for what's about to happen next. If I take out this creeper and grab its gunpowder, combine it with paper, do something like this. Yes, I am a flying horse. That is correct, guys. Okay. You've probably never seen anything like it. And I should be able to get even more gunpowder from here. Yep, look at that. The chests are full of it. And that is going to be perfect. Now it's time for me to get serious and get all the ender pearls I need. I admit this is slightly a risky strategy, but it'll be worth it in the end. Okay, 27 pearls has to be enough. I don't know how else it's going to work because, yeah, I'm, <laughs> as a horse, I'm, I'm too big. Oh, that's not good, is it? Okay, we finally, we finally got one. My goodness. Okay, um, I have to name tag you. Okay, yes, you are the Enderman's dinner. And just, will you get into the stupid uh, minecart, please, Endermite? I'm definitely the wrong mob for this, but there we go. He finally walked in. Now I've got to try and push. There we go. I managed to push him along, I think. And if I break it all, he's down there with a the carpet on top. This was way too stressful. And I have become a chicken. Okay, well, you know what? That makes life a lot easier. Because I can now just float down here without a care in the world. And I also need to change all of this to be double carpets. There we go. This is all carpeted. Now I just need to do something so that all these endermen aren't falling to their death. Which is to place hoppers along here. And with that, I can get lots of XP very, very fast. And from that, I've got over 54 levels. And <laughs> you may think that chickens can't fly. But all I say... It's think again. It is also time to sleep and become something that needs water. Oh, my stupid fish. Hey, buddy, I'm, <laughs> I'm one of you. Since there's not much else for me to do, I'm going to take the grindstone and attempt to get fire aspect on this sword. To make sure I don't die, I'm going to give myself a few extra hearts with a, a golden apple. Realize the best strategy is to just place the water right here and just, and just chill like this. Managed to get loot in three on one and sharpness four on another. So I'm going to make a third diamond sword. And this is the one that should get fire aspect. And there we go, fire aspect. Now to take to the anvil and create a pretty powerful sword. And these animals had better watch out because a killer fish is about. And yes, the fire is blue. I, I can't be bothered to explain why. I don't think I've been to that desert pyramid. So I'm going to take the river and see what it's all about. So with great care, I'm going to dig down and see what it has to offer. Aqua affinity. You know what? That's useful. And another saddle since I, I lost my other horse. And finally, the TNT. And now for the real thing that you all want to see. Yes, a flying fish. It's, it's actually a real thing as a flying fish. And now it can be found in Minecraft as well. Well, I'm glad to say that another fish day is finally over. And instead, oh, we're a creeper. It's possible you don't know the power the creeper possesses, but... Uh, well, now you do. Yes, nothing can survive a flying creeper. That includes these Endermen. I just chill here and blow up every few seconds. And look at that, I have made it to 50 levels. I have to say, I enjoyed being a creeper, but the day is now over. And we are now... Oh my goodness, we're a phantom? I guess there's only one thing you want to do when you're a phantom. And that 
is to track down Pigster. Look at that, I've already found a Bastion, and it's got so, so much gold for me to take. I can also very carefully go up here and search the chests. We've got here a golden apple block of gold, nice. But no sign of Pigstep. Here we have the lodestone and some ancient debris and netherite scrap, but ultimately I'm going to have to keep searching if I want to find the Pigstep. Here's Bastion number two with lots more gold, more netherite scrap, a second lodestone, and very unfortunately, no sign of Pigstep. And since this day is nearly over, I'm going to fly back home. The last thing I'd want is to get stranded in here again. And for day 48, I'm going to become a strider. The only thing I want to know about this fella is can he walk on lava? And I have to say, there really is only one way to find out. Oh, he can. Oh my goodness, and look at the speed of this guy. Although after being able to fly around as a phantom, it's it's just not the same, is it? Now, the next thing on my list of things to do is to take this ancient debris and to smelt it, then combine it with four pieces of gold, make a smithing table, and get myself a netherite chest plate. Slowly but surely, I'm becoming less and less of a peasant. Now, what I think I should do now is do a bit of exploring and try and get more lapis, because I have more or less run out of it. This cave is kind of looking good, but it, it's kind of come to some dead end. Okay, well, that was a, a bit of a worrying situation. Look at this, an amethyst geode, and it's, it's home to some creepers, apparently. You guys blow up, see if I care. I'm more bothered about tracking down the lapis. Look at the size of these dripstones, that's what they're all about. Look at this, we've got an invisible spider on me. I never found it so difficult just to find a bit of lapis. There is a bit of redstone here, might as well grab it, might come in handy. And we found a mine shaft. Might regret this, but I'm going to sleep anyway, <laughs> see what I become. And it is... What, another stride? That, that's not part of the script. Okay, well, I found diamonds. Still no lapis. I think it's possible to use diamonds to sometimes find lapis. Just not on this seed, apparently. Finally, okay, we have got some. And that's going to be all the lapis you need, because I have got Fortune 3. 38 pieces, I'm happy with that. Perfect, even more. Definitely the perfect time for me to head back home. And here we are, back at the surface. Now I just have to try and remember which way home is. There it is. Let's drop off the lapis, craft a sign, and some yellow dye. Then right, SB's house. We're then going to change it to yellow. Then we're going to use glow ink. Oh, it looks amazing. And on that note, I can get some sleep. And turn in... <laughs> creep around too. I'm going to create another anvil. I'm going to add aqua affinity to this helmet and then put these together since this one's pretty much broken. And if I can now take this lectern and get a villager to sell me thorns, then it'll be perfect. Straight off the bat, I got prop four. That's uh, probably going to be quite useful. So let's get more emeralds from this guy and buy a couple of these books. Although I'm going to need two more emeralds if I want to afford more. And I know just the guy to give them to me. He actually wasn't very helpful, so instead I'm going to do it with sticks. These are for you and these are for you. Now I can add this to my leggings and get some sleep. Look at me, I'm a piglin and I can actually fly and everything. Okay, well, the wings are a little bit strange. Now, it seems that my next issue is every single villager has a job. So to solve this, I'm going to pick up some wheat, chop down a tree, and that can be used to make more beds, which in turn will let me get more villagers. And in the meantime, I'm going to give these guys a bit of bread. And the next thing I need to do is sort out this problem of me having diamond armor and instead get netherite, which means searching for ancient debris. But before I do that, I'm going to take the opportunity to get more wool and more wood. And speaking of beds, it's time to sleep. And I've become... A llama! And all this wool will be used for crafting beds. Now I've just got to dig a downwards tunnel, which ideally does not involve going through lava. I'm at the right level, so let's just do a bit of mining, and I'll begin by lining it up with TNT. Let's see if we get any ancient debris from this. As it happens, I made the TNT too far apart. Now we've got a bit of a chain going, and we've got ancient debris already. Perfect. Might as well use up these last few pieces now, but unfortunately no success with that. So it's time for plan B and to use some beds, which is a pretty easy task. You just do something like that. And there we go, more ancient debris. And three more. Perfect. This is the last bed that I'm going to use. And we didn't get anything. I'm now going to make a portal and then sleep. And the reason I'm doing it this way is just in case I become something like a fish. Okay, I, well, I, apparently I became an iron golem. Um, <laughs> the day transition must have, must have just happened. That is going to make life a lot harder for me because I need to make a massive tunnel. Although I do suppose massive tunnels are useful for finding ancient debris. Like, look at that, I just found some more right now. And even more. Once again, we're getting close to a new day, so I better make another portal and get some sleep. You know, that worked out very, very well indeed because... <laughs> I'm a fish again. Although because I have respiration on my helmet, I can breathe a lot longer without water. Although regardless of that, I am going to fly home. Oh, and my elytra have broken. I knew I should have put mending on them. I'm still waiting for the day when I become the ender dragon. Then that really will be something special. Well, this is good news. A village. Hang on a minute. It's not just any village. It's my parrot. I thought I'd never see him again, but here we are. And my plan to get more villagers is clearly working. So that's a bit of good news. And welcome parrot to my house, okay? You, you can't sit on me, I'm afraid. I'm a fish. It doesn't don't work like that. You can be right here. Yep, my uh, <laughs> my fellow salmon is in here. I can smelt this ancient debris, then make the ingots. And with that, I've upgraded my leggings and my helmet. And on that note, it is now time to get some sleep. Or have I become a snow golem? Okay, 
This could be good or it could be bad. The good thing is that I can shoot snowballs at things. But the question is, can I survive in a desert? I, I can't. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep out of there. Does the same thing go for a savannah? Yeah, okay. I'm very limited by where I can go. To put it simply, I <laughs> pretty much can't leave my house. So whilst I'm stuck at home, I'm going to put that over my door. And I'm going to do a bit of classic farming with water in here like this. And then I'll till all of this ground and plant lots of seeds. And there we are. Every slot is filled. I'm going to be honest, guys. I am kind of glad that this snow golem day is coming to an end. I don't really like the idea of not being able to leave this area. And now I have become a dog. You know, I'm happy with that. I also have a brand new Elytra here, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on. And I'm going to go to the Enderman farm, get more levels, and also mend this pickaxe. And here we are, just where I want to be. So guys, I was just happily gathering XP at my Enderman farm. I then became a new mob as the day changed, and <laughs> we have become the dragon. So yeah, we're a pretty big creature. Now the question is, can I actually get back out of here? I'm thinking, throwing an ender pearl. There we go. Alrighty, we are we are home. Let's throw away a bunch of ender pearls. And I'm going to try flying using my elytra because I think it's a bit quicker. I can also shoot fireballs whenever I want, as you can see. Well, they're actually dragon's breath. And I can completely terrorize villagers. I mean, look, I can throw a dragon's breath fireball. And it, look at that, it is... Uh, well, it's kind of hurting those horses. But my main quest is to track down a pillager outpost. These things are pretty rare, but this is probably my best chance of finding one. Oh my goodness, look at that, we have found one. What a great opportunity this is to get a totem. I just need to first fly upwards and allow a pillager captain to spawn. One has been spotted. Let me send down a fireball. I actually missed it. It's more of a dragon's breath ball. Can I... They're very difficult to hit. I look at them all gathering round. Oh, you really think you can take me on? You puny pillagers really think you can defeat me? You guys are, are very, very much mistaken. And we've taken him out now. Look at them all falling. They, they can't handle a dragon. And it's quite a sad sight to see that the sun is going down. Sometimes I wish I could be a dragon all the time. Regardless of that, I think it's going to be a good idea to try and get some sleep. Although, <laughs> with creepers here, that could be a chance. I, I can't even place down a bed. Looks like that answers that question and I, <laughs> I won't be getting any sleep. So I might as well start a raid. Oh my goodness. A dragon versus a raid. That is such a cool thing. It's a pretty big task using dragon's breath to defeat them. But there we go. The first wave is down. And look at that. I have defeated an evoke. Okay. Look at that, they just don't stand a chance against me. It would also seem that the raid was apparently lost to me <laughs> because all the villagers have gone. Well, that was an unsuccessful experience. I'm going to head back and find another pillager captain and take him out instead. And the new day is just beginning and I've become a cave spider. Okay, that's uh, very interesting. Fortunately, it doesn't look like any of them dropped a totem of undying. But I guess I'll be able to get one in the next raid. I feel like doing a raid on this village isn't a good idea because it's the one that I'm trading with. I also don't know what I did with my boots, so I'm going to go and put these ones on. And this village looks ideal to me. Here we go, it's starting. Oh my god. This is a thunderstorm as well. This is uh, this is not boding very well. I wonder if I can sleep through the storm. I did sleep through the storm, but I, <laughs> I've become a parrot. All of a sudden, this raid now got interesting. Look at me go at against these guys. I just got handled. To be honest, if I get hit once, I'll probably be taken out. It's just going to have to be a perfect performance. I just realized I can fly. I mean... <laughs> You guys do not stand a chance. You can't hit me. You can't defeat me. This must be a raider's worst nightmare. This is definitely a much safer way to defeat a Ravager. Another wave down. Although now the Evokers are showing up, things are going to get a little bit harder. I do not want to have to battle Vexes because they can fly just like me. I'm going in underwater style. That's it. You guys don't stand a chance. And apparently the one and only villager that lives here has died. But at least I finally got a totem. And now to return back home. You know, Parrot... <laughs> You and me, we're not so different. I've got more gunpowder here and more paper so I can make more fire rockets. But my main problem to getting max armor is that I don't have enough emeralds, so I've got a plan. And that plan is to build a raid farm. Today, I have become a snow golem again. Oh, that means I can't leave. <laughs> I'm stuck here. So I'm going to try and gather as many materials as I can <laughs> without leaving this biome. I feel like getting sand shouldn't be this difficult, but I'm going to eat a golden apple, run in to pick it all up, and hopefully I... Uh, <laughs> I live to tell the tale. There we go, we did it. Maybe I can use running water. That's it. Float to me, sand. A lot of the sand is going to be used for glass, so let's smelt that. I also feel like it's time I made a silk touch pickaxe. I already have the book for it. Look at that, I got a pretty good one. The book wasn't needed. With that, I can start using ender chests more. I've gotten pretty much all the items I can, and now it's dark, and I'm a puffer fish. Well, <laughs> I think I can still go in the desert at least and gather up more sand. I'm also going to need some lava, and I'm going to be risky to go and get some soul sand. I have a very limited supply of air whilst I'm here, and if it runs out, then it's the end of me. I've overstayed me welcome a little bit here. I'm. Uh... <laughs> We're gonna start drowning. Quick. There we go. We just about survived. I'll come back for that material later. I also need to grab some string and then I'll become the next mob, which is a mule. Okay, that's a lot better than what I just was. These Frostwalker boots are also very, very annoying, so I'm gonna grindstone them. I've now got every single item except for a couple of things. One of them is a bit of this. And I'm also gonna need a load of kelp and some lily pads if I can find them. But before that, let's get some sleep. <laughs> Wait, I went from a mule to a donkey. Is that a downgrade or an upgrade? Well, that was that was a bit of a <laughs> A close one, me, uh, me elytra have clearly broken. Now I'll have to search for the swamp on foot. So far, the quest to find a swamp has been very, 
very unsuccessful. And I have now become a sheep. At long, long last, I have found a swamp. I've been wandering around that long that I've literally become a wandering trader. And I literally just came all this way for one lily pad. Now to make the journey back. I've been traveling very, very far, but fortunately I did become a bee, so uh, it has sped things up a little bit. I'm just going past the outpost now. And this bit of ocean right here is where I'm going to build the farm. But before we start that, let's get some sleep. And I've become a cat. You know what? I'll take it. Do you know what the best part of all this is, guys? I've just realized all the lily pad is useful for is so that I can place a block. That's, that's all I needed it for, so it's, it, it goes down as the biggest waste of time ever. I'm just going to shut up and place a load of sand. And there we go, I've made it to the correct height. And now to start building this. Then we're going to break these blocks, place some lava, and wait for it to flow all the way down. Now that that's done, I'm going to pick up the lava and then just wait a little bit. Once those sides show, we're going to place water and it's going to turn it all to cobblestone. Now I can build a bit of a platform with glass with a dispenser on the end. And then the middle can be filled with solid blocks. Time to sleep. And I've become a villager. You know what? This is brilliant. This is how I get my own back on the pillagers. I shall make an all-powerful raid farm. Next, let's remove this block and place a piston and three signs to hold some lava. And now it's time for a bit of good old-fashioned redstone. And then we're going to put redstone here, an observer, and more redstone all the way that leads to that dispenser. And now I'm going to dig my way down and add redstone torches as I go. And now that we're at this level, let's go and add some glass that goes all the way around this frame. Now I'm going to go like this. I'm going to break a couple of blocks and add cobblestone there and cobblestone there. And now I'm going to sleep and, and hopefully become something okay. It's going to be very annoying if I become an awkward mob. A wither? Oh my goodness. What? I can't be stood here building a raid farm. I need to take on the monument. The first question, can I breathe underwater? I, I, I guess not. Then again, my water isn't going down, so I guess I can. And I can throw these five. Now, will these actually break the block? It doesn't seem like they will in the water, but we can just dig straight in. You've always wanted to see it. A wither versus a guardian. Look at this. Yeah, that's right. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to run to? I've actually withered it completely. So, yeah, look at that. It's, it's losing damage. Yeah, you want to touch me? Something else attacking me? Let's just finish the job. Okay, now I've just realized I'm pretty low. There we go. We managed to take him out. We're all right. And I got minor fatigue. And I've used up a totem. Good thing I'm building a totem farm. Maybe as a wither, I'm, <laughs> I'm not quite as powerful as I thought. It actually makes sense to do more building like this. Since I can fly, it should be easier. Let's put a glass block there and add loads of glass around the edge. And I need boats all the way around here. And it's going to be a big problem if I mess up because I, I believe I have minor fatigue. There we go. And I just realized something. I'm a wither. I can't get minor fatigue. So it's time to finish the job against these guardians. I just wish this head wasn't so big and I could fit through. Makes life much harder work against these guys. Let's also wither this thing. There we go. Keep taking him out. Shouldn't take too long at all. I've got loads of health. There we go. Another one down. Now to find the final one. Although apparently this time I really have got minor fatigue. I'm guessing it was using my totem that removed the mining fatigue before. Oh, well, it was about time I got back to building. You know, the best thing about all this is I built it right next to a village. So I'll have no problem in kidnapping one of these guys. Can I get in the boat as well? Yes, a wither in a boat, guys. It's cannon now. And you, my friend, are going to live right about here. Let's also milk this cow. Yes, <laughs> don't look too surprised. And get rid of that stupid mining fatigue. Next, I'll fly all the way to the top and get some sleep and i have become a glow squid okay that's that's probably not really what i wanted to be and okay, i actually didn't mean to break that boat either let's put a chest here a chest there and a hopper on top now i need to put water in there and that's going to be kind of my breathing source and i'll add some glass here one on the edge with ladders like that and i'm also gonna need a trap door right here now it's time to drop down this column and it has fish in it get out of this and i'm gonna add a few more blocks down here this is where the slabs are gonna come in to make a little platform i'm also adding kelp all the way up this tube and then it'll work as a proper tower i have to say i'm kind of glad that this day has now come to an end I'm sick and tired of being a squid and instead i am a fish <laughs> <laughs> That's even worse. Let's add a composter right here. And this is where the villager trap shall be. The beauty of this trap is that I can drive him in. Then I can get out and, and he can't. Then I just break the boat, place more glass to make him protected. Well, I'll place glass if I had it, but instead we're going to place wood. Now I just need to get rid of all this sand with a torch. And now the farm is ready. And all I need to do now is take out a pillager captain, which is... Uh, <laughs> A brave thing for a little fish to do. In fact, since it's a thunderstorm, I can actually sleep and become a goat. Okay, I feel a little bit stronger now. There's the outpost. It would be useful to be a wither right about now. But here is a captain. Let's head back to the raid farm. All right, here we go. The raid is now beginning. I'm going to go up this chute and start using the farm. And for some reason, it isn't quite working properly. I've become a silverfish now. I've tried it a second time, still nothing's happened, so I'm going to get it working and AFK for a bit, get loads of emeralds. I worked out the problem with the raid farm and I have fixed it. And as I was going to use it, I then <laughs> became a wither, so uh, that went out the window. So I flew home and I thought that I would get sweeping edge on a diamond sword. And I just got it first time. I can't actually get into my house. I'm going to have to break down the cobblestone and do something like that. We'll put those together. 
There we go, that's looking pretty good. And there's not much else I can do except fly back over there. Whilst being careful to not enter a village and accidentally trigger a raid. And there it is in all its glory. I'm just gonna wait for the sun to go down so I can become a different mob. And I have become a fish. I can't really use it as a fish. Come to think of it, I can't really do anything as a fish. But I'm still gonna try. So as you can see, the villager, I've put him on the other side in the correct place. And this time, as you can see, the raid has worked. I'm gonna try and place a slab. Yeah, this, this should allow me to use it, I think. I mean, things could go wrong, but if I flick this lever... They'll all come down. Hopefully the sweeping edge makes things work. And yeah, we just take them all out. I think the raid is now complete. So I'm going to now trigger a second one and do the same thing again. Start it coming, them coming down. And that's another one done. As you can see, I've already got loads of emeralds. And I'd like to start filling a shulker box with totems. And I accidentally fell down. Which means the next raid is already starting before I'm even ready for it. Let's send them down. Oh, been hit by something. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to move. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what happened there. I think some vexes got released. So I've, I've just... Swim away, and I'm going to definitely get some sleep. Are you kidding me? I, I, I became a blaze. That's, that's the last thing I wanted to be underwater. Looks like I'm leaving my bed down there for now. And since I'm a blaze, I can't use the water chute. I still want quite a few more emeralds. So I'm going to fly all the way to the outpost, then take out a Captain Blaze style. There we go. Now let's fly back. And now we can use the farm by flying. I'm going to take a risk and try and sleep in this bed whilst taking damage. There we go. I don't know what I've become now. And to be honest, I might have just failed the raid as well. Oh, I'm aghast. I, I wonder... <laughs> I was trying to... <laughs> Get up and I couldn't... Wait, is it still working? I mean, technically, yeah, they've all spawned in. But I really see no way that I can defeat this raid. Unless I do something like this. Oh, okay. I didn't think it would actually break it. I need to do something. Quick, pick up the lava. Um, Quick, get out of there. Well, I've definitely got more than enough emeralds. I'm just um going to casually leave. I'm going to grab some books. And I wasn't going to try spending emeralds, but I, I just can't quite reach. I'm not really sure anything good comes from being aghast. I actually get an Unbreaking 3 book, which can be used with an anvil. And once this day ends, I'll also be able to get mending. That is assuming that I can actually get into a bed. Okay, well, I, I blew up the bed on that one. Oh, there's loads right here. I, I didn't need to do that. And now whatever, I become a fish. Oh my god, it's either one extreme or the other. Now then, villager, I'm back for mending. And not just one, but lots and lots of them. Pleasure doing business with you, good sir. Finally, mending on these elytra, as well as my sword. Pick out shovel and my armor I almost just died there as well <laughs> that was close and there we go that's looking pretty good the main thing I really need to get now is thorns three I'm sure as a lowly puffer fish I can make it happen I just need to find the right victim here we have an unemployed fellow let's sort that out I'm definitely not doing this against this fellow's will he's uh, it will only come down here what have we become well, we've become a donkey a little bit better than a puffer fish it's taking quite a bit of time I have now become a goat and I've got a long beard it's taken so long but I've now got thorns three, so we can get a load of these. Four to be exact, we're not going to need any more than that. And now if I want to take things any further, I need to head back home. Once home, I'm going to grab this iron, create a new anvil, and I'll use that once I go to the end. But before going to the end, I want to get four more pieces of ancient debris. That way, I will have full netherite armor, which is exactly what this peasant goat needs. So let's dig our way down. I think I'm just going to dig kind of like this and uh, hope for the best. Here we go, some ancient debris and more. Perfect. Okay, what have I just become? Hold on. I've become a fish? Oh dear. I've got to get out of it. Do I have obsidian? No. Okay. Um, uh, this is very, very bad. We're going to swap all of these totems. Okay, we're going to need every bit of help we can get here. Um, anything here? Golden apples. Yeah, I only have five obsidian. I don't think anything like that's going to help me. I need to get the right pickaxe. Okay, it is 100% a race against time for me to get out of here. Okay, there goes totem number one. Um, I've just got to keep holding totems and I, you know what? I might be able to make this and here goes totem number two All right, no problem. I've got loads of these. I, I think am I getting close to being out? Yes, I've made it to the staircase Unfortunately, I've got to be very slow on this magma Let's just build up like that and then build up very nice and get inside my portal Oh and uh, apparently I used another one Right on that moment, but there we go, we're sorted. And that's why raid farms are OP. Now, whilst I did unfortunately only get three pieces of ancient debris, I already have two netherite scrap at home. Let's make that netherite ingot. And with this, full netherite armor <laughs> for a fish. Now, then what mob have we become? A creeper? Okay, that is perfect. I'm definitely going to go and look for more debris. Considering I almost didn't survive down here, I'm surprised I'm back so soon. It's a shame the TNT explosions don't actually blow up any blocks. Now that would have been very handy. And by mining quartz, my elytra can finally start to be repaired. All right, another piece of ancient debris. As you can see right now, I am a chicken. Okay, yes, another piece. Nice. And another one. And another one. Oh my goodness, there's so many in this chunk. And I just went and checked with chunk bodies. Yeah, I think that was four in one chunk. Obviously, doing this as a chicken gives you way more success. And two more. Perfect. I've got eight pieces in total with the one back home 
home, so now I'm going to head there. Here we are back to the portal. As you can see, I am now a horse. Finally, I can use the lightra again. Let's smelt this ancient debris. Two more ingots, netherite pickaxe, and netherite sword. Now let's go and head to the Enderman farm. I brought the trusty anvil, although I forgot to bring the books. But now I'll be able to add some upgrades and mend all of my equipment, as well as get lots and lots of levels. I've added many upgrades, and I've just hit level 110. I am a fox right now. Every piece of my armor is fully maxed out, except for the boots. I just need feather falling and unbreaking three, and it'll be fully maxed out. And the next day has already begun. I've become a llama. The raid farm gave me plenty of gunpowder. Powder. So if I can find some sugarcane to make paper, then it'll be perfect. Speaking of sugarcane, there's some right here. Let's quickly craft that. And then the firework rockets. Now searching is going to be much, much easier. I don't think I've ever seen this much sugarcane on one river. Just all the way around, as you can see, this sugarcane. It doesn't get any better than that. I'm also completely out of lapis. So I'm going to do a bit of mining and see what I can find. Now this looks like a good ravine. In fact, diamonds. I don't think I really need diamonds anymore, but I'm going to grab them anyway. Oh, there's loads of them as well. There we go, we've got some, perfect. I was about to resort trading with a villager, but thankfully with nearly two stacks, we've got more than enough. And on my way back, I've also found even more. And now it's time to sleep, and I've become a hoglin. Okay, I'm very, very cold. Even more annoyingly, I've got to dig a two wide tunnel to get out of here. With this lapis, I'm pretty sure I should be able to get what I need. Used up all my levels and still could not get feather falling. But my sword is now maxed out, and with more levels, I could also do my pickaxe. And what have we become today? <laughs> A fish? I feel like becoming a fish is the most common thing that I've done in this video. Not really what I want to do. I think every villager here is actually occupied with a job. So I'm going to find a different village. Although not this one because, uh, yeah, we lost all of these villagers. This one is probably better. Oh my goodness, I didn't realise that this village was the village where I left my horse all the way at the beginning. Look at me go, I'm a fish riding a horse. You, you, you can't even see me. I'm so glad that things have come full circle. Now to get the Feather Falling book. At long last, I have Feather Falling 4. And if you're wondering why I'm still a fish, well, I became a different fish. <laughs> It's just not fair. Okay, cat, please, please don't eat me. Okay, you're not interested. That's good. Let's get on the horse and head back home. Well, the sun is now set. I really hope I'm not going to be a fish again. Instead, for day 100, I'm going to be a wandering trader. Quite fitting, really. They always just turn up when you don't expect them. How's it going, peasant villagers? Yeah, most wandering traders have llamas, but I'm a little bit more upmarket than them. Now to dig a hole. Oh, I'm so sorry, horse. I was just going to say I was going to dig a hole for you that you'll never escape from. There you go. I'm coming out, gonna grab the anvil and hopefully get fully maxed out armor. Let's put that book with that book. And for just 11 levels, we can max it out. That's way less than I thought it was gonna be. Let's also max out the pickaxe, efficiency five on this peasant's diamond axe, and finally efficiency five on this shovel. Well, I don't need these boots anymore. They're, uh, <laughs> they're going in the void. And since it is day 100, so am I. Just kidding, no, we're not going down that easy. I don't think so anyway, no, I was close. Being the idiot that I am, I didn't sleep in a permanent bed, so I, I went back to spawn. But now the sun has set on this world, and that was 100 days in hardcore Minecraft as a shapeshifter.